calls out to all surfers, dares them to dance, pushes them to their limits, and sometimes beyond. For 10 years, the bulk of Pipe Pro has scored. Champions have battled the best pipeline has to offer, seeking much more than just victory. This year, an upgrade to a QS 5000 event lays even more on the line. More money, more points, prestige, and respect. Oh, the spin. World champions, QS grinders, local chargers, all with a blank canvas on which to cement a reputation and prove themselves worthy of the coveted Warrior Trophy. Big backdoor barrel, late drop. Oh my goodness, it is stuffed in the pit. Coming oh, out. Can you hear it? It speaks. Welcome to the 2020 Volcom Pipe Pro. Dude, Dad, I can't wait to watch the Volcom Pipe Pro. When is it on? Son, it's on right now. <laughs> You're watching the Vulcan Pipe Pro 2020. All right. Well, if that last two minutes doesn't have you fired up for the 2020 Vulcan Pipe Pro, I don't know what to tell you. You might not be alive. Welcome to the jewel of the North Shore Pipeline. Sal Masekela here with Dave Wassel to my left, the one and only Chris Cote to my right. And we got here last night, and Pipeline was user-friendly. <laughs> Dare I say even cute at two to three feet, but we are straight into it right now. She has arrived, Wassel. Good morning, boys and girls. The word for today is Pipeline, and she is pumping. Six to eight feet. We've seen some bombing sets. I mean, they had to work really hard this morning to clear the lineup. There's probably like 50, 60 guys out here not even five minutes ago. It's one of those days where you literally show up and you feel the earth shaking beneath your feet. It's that size to where we're going to see a real separation between really good surfers and great surfers today. This is going to be the ultimate test. Indeed. It is round one. This event starts off with 144 athletes before we're able to whittle down to one that gets this trophy helmet. And we will start off right now in heat one, in red, Max Lockwood from here in Hawaii, Chris Rodriguez in blue, Zach Hedeman, talk about legacy. We'll talk more about that later, later in white. And the captain of Air Camp, Nathan Florence in green. Mr. Air Camp, there won't be any air camping today for Nathan Florence. Well, you never you never know when you get shot out of a barrel. That's a different type of air. Uh, you know what I love about this first round and this entire event is this is where you see the kind of this ultimate matchup of just underground chargers, pipeline specialists. This whole first round filled to the max with surfers from the Hawaii and the Tahiti Nui region. So uh, you're going to see, you know, underground heroes rise to this round. I mean, that's a story we've seen for the past decade here at the Vulcan Pipe Pro. Underground surfers surfing from day one all the way to the finals, and it's it's anyone's game in this first round. One of these guys could win this entire contest. Anyone's game? I'm going to go out on the line right now and say this is an air camp. This is boot camp, <laughs> and the sergeant at arms' name is Nathan Florence. Mm. So he's going to take charge of this heat. Don't get me wrong, Zach Hedeman, son of Mr. Hedeman, uh, a former pipe master himself, I Hans believe. Hedeman, yes. Right, Hans. Uh, he, he, Definitely a kid from the windward side to keep your eyes on. Same with Max, who comes from town, and Chris Rodriguez. A lot to be proven here at the Proving Grounds today. What is it like for these for, for these Groms, a lot of whom? This is the, f the first opportunity they have to compete uh, at pipe like this in these type of conditions. Um, what's, their, what's their mindset? And then they're out there with, like, with Nathan Florence, who is who is a, an established legend high up in the pecking order at Pipeline. Oh yeah, no pressure at all. <laughs> Nobody's watching kids, just go out and be yourselves. And right on cue, Nathan Florence driving through a beautiful little backdoor gemstone. That was easy? Is that easy? Not even close, <laughs> that not even incredible. close. That lip actually wanted to take his head off. 
And of course, you get the classic Goofy versus regular matchup. Always fun to watch. Talk to me about the uh, conditions today. I mean, it, it did change so much um, from, from last night to today. What are we going to see this, this morning? Conditions are A+. Plus. Uh, the tide is a, a little high, and that's actually being accentuated by the way the shape of the beach is. So there is a little bit of uh, reflection coming off the beach. You'll see a little bit of backwash coming to effect. But right now, uh, the conditions are prime. They're as good as they get. The only thing that stands in the way of these surfers on the left is the rising sun. You will actually notice the glare on these pipe waves. It's often referred to as the Death Star. Blinded by the light. Blinded by the light. Let's go into an 80 read. Yeah. Cote? <laughs> don't want to get wrapped up like a deuce <laughs> at Pipeline this morning. So the simple, the simple thing to do would just be go back door, right? That's the decision that these guys are going to have to make. I guess, I guess, Commander at Arms, David Florence, <laughs> decided that. What is, what is the challenge when the sun is directly in your eyes uh, on the left? It's absolutely blinding. Uh, you know, there's enough to actually contend with here at Pipeline. The heaving lip, the shallow reef. The last thing you need is to be blinded on the drop. Taking another look. Take us through this one. Nathan Florence doing really well, not only to complete that drop, but to push through that falling lip. I mean, literally, I said it once before, this thing really tried to take his head off. But Nathan, being as strong as he is, stayed on his board and completed a ride. Uh, the judges, it's curious where they're going to go with this, because that, by anyone's standards, I don't care where you're from in the world, whether it's Nebraska, whether it's Nanakuli, that was a great ride. And they rewarded him as such with a good score of a 6.17. Uh, each surfer looking to get their two best rides. Uh, and the scores, of course, maxed out at 10 points. Nathan Florence sort of whittling down what was a very strong waterfall mullet dance towards the back end of 2019. I'd, I'd say slightly conservative. In the, hair, in the haircut to open, as opposed to Chris Rodriguez, who, uh, like myself, has given in and said, you know what, I'm just going to be in the freeness of my dome. No waterfalls here. Embracing it. Embrace. Embracing it. And, and also putting up a little score. I'm also liking that the, this is an all ages heat right here. You're going to see veterans. You're going to see, you know, guys that have been charging out here year in, year out. You're going to see rookies. And, well, right now, the veteran Nathan Florence has taken it. And, and, you know, a conversation that's been had in many parking lots around the world leading up to this event is the fact that it's been such a stellar year here at Pipeline. A lot of surfers in this draw have had a lot of opportunity to surf great pipe. I feel like the practice, the reps, they're all there. That's where we're going to see the performances come into this event between the, the Pipe Masters and now. There's been a lot of opportunities for these guys to quote unquote practice at Pipeline. And I think the experience is going to show up, show with, you know, just the comfort level of these surfers in the lineup. To add to that, uh, I'm I'm going to say that the really good guys who are high in the pecking order have had lots of practice. Mr. Hedeman and, and Mr. Rodriguez and Mr. Lockwood, on the other hand, have been practicing other places. It's really hard to get a set wave here at Pipeline away from guys like Nathan Florence, Jamie O'Brien, John John Florence. Oftentimes you'll hear stories, even even at the at the at the World Championship Tour level, of of, of rookies. Well, they'll be in their heat, and essentially they'll they'll come in in their their their, their post heat interview and be like, "Those are pretty much the first waves I've ever gotten out at Pipeline." Like even going out to practice, it's 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 not like guys are like, "Oh, you're in the contest here. Please go on this perfect set wave." That's not how it works. And that's why you want to travel the world and get the points to get into this because this is the best practice you will get at the surfing pipeline. You can't do it anywhere else. You can't do it in a gym. You can't do it at Kelly Slater's wave pool. It has to be done here at Pipeline. There's no pipeline wave pool yet. That'll be interesting if it ever does happen. I don't think you could replicate a wave like this. And that's also the reason why there are so many surfers and athletes in this draw who come here from other states, other countries, find a, 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 a small floor that they sleep on and, and, and live on, on rations to put in the time to build a relationship with this wave because you have to earn it. 
And uh, that's why we'd like to say thank you to Volcom for purchasing these two houses and giving us a place to not only keep our boards, but rest our heads. Zach Hedeman, right here, son of former Charger and World Tour competitor, Mr. Hans Hedeman. Hans Hedeman, former number four in the world, who was, uh, to say that Hans Hedeman was known as, as being a tenacious competitor would be uh, a, a supreme understatement. He was also one of the stars of North Shore. True. The competitive sequences, so right there. And he runs a, a really prominent surf school over here. So it, it must be pretty cool to, uh, you know, your dad not only is a, an absolute legend in surfing, but also runs a surf school. So that means you get free lessons from the time you're born till the time now. And, you know, we know the lineage of surfers, the father-son duos, the mother-son, the mother-daughter, the, the duos, the, the, the the parental guidance that some of these North Shore and uh, Hawaiian surfers get over here is the best of the best. We're going to see that throughout this contest. The Ho family, the McNamara family, I mean, the list goes on and on. So it's, it's cool to see that last name, Hedeman on there. And uh, Zach right now, I mean, he's got things started, uh, but this is going to be a, a big test. He's 14 minutes at Nathan Florence. That was kind of the, uh, you said it, Wassel, that was kind of the obvious one on paper. So now it's about, okay, who's who out of this threesome of uh, undergrounders is going to stand up. Well, we just got to see um, oh, back to back wipeouts. And a little glimpse of what happens when things go wrong at Pipeline. Morning slaps for young Zach Hedeman. That's a wake up call. After a long drive from Kailua, that's the last thing that you need. <laughs> that's different. It's, uh, I, I just, I'll just take the cup of coffee to get myself waking up. Not the slaps. Not the slaps out here today. Um, for those of you who are wondering, well, why, why, what was the air camp reference about Nathan Florence? Um, Nathan Florence is, is a pipeline charger, but in the last year, he has been committed uh, via social media to showing that he, he, he too can fly. He's not, he's, that his, his brother John John is not the only Florence that can fly. And it's kind of like tongue in cheek and fun with his air camp reference, but he's really gotten good at doing airs in the last year in his air camp training. But never, never forget for a second that his strong point is in challenging surf. Yeah, I mean like. Winning a heavy water award for the Surfer Pole Award. Obviously yeah. shredding at pipeline as well. Out, out at Jaws at 30 feet, he's, he's, he's more comfortable than it's when it's two feet. We are in Heat one here, a glimpse of our leader, Nathan Florence. We'll be back with 12 minutes to go here as we open up the 2020 Volcom Pipe Pro. Welcome back to day one of the 2020 Volcom Pipe Pro. I like that we came back in straight on 11-11 to go. It's a good sign at a beautiful day here at Pipeline. Nathan Florence is our leader here just below 11 minutes, and we're going to welcome in our event director, the one and only Marty Thomas, who, um, Marty, how long? was uh, the meeting this morning to say yay or nay? Well, it was pretty quick. I think I <laughs> gave the broadcast crew the heads up at around 5.30. Um, I woke at around 3.30. I could hear the waves cracking up in Pupakea where I live. And given the forecast, it looked like it was you know 
pretty much a, a you know easy call this morning. But you never know till you get down here and you get the light on it. And but we can see in the dark. We can see the peaks, the cracks, the the spit, and some of the surfers got out there pretty early on dark. So um, it was a pretty easy call working with Billy Kemper and obviously the Volcom crew uh, on uh, call on the days. And uh, today's a pretty easy call. And the waves are firing. What are we looking forward to over the course of the, of the next few days? Well, you know, given the forecast, I mean, it's been a great year. Um, we've had all the swells have been sort of sort of west, northwest, um, with some favorable winds. We might have a little bit of sea breeze this afternoon, but um, the forecast looks good. We don't want to jinx anything, but it looks good for tomorrow and, and possibly the next couple of days as well. So we're looking at this series of swell over the next three to four days. Um, there is more activity next week as well uh, as a backup if we need it. Um, but today it looks like a good, a good day, and we're hoping for another one tomorrow. <laughs> Marty is amping right now. When Marty is smiling and laughing like this that. Is, you know it's going to be a good this day. This is night and day from last year. <laughs> How many days of competition do we have for this Volcom yeah, 2020? Yeah, Dave, we need four full days. Okay. Um, it's a 144-man format, and, and we'll see in these early rounds. Uh, a lot of younger kids um, getting their first crack at, at pipe. A lot of the lower-ranked uh, regional surfers that don't have a lot of experience out here. So. Um, this is an opportunity for, you know, some aspiring pros that are thinking, you know, next level big time to get their opportunity out here in, in big, challenging pipeline. Um, we haven't seen like that for the first day of the event um, in previous years. So a lot of the younger kids, lower ranked surfers are going to be challenged today. Uh, th are you sure this is what you want? <laughs> well, we're about to find out. <laughs> so you want to be a pro surfer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Marty, thank you very much uh, My pleasure. for stopping by. And uh, yeah. En enjoy, enjoy your day. Oh, I like. Try. We all like <laughs> smiling, not overly stressed out, Marty. Yeah, well, You've thank you guys. It. It's gonna be a good day. Appreciate it. Thank you. Well, you know, I mean, the stakes are always high. Anytime you talk about pipeline, I don't care if it's two foot to what we're looking at today. You know, I'm calling twenty foot faces on some of those bigger sets. I mean, it's huge out there. But then you also talk about the stakes in points. Uh, Volcom has upped the ante. QS five thousand level this year for the first time ever. And if you look towards the rest of the year on the QS, this is going to be a keeper result. We saw Jack Robinson last year get the win here when it was a QS 3000, really became his springboard. It's, it's a long year, you know, it's a marathon, not a sprint as they say. But this being a QS 5000, uh, there's 5000s and 10,000s this year. This event right here is going to be an absolute game changer for the surfer who wins it if they're in the, the space of wanting to qualify for the championship tour. This is where it starts right here. Yeah, and with an, with an extra 10,000 point event this season, where we don't have 6,000s anymore, it's 5,000s and 10,000s for the big ones. I mean, this, this changes the game. And even with this event being 3,000 points last year, look at how that factored in for Jack to be able to qualify this season. Not to mention, some people were saying, hey, you're jacking this thing up to a 5,000. That's going to give less of the local guys a chance to get in. Au contraire, mon frere. Guys like Nathan Florence, Derek Ho, Takayuki Wakita, all able to get in because there are more spots available, as they should be in this event here at Pipeline. And we have a QS 5000 happening in Morocco right now. So a lot of surfers from Europe, a lot of kind of more high performance surfers, I guess you would say, from the United States, from Central South America, from the world. Okay, that's the decision that these QSers have to make. Do I go to Pipeline and potentially go up against Nathan Florence, Mikey Bruno, you know, Derek, Derek Ho. Ho in my first heat, or do I go to Morocco where it, it's definitely not an easier path, but you got to kind of surf to your strengths. And obviously if you're Nathan Florence, we know the decision he made, QS 5000 at Pipeline any day, all day. And uh, again, that's another reason why we're going to see just more Pipeline specialists in this draw. This technique that Nathan has mastered of getting down the face, grabbing his rail, letting go, doing a pump, and then redirecting himself. That that literally was three different maneuvers all while underneath a giant pipeline lift. That was incredible. Nathan Florence, you make it look way too easy. Yeah, at any point uh, during the first three seconds of that wave, he could have gotten chucked. It looked like it, they, they, he could have caught that inside rail. It, he, you saw the way he took his time to, to release, so he didn't get sucked over the face. Um, that's. That's just time under tension, right? Just putting it in, putting in, putting in the time. Absolutely. I mean, I mind surfed that wave myself, and I fell three times before it spit. Well done, Nathan Florence. Judges were, were really uh, rewarding. This technical, te this technique applied here on this takeoff was where a bunch of the points came from. 
Okay, let's take a great look at that wave. The fact that he was grabbing behind his front foot, the fact that his left shoulder was pointing straight down the face. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, you want to serve pipeline, watch that over and over. You know where he learned that from? Jamie O'Brien. And, and letting go of his rail as he pulled up under the lip, I mean, that was by design. That is to increment the risk and to really grab the attention of the judges. And speaking it, of yeah, grabbing, he's doing it again. Grabbing the attention. Kid is back on the escalator. Feeling it. What's it like out at Pipeline as when you're in that mode where you're, you're clicking and you're... I have no idea. <laughs> Come on. I don't believe the, that. The, the beauty of this is we're going to be able to ask Nathan Florence himself. Look this at this thing. Absolutely <laughs> on point. Air Camp can take a break. Nathan Florence is running the backdoor boot camp. Look at this first section. The fact that he didn't even go down to the bottom, he's just pumping mid face, and that is such a thick slab. And then halfway through it, says, you know what? I don't even care if I rip my shoulder out of its place. I'm gonna shove this front arm into that wave and just stall. Nathan Florence is on a mission. And uh, another element of, you know, kind of the who's who of surfers out here at Pipeline that I think you're gonna see is the boards that they're riding are all hyper-tuned. So they're probably on their third or fourth batch of boards from their shapers. You see Nathan Florence on his Pizel board. I mean, he has finely tuned his North Shore quiver because he's been breaking boards. He's been putting in the time out here. I mean, these, these guys are really gonna be in the zone throughout this entire event just due to the fact they've had so many sessions out here. In past years, we've had these events, this, the Vulcan Pipe Pro, where these guys have maybe surfed good, proper pipeline two, three times. This year, I mean, there's been 10 or 12 sessions out here that have just been all-time classics. Like I said before, just because you're out there doesn't mean you're catching good <laughs> That's waves. That's true. <laughs> do, you, do you realize that Nathan Florence pretty much the only guy in this heat? A definitely home court advantage. Born and bred right here at Pipeline. Every heat, you're probably gonna have one, maybe two pipeline specialists and then other surfers with something pretty, oh. Taking full Hi. advantage, wow. Nathan Florence. Come on. Oh. First mistake of this heat. And almost made it up. You, you see him he, as he got sucked over the falls on that second section. Maybe we'll get a, a glimpse into what that looked like on the front end. Oh, but man, that was a backdoor beating. And we saw uh, one of our North Shore lifeguards, Abe Lerner, in here earlier had to ask him, what's the, and on a scale of one to 10, what is the risk factor out here? Maybe Dave, you can tell us on, what is that scale on a wave like this? The risk factor is always at the top of its game. You have to be, that actually was caused by a reverberation, not from the backwash of the beach, but from the backwash of the wave before. It is so heavy out there that the lip comes down, hits the reef, and then sends a reverb back out through the lineup. Nathan Florence flirting with danger here at Backdoor. And, and for context, right there where he fell, where that wave does sort of bounce back up, how shallow? Way too shallow, I'd say it's three feet deep. The only good thing about that part of the reef is it's flat. You've actually passed over all of the hookahs, these, those labyrinth of lava the tubes. The small planets. Yes, the labyrinth of lava tubes that are riddled around the takeoff zone. Just under two minutes to go here, Nathan Florence in full command, having a field day. I think the good news for the other three surfers in this heat for the for the surfer that's going to advance through all right you've shaken the nerves off you've faced huge pipeline and potentially made it through so maybe your next heat's where you really can shine but you also get to see like for a, a surfer like max lockwood who's only only looking for uh, a 0.97 that suddenly feels like a five if you don't have experience out there and that's what it's going to come down to Oh, I know who's hey, having a great morning there's right not, now. There's Air not, camp. There's not a lot of good waves out there. <laughs> <laughs> Max Lockwood, you're not at Gravy's, okay? Get oh, in this heat, my friend. Price pay, though. Hey. There you go. You got to pay your taxes, and you just witnessed Nathan Florence. He went from the height of uh, pure ecstasy, chucking a, a, a double grab backflip out on the kickout to, uh-oh, look at this thing. The one thing that I will say is Nathan Florence, wow. I've seen him make those before. 
Told you, I called air camp. Nathan Florence is on his A game. He trains so hard to be right where he is right now. Let that be a lesson to everybody. I'm, I'm going to start going to do push-ups right now. <laughs> oh, look at this out the back with just 10 seconds to go. Friends, if you have decided to tune in here for day one, you've made the right choice. Because Pipeline has said, you know what? We're going all out this year. Last year, uh, was a, it was a slow start, but we are on and cracking. Nathan Florence unofficially with the win. I believe Chris Rodriguez uh, will slide in with a heat total of a 1.83. We'll wait for the official on that one. Thanks, Zach and um, Hedeman and Max Lockwood for coming out. We have some nice prizes for them at the door. Chris Cote, thank you, sir. Oh, I'm for going coming right through. down to the beach to watch this. It's going to be an amazing day. Well, when we saw Nathan Florence's name in the draw in Heat 1, we had a funny feeling. But man, just putting on a clinic and really showing you that uh, it is having a relationship and putting the time in out here uh, at Pipeline, that makes a difference. That little uh, head dip for Mr. Rodriguez pushes him through. Get another opportunity. But the Nathan Florence Backdoor Clinic show is where it was at for this entire heat. And there it is officially. Nathan Florence and Chris Rodriguez moving on ahead into our next round. That's not a bad way to kick off the 2020 Vulcan Pipe Pro. That's the best way to start your day ever. You want to put that on your resume. <laughs> Just backdoor shack festival. How was your well, how was your morning? It was great. I meditated. I got barreled five times. It was amazing. Heat two. It's more legacy. Hendrix Frankenrider. I remember when this kid was just like I want to get into it, but he's he's visiting us over from Hawaii. Sammy Gray. Makai Burdine and Sean Crawford in this heat. I, I'm still I'm trying to comprehend that Donovan Frankenrider's son is in the Vocal Pipe Pro. That's really cool that he made his way over here from the island of Kauai to join us today. But also, Sean Crawford has been on a tear, absolute tear. Good local kid from Haleiwa. Makai Burdine uh, uh, really knows how to draw the line at Pipeline mm. for such a young age. I believe he's 14 years old, yes. Wrap your mind around that, 14 years old, and really good at pipeline. And How old is Hendrix? Not much older than that. Now, looking at that style right off the bat, I'd say that's Makai Burdine. And yep, there he is in the white jersey. Donning a helmet. Smart kid. We had a, a, a couple of horrific wipeouts right around the new year. And, uh, you know, Mr. Rogers, Mr. Hayden Rogers, uh, a young Vulcan kid, slammed his head, uh, had a trip to the hospital. I mean, he was literally unconscious, full of water. So uh, everybody now is putting on these helmets, and it's a smart move. Thanks, moms and dads. Speaking of moms and dads, I know that uh, Hendrix's mom, Petra, uh, alongside Donovan, Frank and Ryder, they're, they're watching this. She, she hit me on Instagram maybe 10 times in the last two days. My baby's in the second heat. My baby's in the second heat. And you can imagine what that is like you know, for, for a parent because this wave – while we have these spectacular moments, I mean, it is the the, the opportunity for for injury uh, is strong, and these kids definitely have to be cautious. These parents are, are very brave, but they've also raised their children in serious surf. Mm. You know, let's go right out and just say this is not their first time. Maybe it's their first time to this big a pipeline, but. It's not their first time to serious surf. These guys have actually put in lots of time. Donovan Frankenrider was on the world tour for over a decade. So he knows how to deliver that kind of knowledge into his son. Yeah, and Hendrix, I mean, he's traveled the world with his parents surfing waves throughout Indonesia, the mental eyes. You know, he spent a lot of his a lot of time as a kid uh, honing his skills. Uh, in, in, in Fiji at, at, at um, oh, look at this way. Oh, almost. Sammy Gray doing a great job. Remember I mentioned earlier when we were 
dissecting Nathan Florence's drop and how you want to grab behind your front foot. Mm. If you don't, what you're going to end up doing is pulling your fins out of the way. Sammy Gray almost did that on that drop, but was able to recompose himself. Uh, but I swear, just that little microsecond where the fins became disconnected is the reason he did not complete that ride. All right. Great attempt, though. Hendrix Frankenrider, 16 years old. Um, before my brain stopped working earlier, uh, I was going to say cloud break. Kid has spent, I think his family's gone, you know, to, to, to Fiji since he could, was learning to walk. He's been in waves of consequence, uh, and it's going to be cool to see what he's able to do here uh, at Pipe in these conditions with just three other humans. That itself is worth the price of admission. Mm. Being able to surf pipeline with only three other guys out, especially when it's this good, because it's literally pumping out there. I've, I've been told that there is a, uh, a drinking game that happens for people who are watching every time uh, a rider says, well, you know, just stoked to be able to be out there with only three other guys out. I think that people are taking shots uh, around, <laughs> around the world. Oh, yeah. see, look at that. Pipe with three guys out. We even have a graphic for it. Uh, and you, you know, you can take a sip of anything, juice, water. We're not, we're not promoting anything that's gonna, you know, diminish your abilities while you're watching the broadcast here. Let's just, let's just be clear. And we'd like to welcome in right now, captain of the air camp. Can't believe that he's with us. The actual, the actual captain himself of, of, of the air camp. <laughs> Nathan Florence. Thanks, guys. How was your morning, sir? Unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, especially since it's been, as you guys know, a couple of years since the first round has started this good at the Volcom. It's always kind of been north and weird, and for it to start as good as pipe and backdoor gets, six to eight foot and glassy conditions. I was just, I paddled out before the heat, and I was just vibrating. I had to, like, <laughs> take a big breath, calm down, get ready. Question for you. A lot of great backdoor waves. Now, is that because there was just happened to be backdoor waves in your heat or because you're avoiding that Death Star of the rising sun on the left? The Death Star is really bad right now. The yeah. drops are bad either direction, right, at right side and left. Um, I was looking for a big left, but the right just kept coming. And it's doing that thing. There's a little more north in the swell with that west. It's just big teepees. A lot of times those lefts can turn out to see a little bit and get pinchy, but I did see a couple of really good ones just happened to be more rights for that heat for me. Okay, you were in the water. You tell us, is there two swells coming in right now? You know what, the last few days, it seems like it was a separated swell, a west and a north, and they were kind of passing each other, mm -hmm. making it really funky and weird. But being out there just now, it seemed like the swell was a lot more organized. It's finally together as one, it feels like. So those TPs are coming in and as one, you know, instead of having a cross wave through it. The backwash is still there, but the direction is really good right now. Like. Other athletes like, like Billy Kemper, you're, you're one of those people for whom your dedication to the fitness, preparation, breath work um, is unparalleled. What kind of difference do you feel like that, making that dedication, especially over the course of the last two years, has made for you when it comes to like getting on, on, a, on a plane and jumping over to Maui and it's 30 feet, you know, yeah. up um, here I've, every day? I've traveled with Billy a lot the last few years and and I really I look up to way he, how dedicated he is and how on it he is. You know, he wakes up same time every morning. His di food is dialed, everything's dialed. I have a few gaps to fill still on, <laughs> on that front, but. Um, I yeah. wasn't gonna expose your nutrition. That's why <laughs> I just talked about nutrition. the fitness. <laughs> yeah. But um, you know, when your body is fit and it's there, then your, your mind tells you, hey, we're ready for anything. We're ready for whatever comes. And the ocean is a chaotic place. Mm. Anything can happen out there. But if you know you're as fit and ready as you can be mentally, physically, everything's dialed in, then you can go out and just say, hey, I'm gonna deal with whatever comes. I'm gonna do as well as I can with the conditions now. And that's how we've kind of been rolling the game the last few years, and it's been working off a lot. I mean, we go hard. We surf three to four times a day. We surf hours, hours out of time. But that just adds on top of the fitness and the base. And, and when you're feeling good, then you do well. So, Another question for you. There was four guys supposedly in that heat with you. Did you even see the other three? <laughs> we, no, no offense to them, but we didn't see too much. No offense, but that was a bus you just backed up over the, all three of them. Oh, come on. <laughs> I mean, literally, it was like you just walked out onto the playground and took all the toys away from the kid. 
<laughs> that was the first time I felt like, okay, I'm literally out at pipe pretty much alone. That was amazing and performance. Yeah, thanks. I think those guys are trying. You know, it's hard. It's You come and the crowds are gnarly and you're trying to learn out there and, and these guys are grinding on the QS all year long and, and they're really good at learning, but with the crowd and the intensity and how hungry everyone is, it's a hard learning experience. Um, so for those for the groms and stuff, I would just take those heats as, as hey, there's no one out. I'm going to learn the lineup while the crowd isn't here. Let's see how they go. Very valid point. Good job. We'll see if uh, if they listen to you. Uh, it, how did when you when you get to, to in that that zone though where you're building momentum and like one wave, another wave, another wave. What's that space like? Crazy. You're getting more and more excited. And you're also putting yourself in deeper and deeper positions. Like, oh, you know what? I was a little in front of it. That you start pick. You're getting insane waves, and you're still nitpicking. I could be a little more. I'm gonna stall harder on the next one. This, that, like. But the feeling, insane. I mean, you get more waves in 25 minutes than you would in a three-hour session. So, for some people, in three days. <laughs> yeah. uh, take us through uh, a couple of your waves here. I mean, there were a couple that were just ridiculous. But how about this? This? This one. Yeah, back perfect backdoor TP with a double up on it. That's as good and as fun as a backdoor wave as you could want. I mean, those drops are really steep because of that double up. So once you're pretty much on those, once you make that drop, you're like, let's go. Like it's a it's a shooting shotgun, spitting you out in the channel. You know, there's not the those runners are more exciting, but those with the drop and intensity and how round the barrel can be, those are really really fun waves. From a from a feet positioning standpoint, it's it seems like it's a lot different than at your 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 regular pedestrian wave to make these drops. What do you, what are you looking for as far as position is concerned? Uh, me and my friends have talked about this a lot, and we always resort back to the AI front shoulder down. And you want to just have your momentum right over your board. Um, and obviously, you want to be going that way at some point. But you really want to take that drop first and kind of trust that your fins are going to be on and your weight's going to be centered as you're like leaning to get into that barrel, you know? Because you got to take the drop, and you don't want to get axed in the head. So you already got to be knifing. And front side is different than back side. Back side, you're tucked already. You can stay tucked. Front side, you have to extend. So it's kind of a funky body position to be in and stay centered on your board. Um, but we, all, we always go back on that. Andy, Bruce, John, Jamie. Look at all those front side drops, front shoulders turned down. And for the record, I did not at all tell you to say that. I was saying the same thing in your heat. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, yeah absolutely. Oh, yeah. And look at look at these guys like Jamie that have set the pace. This is where they learned it, and this is where they go. Setting the pace, young man in red. Yeah, and Hendrix Franken, Frankenrider, unable to, to make that one. Well, Nathan, thanks for coming by, sir. Thanks for I having feel, me, guys. I feel like we got to watch you, like, come back down into your body. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm still sweating. I'm, like, so stoked. Well, we, uh, we hope we get to, to see you and, and talk to you again. Thank you, Stay guys. with us, friends. Have a good day. As uh, we come back here in Heat 2.
Welcome back. 11 minutes to go here in Heat 2. Young Max Berdeen uh, in the lead with just a heat total of 1.33, but he just got uh, a wave and a nice turn at the end. That'll probably bump up that score. Sam Asakela here with the one and only Dave Wassel. Um, Sammy Gray, Hendrix Frankenrider, and young Sheon Crawford all trying to be the top two that will advance here in Heat 2. As we see young Makai Burdine. Mike, Mike, I, I said it earlier, he definitely knows the line here at Pipeline. He's a ferocious wave catcher. This is the fewest amount of waves that he's ever caught out here <laughs> at Pipeline. And forgive my pronunciation, Mikei. My screen is far from me, and I didn't see the other, the other eye. 14? I believe he's 14 years old. Uh, you know what, but looking at the way he approaches this wave, He's got knowledge far beyond his years. I, I've always been really impressed by the way he knows this line. And that's really what it comes down to. You talk to Nathan Florence, we just heard him. It's all about experience. Mikey somehow, he's an old soul in that young body. What is the path for young surfers um, when it comes to, to making their way up and down this seven mile stretch to start to put themselves out here at, at Pipeline? How does it start for a kid to be able to build a relationship and, and finally make his way out at Pipeline? It starts on the beach. It starts at being respectful to the other people who are in the lineup. You're not gonna show up one day and just paddle out to Pipeline and say, oh, there's Derek Ho, that's the peak. I'm gonna sit on the other side of him and just catch a bomb. That doesn't happen. So it starts on the beach and then it moves into the lineup, say it's somewhere like Gums, which is just to the right of your screen, and then you slowly move your way into the pecking order. And it becomes real, real fast. And the, the, the older surfers, the men and women that are out there, are they sort of paying attention? Absolutely. To, 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 to the younger surfers and how they're performing? Absolutely. Uh, you can talk to somebody and say, oh, I, I didn't see anybody else out there. Derek Ho. 1993 world champ. First Hawaiian world champion. That man right there is the absolute guru. And under his arm, a Takoro board, an absolute guru of shapers. Uh, that is a combination of the best on the best. I can honestly say that little kid me that had posters of Derek Ho on his wall, who never thought that I'd ever have the opportunity in my lifetime where I'd be calling a heat that Derek Ho was in at Pipeline. I mean, it just, it, it, yeah, it's kind of mind-boggling. And, and talk about uh, longevity and, and the, the ability to continue to be a, not just surf pipeline, but to be an actual standout person in the lineup after all these years. With a wave of the winner nominee last year, yes, Derek Ho, definitely not the youngest guy in the lineup. 55? I'm not even gonna go there. I'm just gonna say he's ageless and his performance here at Pipeline is priceless. And I've gotten the official word that Micaiah Burdine is indeed uh, 14, it'll be 15 in October. And so, I mean, there we we're having a conversation about Derek Coe at, at, at possibly in that, in that mid 50s, 55 range to young Maikai at, at 14. It is huge, uh, but you'll also notice, watch the waves that Derek catches. Mm. That man, in 1993, I watched him rule this lineup as he had done for decades prior to becoming the first Hawaiian world champion, and he does it all the way to this day. Would it, it would be a battle of attrition, right? The last man standing. Derek Ho knows for a fact that he has the knowledge, he has the pick of his waves, but he's rarely ever ever does that guy make a mistake that guy is polished and again it, that comes down to just years and years and years and putting the time and building a relationship to, in order to have that confidence and learning from his older brother michael michael won out here at pipeline with a cast on his wrist literally he broke his arm he went out there and he still owned it to this day one of the best performances pipeline has ever seen to see those two brothers continuing 
to charge and put and push each other out here at Pipeline is uh, it's it's a joy. Uh, and we're all lucky that we're able to, to witness it. Absolutely, and then it's trickling down to Mason Ho and Coco Ho, some of the world's best surfers anywhere in the world. Yeah, we'll see Mason Ho uh, and in heat eight of round two ran into, he was the first person, he and Coco were the first people that I uh, ran into yesterday when I, when I came into town off the plane. I stopped at B-Box uh, for some lunch and they were in there just as happy and as giddy and storytelling uh, as could be. All they want to talk about was snowboarding. Coco Ho, of course, uh, also on the on the Volcom team, having her own line of, uh, of, of women's clothing, the, the Coco Ho line, which we'll be, we'll be talking about. I think she'll stop by during the week uh, to share more about that with us as uh, Shion. Shion Crawford on the backhand. Pulls up high for a nice little barrel. You can, is it, is it me or can you, like, is it, can you actually see that little fatness of the high tide on, on, on the, on the lefts? Yeah. So the, the tide is kind of a, a medium high. Mm. It's actually dropping Sh right now. Medium. But it's, it's running up against the steepness of the beach. The water's having trouble being able to escape. So it kind of doubles whatever tide is there. Right now, I'd say the tide's probably right around a foot which doesn't seem like much, mm. but because of the way the beach is there, you can see actually the reverb coming right off the beach right there. Look, there's an actual wave that these guys can catch paddling back out. That's some serious backwash. That's something very serious to contend with once you're out in the lineup. Jamie O'Brien's probably watching right now going, oh, I want to be out there. My catch surf riding the backwash out there as we see young Hendrix Frankenrider. Look at the style as he's wrestling in this thing. Doing the foot dance, I mean, can you not see his the, the lineage in, in his style of his dad? That was a textbook. That was textbook Frankenrider. That was amazing. The only thing missing was long hair. <laughs> As he has just got the aft, young afterburners on getting uh, back out there. We talked earlier about the swell not getting any smaller. Yeah, Second reef cappers. Did you see that thing waving? Like, hi. Hi, kids, coming for you. I wonder what's more threatening in the lineup, Nathan Florence for these kids or a big <laughs> second reef capping wave? I'm going to say uh, the second reef capper because I mean, I was talking to, to, to Billy Kemper last night and he said, people forget, like we, we were out here the other day as uh, Sammy Gray pulls into a hammer. He looks like he is up and all right. Um, but he was saying, you know, I was out the other night and I got hit by like five or six wash throughs, second reef cappers. And he said, I got to the point where I was like depleted just from like getting pounded, getting pounded. And he said it carried over into the next day so that on finals day at the Sunset Pro, he said, I, I wasn't in my body. Again, he, I had to do all this crazy breath work. Ooh, as you see what happens uh, when things go wrong. You know, to have your energy depleted like that is actually really horrifying. This is a scary moment. But looking here at Mr. Hendricks, pretty textbook. Look at that, back foot slide. Frankenrider-esque. Performance, you can't teach that. You, you really can't, but I'm telling you, uh, I'm looking at this heat right now, and I've watched the ways that Sammy Crawford has uh, has caught, excuse me, Sammy Gray. Mm. And uh, see how I did that with Xion and, and Sammy? Mm -hmm. My two new favorites. But uh, Sammy Gray is really impressing me. Uh, the waves he caught have been a little bit out of his league, perhaps, but he is matching the power and performance here at Pipeline. Uh, being able to overcome those backwashes, uh, he's definitely a guy to watch for in the upcoming years. Just a minute and 30 seconds to go. You can see Sammy Gray waving uh, to the beach, wants to know the situation, scores, wants to know what his competitors need. Young Hendricks, Frank and Ryder, I believe we are waiting uh, for one more score from him. Looking for a 1.41. 1. 
And, you know, we said it before in the other heat, it just makes you appreciate wave selection. You know, when you got these kids who are all looking like, I, I need a, a one, a two, a three, but how big those scores become if, if, if you don't have that ability to put your head down and be in the right position to get that wave. And the scary fact is that you can take a 10-point ride and turn it to a one way too fast here at Pipeline. Mm -hmm. The ramifications of falling underneath one of these waves is serious. Um, you know, Sammy obviously just bounced right back after that crazy pit he pulled into. Uh, really impressive. Xion is, is on a roll right now. A little kickstall rodeo ride there with 10 seconds to go. Interesting, a very low scoring heat. Mm. Okay, uh, a lot of these guys don't have a lot of the knowledge of sitting out here by themselves. I wonder how much that played into, I don't even know where to sit right now. Right. Well, as Nathan Florence said, this is an experience that none of these young surfers are going to forget. As we see Hendrix Frankenrider coming in. The first of many performances, I believe, uh, for, for young Frankenrider. Wassel, nice to open the day with you, sir. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. As, as we are about to welcome in Vaughn Blakey and Chris Cote. Well, young Sheon Crawford wasn't afraid uh, on his backhand, and he advanced. as Pipeline showed that experience is key if you want to move forward. Sammy Gray getting it done, unafraid to throw himself over the ledge, followed by Sheon Crawford. As we have two heats down here in our round one of 144, and Pipeline's just gonna keep on doing this all day. Chris Cote, I'm tossing to you, sir. Thank you very much, Sal Masakela. What a way to start the day here in round one. Round one, Heat 3 has a couple names that if you know anything about Pipeline, you know these names. Jamie O'Brien, Derek Ho, the two veterans, two of the best to ever do it at Pipeline. They'll be going up against Makana Peng, a young, hard-charging rookie, along with Wolf Werthmeyer. Yeah, this is going to be a really fun heat to watch. Of course, anytime you see Derek Ho or Jamie O'Brien in Pipeline, you got to get excited because you know you're about to witness a master class. And I'm also very excited to see Wolf and Makana get out there. And I'm excited about everything. I'm excited about this guy, Von Blakey, hey. joining us uh, from the beach right over there. I saw you watching the waves. Your eyeballs appeared to be transfixed oh on what goodness. we're seeing. This morning, I have rocked up. I mean, yesterday afternoon was pretty much pumping. We all rocked up. It was one of those just bluebird afternoons, green waves, increasing swell. But then this morning was something completely else, wasn't it? It was oh, just yeah. stacked and absolutely pumping, mate. Like. It's hard to believe just how exciting. You, you cannot take your eyes off the lineup. You know when you go to a party and you're talking to someone and they're kind of looking over your shoulder the whole time and they're not really talking to you? Has that ever happened to you? <laughs> I, happens I, to me I a feel lot. that, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, who else can I talk to at this party? It, it's like every conversation you have in the backyard here at Pipe is like that. You're just trying to get eye contact and nothing going on. They're just, oh. It's all eyes on the lineup. It is pumping. The today. main attraction, of course. Uh, 2010 Vulcan Pipe Pro Champion. Uh, this guy is considered among the best of the best. We're talking the elite out here at Pipeline and Backdoor. Who is J.O.B.? Well, he's a guy that not only has a lot of fun out of the water, but uh, also has the ability to make the most dangerous, the scariest, the heaviest Pipeline look easy. Mm. I mean, he does it with style. He always appears to be on the best waves. And... Uh, well, I think if you made a top 10 list of the best tube riders of all time, like guys who have ever stood on a surfboard, he'd be in it. Oh, I'm sure. And, um, you know, the influence that he's had, not just on uh, grommets coming through, but just on the technique of, of staying deep, uh, 
the way that he toys with it, Kote, that's that's one of the craziest things about J.O.B. He just, he makes sort of, you know, the most treacherous situations look almost playful. Yeah. Which is bizarre. I mean, you know, before he came along, uh, it was really, it was really tricky, wasn't it? Because you were always looking at waves like that and going, that could kill you. But with him, it was like, oh, that looks fun. Yeah. And then... To your point, before Jamie O'Brien came along, there was a guy named Derek O, 1993 world champion, goofy footer out here. Who, I mean, you, you kind of think about okay, the ultimate pipeline specialist, Jerry Lopez. Mm. Who do you think of right after Jerry Lopez? Oh. You think Derek O? Without doubt, I, I think uh, with Derek, the coolest thing is just uh, like Jerry. It, it was how easy it was. It doesn't look playful. It looks gnarly, but it's his calmness in that eye of the storm that really separates him from everyone else um you know the very first time he paddled out here i'm sure he was just dropping into big bombs you hear about the surfers always having to pay their dues but derek is just one of the all-time greats and um man oh man what a legend i'm so stoked he's in the drawer he's not even like doing that last chance qualifier he's just yeah. in the thick of it right from round one well that's a, that's another great point because as we see uh this is jamie o'brien on his backhand, disappearing. That is one of the very few unmade pipeline waves we'll see from Jamie O'Brien. But back to Derek Ho. This is not a, a, a gimme because he's a master, because he's a legend. He's been putting in tons of time in the lineup this season, mm. every season. I mean, he has not missed a year at pipeline. And so for him to get in this contest, uh, again, this is not some kind of golden ticket free pass. He's obviously earned it, 93 world champ, pipe master again and again. but. Also the fact that at 55 years old, he's still doing it day after day. So, of it's course, we have some of the heaviest veterans, some of the best pipe surfers in history in the lineup right now. And uh, add to that, hungry, young, up-and-coming surfers that are set to cut their teeth out here at Massive Pipeline. And we want to welcome to the booth Sammy Gray. Congratulations, yeah. surviving, thriving at Pipeline. What a way to uh, put your name on the map. And, you know, when we saw that heat come up, we're going, okay, Sammy Gray, let's see what he's got. Hey. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, where do you, where are you from? And tell us about your relationship with Pipeline. Um, I'm from Kauai, East Island over. So um, I don't have like the best relationship, but you know, it's the sickest wave on earth. So just try it out there, try to get a couple. And with the heat like Never that. Never made any, but you know. Hey, that changed mm -hmm. just now. So tell us about the nerves going out there. You know how heavy this contest is. You got, you know, Jamie O'Brien, Derek Ho, all the legends are here. For you to advance through that heat, get past the nerves. Now what are you going to do looking forward to your next opportunity at Pipe? Um, just hopefully get better waves. Just hopefully get some good barrels in the next heat. Can you um, talk us through the conditions? Because, I mean, from the beach, uh, it's a beautiful morning here. The sun's shining on the face of the waves. We saw Nathan Florence get big drainers obviously his relationship with this place got in, into some good ones but there was uh times out there where you looked a bit frustrated mate how bad is the backwash yeah it's kind of nuts right now i seen the first heat there was a bunch of good ones and then in my heat there was a bunch of clean sets and kind of a lot of mushy closeouts so i just kind of got frustrated but i ended up making it so hopefully we'll do better next round so what's the path to get here to the vulcan pie pro to get into this draw qs 5000 points on the line bragging rights, obviously the honor of surfing pipeline. How did you get into this contest? Uh, last year was my first year in the QS, so uh, I just did um, the sunset qualifier out here, and then I did a couple contests in Tahiti, Papara and Rangiroa, and that's the only QSs I did, so that's pretty much what got me into this one. Hopefully more this year. Points needed, points mm -hmm. earned right there. Well, first of all, Congratulations on even getting in right this on, contest. You. Yeah. You got through that first heat. Now it's time to shine, Sammy. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We'll see you coming up in future heats. Yeah. Thanks. And that's the story, Vaughn. We see it every year. There's, there's going to be an undergrounder in the finals. Will it be Sammy? Well, I hope so, mate. Uh, obviously, can pack it. Like he said, uh, didn't get sort of the waves that he was looking for to show what he's really made of, but it did seem really you know, deal well with a couple of backwash sections. Just to get into them out here can be tricky on a day like this, Chris, because there is a lot of wobble out there, man. It's, uh, you know, with Jamie O'Brien's pulling in and not just slicing it through with ease, 
then, uh, yeah, you know that it's tricky. Well, some of the names that you're going to see in the draw here in the opening rounds, of course, uh, might not be super familiar, but I know one really cool name I'm looking at right now. Wolf Wertheimer. Yeah, I actually a had wolf. to... <laughs> I had to scour through um, Instagram just to check out, you know, where this kid came from, what his story is, and uh, he is just packing big ones all over the place, mate. Every single shot is either him inside the chamber. And, oh, what's happened here? It looks like uh, Jamie O has lost the board. Yeah, uh, an unforced way to channel his inner Mark Cunningham. We'll see what happened here. Uh, of course, a, a leash is not going to help you. Oh, wow. It's just a big old roll through. Oh, that's just the classic right there. Bail, you mean, if Jamie O'Brien's bailing his board, that's a big scary wave. <laughs> yeah. If he didn't attempt a duck dive, and the board's already at Rocky Point. It's, oh, it's a mile down the beach. So much water moving down there. The shorey just looks like whitewater rapids. It's, you know, if you uh, go in past your knees, you're going for a little trip down the beach, I think, mate. Yeah, and this is uh, one instance that we, the surfers are allowed to get on the ski and get in and grab their board as we see Makana Pang, young surfer who's put in a lot of time out here at Pipe. He's uh, slowly creeping up the pecking order. You know, he's, he's still a kid mm. and you'll see him out here when it's 10 foot, 15 foot. He is just one of the, you know, one of the Groms that you hear that name over and over free surf sessions. And, you know, it's quiet at first, but then season after season, this season in particular, Wakana Peng's a name we've heard a lot. Mm, and it's, it's, you know, he's uh, he's got the lineage there. He's, his dad, Dennis Peng, a, a fantastic surfboard shaper. And it must be funny when you, you, you've got a Grom who's just so committed to pipeline, because that means a lot of snap boards. And uh, I think over this season in particular, he was uh, sheepishly walking back into the factory after most sessions. You know, saying, hey, Dad, uh, any chance I can get a couple more boards back? Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, he goes through a few too. Like, when you surf out here a lot, I mean, especially, as you say, Chris, trying to climb that pecking order, trying to, like, you know, get in a position where when the big ones come, the alpha males will, like, respect your place in the lineup. Well, that means you've got to take a, a fair few beatings as well and, and take shots on waves that are, are going to be bone and board busters. See Jamie O'Brien here. Chillin. Very calm. He's got a... So you, you, you're looking at the suit that Jamie O'Brien wears. He's got this uh, Buell compression suit. So he has a little bit of extra padding, a little extra flotation in his wetsuit. It's all built in there. And uh, it's got to give you a little bit of peace of mind. You saw right there. I mean, that was that was probably a wipeout that's happened to Jamie a million times. Bail your board, break your leash, board goes in. Uh, and you can tell that he's been through this before <laughs> he's yawning he's yawning he's casually walking he's got 13 <laughs> minutes and okay there we let's let's see it let's see some ferocity here we saw jamie o'brien paddle out last year in speedo that that was a moment that was a moment and uh we're gonna see right here okay this is going to be hopefully a master class in a guy who is so calm cool collected he's got time to go he's got to get back out there and get at least one good ride to put himself in advancing position. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with more from the Vulcan Pie Pro 2020. 12 minutes, 48 seconds to go here in round one, heat three. Stay tuned. Watching the Vulcan Pipe Pro 2020. 
Pro is known as one of the best events of the year, hands down, not only because, of course, we're at Pipeline, but because of Drew Tunes, animations, iconic. the excitement, it's, it's the hype. Venturing into iconic territory, the That's Drew right. Turner from oh, yeah. Pipe Pro. Well, we are live from Pipeline here on the North Shore of Oahu. The swell came in just at the perfect time, pulsing on day one. Chris Cote here with Von Blakey. Vaughn, uh, this, this first round is a showcase of local and Hawaii Tahiti Nui regional talent. Some of the some of the best pipeline surfers to ever do it. Groms, we may have never even heard of. It's awesome, Underground isn't it? chargers. Yeah, I, was ch I uh, had a little bit of a flick through the heat drawer and I was just so st stoked to see there was like, you know, 14, 15 year old kids in here against guys like Derek Ho, uh, the 93 world champ, obviously 55, did you say? 55 years yeah. old, yeah. And just but like, one thing they all have in common is they want to make their market pipe. And they're absolutely frothed out for it, man. And a, and a way to do that is to get a perfect 10. Yes. Getting a perfect 10 in pipeline, of course, that'll be the highlight of anyone's life. But just to add to that, our friends at Yeti are going to be giving uh, the super cooler. I mean, we're talking the Rolls Royce coolers. And Love each surfer know. that gets a perfect 10 is going to get that Yeti cooler. And from what we know about surfers from Hawaii, Tahiti, Nui region, I mean, the extracurriculars we have available here, fishing, hunting. They get a, they get a workout, the yeah. Yeti's. The oh, coolers yeah. get a real solid workout over here. Um, just hanging out in the front yards of the Volcom houses, there's like 30 or 40 Yeti coolers over there. Yeah. Stocked with... Uh, Filled with Red Bulls. Oh, yeah. Red Bulls. Tuna. The... Uh, Venison. Salted meats. Go on the barbecue, tie men, men and women dipping Tomata themselves Henry's. in there in ice. <laughs> you can use them for anything. Well, yeah, that's right. I think Sal's over there right now having a nice bath. I think you're right. I hear the breathing, the Wim Hoffing. How are you going? Have you, have you been Wim Hoffing at all? No, I, 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 you know, I like ice cold, you know, beverages. Mm. But uh, putting my body in the, I, you know, maybe I'm not being athletic enough. I don't know, man. I haven't tried it either. I'm going to. I mean, I find it bad, hard enough to get into a cold bath, like these, even without ice in it. A lukewarm bath is hard. <laughs> these Yeti coolers are big enough, Vaughn. We could try it together. All right. Should we try it later? Teamwork. First time ever. I reckon we do it. Both well, of us try and squeeze in. Do we have to get a perfect 10 in Pipeline to get one? Maybe you know, we can borrow one. Actually, a perfect 10. And what yeah, we, what we, makes we, a perfect we get 10? A, well, we get a bit spoiled for them at the Vulcan Pipe Pro because there's normally about half a dozen, you know, on a good year. And it looks like it's absolutely pumping i'd be amazed if we didn't see a few tens drop in this event but it's crazy man some of the best surfers in the world ever went through their careers without even getting a 10. i think um uh, rob bain for example the gamote we call him the grand masters of all time champion uh he got his first 10 in his last ever event at gland he was on tour for years one cts oh, wow. that's a great um, stat same with gary elkerton you know four-time world title runner-up got his first 10, I think, in G-Land in a semi-final. Only had the one in his whole career. So you're right, mate. Getting a 10 is a big, big deal. And getting one at Pipeline in particular, that is something you will lock away in your, like, treasure trove of memories forever. And backing that up with the Yeti, that's just... It's a good reward. I think you should go home with something if you get a 10. And I think the reason we're seeing Jamie O'Brien so casually walking out to the lineup and paddling with ease is because he knows he is among the short list maybe four to six surfers that have multiple tents we're talking five plus perfect tens of pipeline jamie o'brien john john florence kelly slater uh, those are just a couple of names that that definitely are in the multiple 10 club out here at pipe andy irons had a couple incredibly memorable perfect tens i remember joel parkinson got two tens in one heat out here right is he the only guy to do it at pot i believe so wow that's crazy isn't it the perfect heat. of all the guys who have ruled out here it just goes to show how much time he spent you know staring off that top veranda right into the eye back door that was really cool well the the list of surfers we have entered here is i mean among the best draws that I've ever seen for a Volcom Pipe Pro event. John John Florence in the draw. 
Uh, we saw Nathan Florence earlier really just putting on a, a, a showcase as to how to surf this wave. Jamie O'Brien, to have Jamie O'Brien and Derrico in the first round, day one, that it tells seems, you how deep this draw <laughs> it is. It seems hard to believe. I'm pretty amazed by Jamie's attitude walking up the beach. He must have just, this is how in sync he is. While he was on the beach, completely non-stressed, walking around, nonchalance just oozing out of him. Not a single wave was ridden. And he's gotten back out there and he's in position. That just says to me how tight this relationship is between he and Pipeline. Yeah, he uh, literally grew up staring right at back door from his, uh, his back patio. And now he's just moved over 40 feet. So now he's staring right into the peak, Pipeline and back door. And of course, I mean, this is not superlative. Jamie O'Brien is one of the best to ever do it mm. at Pipeline and Backdoor. You've got guys that are, okay, that guy's one of the best ever at Pipeline. That guy's one of the best ever at Backdoor. Jamie's one of the best ever at both. No, you're so, so true. Oh, that was a nice wave there. The wolf. Wolfie. Wow. That kind of came like out we, of nowhere. I said that like we were best mates, hey? Wolfie. Well, we might be getting to know Wolf a little bit better uh, if he can one more wave on the board. I think that's going to be a pretty solid score. This one came out of nowhere. Look at this. Big TP. It's a big, thick wedge. And he's just beautifully stalled up into that chamber. And he comes out after the spit. Epic technique. I heard Nathan Florence talking earlier, Chris, about just how steep and thick it is today with the backwash and also the uh, combining swells. It's making really thick A-frames. And so the drop is critical. There's no escaping it. You're not gonna get easy chip-ins this morning. You really gotta basically expect a bit of air between your fins, reconnect with the face, and then you gotta hit the brakes. Otherwise, you're just fanging it. You're going way too fast for the speed of the wave. So nice yeah. work there from Wolf. Yeah, I really like that. That was just the, the clinical backsider approach to pipeline, so no doubt See the Quicksilver sticker on his board. He has been, I'm sure, coached by Reef McIntosh, you know, by the Quicksilver team. They've got a house just up the beach as well. So the score comes through. Clean, 4-5. That's enough to get Wolf in the lead. And Double W out there in the top spot. And imagine, for, for a kid like Wolf, this has to be one of his first Vulcan Pie Pros to take out Jamie O'Brien, Derrico. There's still time. There's three minutes, 40 seconds, but there's the confidence that would give you. Oh, that would be. You could almost retire on that. Right? It's it's a crazy thing to be paddling Gather out. Gather the and grandchildren it around. And just, oh, yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you about the time I took out Jamie <laughs> exactly. O'Brien. Piper. But, man, I mean, the aura around Derrico, just, you know, He's out there yet to get a, a ride. It's incredible, mate. Every year when I see him in real life, I, I have to pinch myself. Being a, a, oh. a child of uh, the 80s. The legend who, of legends. Hit my like surf fanaticism peak uh, in the you know early 90s, right when he won his world title. It's I see him and I just fan out. Like, oh, yeah. I, I get like kind of a bit tongue-tied, like um, you know, looking at. I don't know, a girl at school I had a crush on or something. You know? There, there a, is a, a mystical presence. Yeah, he's just there. like... You know, th th this, is a, th this is a breed of surfer that, you know, his peers, a lot of his peers aren't really doing it at this level anymore. So we see a nice split peak. And come on, Wolf, come out. Wow, travel Wolf gets time. Punched. He will get credit, though, right? I mean, the, the judges watch how long these surfers ride the tube. And while that was not a make, he earned points there by traveling so far in that barrel. Well, I think we just saw it happen in the last heat. Uh, no one really made a good tube, and so the, the, the tube time, the travel time, uh, does come into play. It'll, it'll, it'll get the score. There's, oh, geez, unlucky there for Makana Pang as well, but he's only got one little score. So everything is, is adding up. Look at this thing, though. Wow, that was a really nice first section on that backdoor wave. The second one ran away from him. You can hear the oohs and ahs coming to the beach. The stadium's open. I mean, you look up and down the beach right now, all these houses are absolutely packed. Oh, and well, that's exactly what I was talking about. <laughs> Get Dad like, on the phone. Oh, man, 
I just made that board for you, kid. Busted <laughs> stick! Couldn't have said it any better myself. Mm. There's Makana Pang. Again, this kid's name. I mean, you just hear it over. Did you see Makana out there? You see that wave Makana got? Already made a huge name for himself. It's and now the story we're looking at, a minute 10 to go. Oh. Where's Jamie O'Brien? Where's Derek Ho? They're out there. They've got the line up to themselves. A minute to go. This would be an unprecedented upset. And that's taking nothing away from Wolf and Makana, who are incredible surfers in their own right. But we're talking Jamie O'Brien and Derek Ho. Yeah, this is uh, not how you would have expected this heat to play out. Certainly not on paper at the start. It's been uh, a little slow, and as we said, it's not perfect out there, Kote. There's lots of warble. We've seen uh, Jamie O'Brien on his very first wave in this heat. It's a 1.5. Any other day of the week, he would have just shredded that thing, eyes closed. Jamie O'Brien needs a 1.98. But he only has 25 seconds to go. Shot. I I'm... For once in my life, kind of, I might be a little speechless right now. <laughs> Does not happen often. No, this is, uh, oh, this is really unfortunate. Two guys who we would have loved to have seen go deep into this event. They challenge for the win. Oh, here's Jamie. Get up. All right, his hands may have left the rail. And just cruising on this one. Hmm. Interesting. I'm gonna go ahead and sit over here and kind of take stock of what just happened. There's a lot to unpack here, Vaughn. It's a very, I thought maybe just a big old hack on the end. Might have done something, but he almost pulled out of it halfway through. Huh. Like he didn't want to, the, didn't want to like exert too much energy or I don't know, it was an interesting turn. Well, you know, he, he broke his board midway through that heat, so that sucked a lot of time off the clock. So uh, our past champion, Jamie O'Brien, 0.87. Well, so that is a, a shocking turn of events, but you gotta give it up to Wolf and Makana. To, uh, you know, this, this is a, an event where, where we often do see, you know, a passing of the torch. Mm. We might have just seen that. There's Wolf, your heat winner with a 4.5 and a 2.17. I mean, at some point, I think a guy like Jamie O'Brien and uh, also like Derek Ho, they're, they're just not going to take off on two two point insiders. I mean, that's just not their game. Eight or late. They say, here's a recap. Round one, heat three. We wanted it. We expected big things. Jamie O'Brien and Derek O, but it was the two rookies, the two grommets, making it through. And that's the wave. That was the wave of the heat. Wolf just uh, finding a way to negotiate that TP. This would have been a huge score if he'd made this one. This is our heat winner. Worth on that. That second section. Bummer, it just didn't open up for him a little bit. Jamie O'Brien had a chance here. Sort of cruised along, looked like he was lining up something. And in the end there, Chris just lost interest in that end section. Well, well, that wasn't a stellar competitive performance. It takes nothing away from the legacy of Jamie O'Brien. Then we see Wolf talking to the legendary Doug Silva. So that's where that competitive knowledge comes from. And I love to see that. Uh, Wolf got the win, comes in, and then they do the download. Here we go, round one, heat four. Dylan Fransman, Ryder Guest, Ayala, Stewart, and Landon McNamara. Those are some names that we've seen go deep in the Volca Pie Pro in Ayala, Stewart, and Landon McNamara. Ryder Guest making a push, Dylan Fransman. A relatively new name to the game here at Pipeline, but let's start it with a bang from Ryder Guest. Freight train of a wave. 
Oh, yes. The inside section provides the thrill. That'll put the judges on notice. Yeah. I, I think that you do see that a lot too. You know, if there's a slow heat, you see the guys just come straight out of the gates. They want to get busy. They don't want to be sitting around too late. Oh, incredibly late drop. That was as heavy as it gets. A late drop for Landon McNamara, a musician, a pipeline specialist. He puts in time on stage and in the water. And he's good at both of them, isn't he? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I think he's, uh, he's made movements on the charts and movements on the ratings. like it. So there's a quick look at Ryder Guest there in blue. And this is exactly what we want to see. Surf fans get fired up. Waves pumping into pipeline. 21-28 on the clock. This is a huge set. Corduroy. Man, it is pumping out there. I just can't wait to see that bit of backwash get out of these waves. But uh, some awesome big drops to start off this heat. Right, I guess, waiting on a score, but a blinder. I loved that first wave. That was one of those, you saw the patience, you know, he was flying so fast and you're thinking, oh, he's outrunning. And then he saw something that none of us did, a giant section coming at him through this inside. Here's that first wave of blue. This is the freight trainer. Oh, he's just so cool off that first big section. And then this, where he just races it, really finds the perfect line through there. Didn't get too cute. It was the old, but wait, there's more. Yeah, well, I love the, the very start of this. Look how steep and tall this wave is. Kote, it is picture book out there. Oh, look at him standing tall and just really enjoys the first section of this. A big, big tube out the back here at Pipeline and then puts the foot down. Uh, he could have been guilty of just enjoying the view a little too much, but he decided not to get too cute. You know, Plenty of speed comes out. I love that we got to see that from both angles. So you have the judge's angle, you have the fan's perspective of that wave. Uh, and again, that was one of those where, you know, he could have easily just rested on that drop, the first kind of cover up. It's weird to say cover up on a wave that heavy, <laughs> but the fact that he was able to read it and get the most out of that wave, highest score of the day so far, 7-3-3 for Ryder Guest. Well earned. That was amazing. Uh, just that image. That footage of him up in the lip as that thing just starts to jack up on the first reef. I mean, that is probably the most precarious position you'll ever find yourself in. It's all ahead of you. There's no pulling back. You're locked and loaded. And the way that he dealt with that drop, beautiful as well. Yeah, I mean, that is going to be a, a memory he's going to play over and this. over throughout Man, the rest of his life. Look at this. This is the moment, isn't it? You're just at the apex, feathering lip. Big trainer coming up, but look at the color of the ocean, the light shining off the lip. There's your poster for your wall right there. That is going to be a memorable wave. You can watch that over and over. Amazing footage from the broadcast team here. This is just oh, exactly how you want to surf pipe. If he never surfs pipeline again, that wave will still be <laughs> a lifelong memory. It's so cool. I mean, isn't that, it? that is. 733, I mean, that's a big score, too. So not only did he get the dream wave, I know he's been barreled out here before. I know he's got a lot of good sessions out here before, but right there, I mean, the sun, when you get everything come together like that, a 733 has got to feel like 100. Oh, man. And also just what that does, you know, first few minutes of the heat, I think it was right in the first, you know, few seconds of the heat, really, that confidence, what that'll do for him as he looks for a backup wave. You know, he'll be he'll be really hunting that lineup now for a second one whereas you know for everyone else they've still got to get that that feeling out of their feet the pins and needles just you've got to get that good one don't you because sometimes if you are if you have a an iffy start or a dodgy start or you cop a big hiding it can really start getting into the back of your brain on a day like this too it, it is critical out there no it looks looks dreamy kote but it is deadly well, we've already seen two of the biggest names to ever do it at Pipeline go down early. And uh, this guy right here made uh, his name known. The Wolf comes through <laughs> with the heat win. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. We saw your name come on the score line. You know, we, uh, I've seen your name in amateur events and pro juniors coming through, but now we're seeing you on the big stage at QS 5000. 
at the Vulcan Pipe Pro. Welcome to Pipeline, Wolf. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah, um, this year was my goal to be able to do the Volcom and hopefully make some heats. Um, and to be able to come here and get that heat draw with Jamie and Uncle Derek and to be able to rise above feels really good. And I'm, I'm just so stoked to be surfing out here. I mean, it's pristine, perfect pipeline. Um, and I'm just looking forward to the next round and being able to surf more. I'm just super stoked right now. I love the, the relief and the stoke that you brought in here. But tell us about when you see those two names on paper. I mean, we were tripping out <laughs> sitting up here. You're paddling out and you're going, that's Jamie O'Brien. That's Derek Ho. What, what did it feel like when you first got the news that that was your first heat of the day? Um, well, I saw, I saw it online a couple of days ago and I was like, there's, there's no way. And I started just calling people and like asking them for advice. <laughs> is this really happening? Is it, <laughs> this, this is wrong, right? This has to be wrong. But um, no, uh, after talking to some people, you know, this pipeline's that kind of way where it doesn't matter who you are. You can, have some of the, you can either get a one or a 10 and it can go anyway. Whoever's on the best wave is going to get that score. And especially in this round one, all the Hawaii, all the Hawaii boys, like everyone's super gnarly. There's not one guy who's not gnarly, so. Um, we heard Nathan Florence talking this morning about the way that the swells are colliding is really making those thick A-frames. You know, it's a, it's a heavy, heavy drop, and then you've really got to rinse off speed quickly because it's a short barrel. Yeah. I mean, we just saw a long one then from Ryder, but in your heat in particular, it was just those real square nuggets. Yeah. Uh, you got the best wave of the heat on exactly one of those waves. How hard is it to slow down once you've sort of free-fallen down the face on one of those things? Pretty much if you're not butt dragging at the beginning of the wave and that speed starts to pick up, there's no way of washing that speed away. So you got to get on it right away or you're backdooring it on a super heavy drop. But it was it was tough out there and there was like a couple wash shoes in a heat and me and McConnell got really smoked on one. So I'm just stoked to be able to make it out alive. Um, is there any reason that you can see, oh, yeah, this wave was amazing. Um, talk us through this one, mate, because the first chamber was amazing, like just straight through it. Yeah, that, that, that first section was just, Really natural, I was standing tall in it, and then I, right here, I felt it spit, and then I couldn't see anything, and I was like, please let me out, please let me out, but then it kind of ran into that Aints bowl, and then ended up going down, and I was like, no, that would've been such a good one, but I, did, I still enjoyed the first section. Yeah, well, you got credit for kind of that long tube, right? Even if you don't make it out, the judges are gonna reward you for yep. that. I liked when I saw you come in too, all right? So that was a huge job right there. I mean, mm -hmm. you could retire right now knowing <laughs> that you just took down Jamie O'Brien and Derek Hill yeah. Pipeline. You came in, you talked to the legendary Doug Silva. So now what's the game plan moving forward? That was kind of the, you know, that heat right there was, okay, if you lose that heat, whatever. Mm -hmm. You just lost the two of the best to ever do it. You've advanced through that heat. What's next for the Wolf? Um... Honestly, I'm just going to focus on enjoying myself, especially with the, the way conditions are. And I know I surf best when I'm having fun. So I'm, I'm going to go out there and not worry about anyone else and just worry about getting my, my good waves. All right. Love good it. Good stuff, man. Yeah. Um, thanks so much for joining us. And uh, well done on getting that nice little nug and making that heat. Um, is there any reason, just before you go, like why, you know, Jamie and Derek struggled to get waves that you could see? Was it inconsistent? Or what was sort of like your read on the lineup? Um, so we had those two wash throughs, and then I saw Uncle Derek sitting kind of wide, but um, we were, I was talking to Jamie just now, and the paddle out time was actually really short, and Jamie and Uncle Derek got swept all the way down, which kind of gave me and McClellan a little time to figure out our lineups and get a little heads up, but I don't know. I just, it's the way the cookie crumbles. Yeah. No worries, man. Well, uh, yeah, congratulations. More Thank wolf you guys. coming up Appreciate in it. round two. Congratulations. Well, that's going to be a fun story to follow throughout Isn't this it? contest. The yeah. wolf hunting at Pipeline. I want to see a wolf claim come out and just start howling at the right. moon. Yeah. yeah. Or well, t or like Teen Wolf. I, I wouldn't mind rewarding the wolf with a uh, Yeti cooler if he gets a perfect 10 in his next heat. Sweet. Oh, here we go. We got uh, a 13 10 here, Ryder Guest with a 733 and a 333, a 1066. That's one of the higher heat totals we've seen of the day thus far. Ayala Stewart just with the 177. Fransman a 1.17, McNamara with a 0 0.70. So uh, plenty of time left for uh, these three surfers to get something going to try to catch up to our surfer in blue, Ryder Guest. Yeah, I think Ryder has uh, pretty much thrown down the gauntlet, gloves off. He's just straight out of the gates. See that? Drop three huge cliches. In yeah, one that was a great Thank sports you. cliche trifecta. Um, but I, I mean, I think that was definitely part of his strategy because when you see a slow heat the last thing you want to do is get caught into 
you know, waiting around to try and get a score on the board. Well, with 12.20 to go, we're going to take a quick break, but we'll be back with more action. We promise you're going to see Crazy Barrel at Pipeline or Backdoor in the next 12 seconds, in the next 12 minutes. This is the Vulcan Pie Pro 2020. We'll be right back with more action live from Pipeline. iconic 70s. His moustache. Chick. Gold skull earrings. Blair. Shiny dome. Ha <laughs> ha. Yep. It can only be your old mate Vaughn dead. Live at the Vulcan Pipe Pro. Well, that was awesome. And more awesomeness will come. You're watching the Vulcan Pie Pro 2020, a QS 5000. This could be the launch pad for a future 2021 championship tour surfer. You're gonna have to wait and see. We have four days of competition on tap for you. This is day one, and this is Dylan Franzman. Quick uh, little high tuck right there, like the style of that wave. Uh, he's trying to get rid of a 0 .80. So, uh, could have done it on that wave. Mm. Brandon yeah. Guest with a high score of 7-3-3. That's right. Uh, Dylan North Shore Grummet. Good to see a lot of Groms in this field. I actually forgot to ask Wolf before whether it, uh, it gives him a little bit more pep in his step that he's got mates, same age, wanting Whoa. the same things. Whoa, heavy one. Come out. That was just on the edge. Right there, you saw the late takeoff, a thick wave. And a little bit labored on the paddle out. I mean, no matter what, any wipeout at Pipeline is going to be brutal. We'll see what happened here. Landon up in the lip. I mean, you just don't see an easy entry oh. to Pipeline. Look how critical he was falling down the face. Got the line, though. Engaged the rail. Plenty of speed. Look how thick that is, Cote. Mate, that is crazy. It looks like it might have got him before... He was uh, overtaken by the foam ball here. Look at that. That is so square. You know, I think something that doesn't quite translate on camera is how fast this wave is. I mean, you saw it right there with that drone angle, the DGI drone angle that, I mean, that wave is, lit, that was literally a, a second. I mean, half a second. All of that happened in such a short time. And if Landon McNamara can't make it out of a barrel, it's probably not a makeable barrel. He's that good out here. Yeah, and uh, Dylan Fransman again, just catching a wobble, getting tossed over the falls. Look at this line, oh! Ooh, Ayala Stewart right there, up and over. You got the Hawaiian Water Patrol, eyes on every wave ridden. There's Ayala. See Ryder Guest having a look there. I mean, right there, that shows you the speed of that wave. And just the thickness. It is just a big slab out there at the moment. Pipeline in particular, really thick today. Uh, lots of water standing up on that first reef. And really, when you're seeing guys like Yala go over the falls, Chris, you know it's extra challenging. Look how thick this thing is. Right there, slow motion angle. Nothing engaging with that wave. Straight into the air. And you saw, you know, he didn't have any choice. There was no rail, no fin that was going to save him. 
He went straight up and over. And those are those kind of wipeouts that, yeah, they look gnarly, but they appear to be kind of run of the mill. But those are the ones where you just have to keep your eyes on these surfers. And you could breathe a sigh of relief when you see them pop up. Sometimes they'll pat themselves on the head and they say, I'm good, don't worry about it. Uh, they'll grab their board and paddle out quick. That's when you can breathe a sigh of relief because again, any wipeout out here, especially today, where this is 10, 12 foot uh, pipeline. 100%. And it's interesting, you know, like in the past few years, we've really, uh, regular footers, you know, take off late, late under the lip, sort of use the rail and that crouch position to really come off the bottom hard and fast or butt drag into the pit. Um, in the last couple of years, particularly, we saw it a lot with Gabby and Italo in last year's Pipe Masters. The way and where they were taken off on really steep pipeline waves was more like that regular footer approach, where you're just swinging it at the last possible moment, almost no paddle, and free falling into it. And um, I'm starting to see that influence creep yeah. into their goofy approach, because uh, traditionally, it was longer board, roll in, set up off your bottom turn, and get drained through the inside. But Well, yeah, I mean, it all changed with Bruce, Andy, Kelly, Jamie O'Brien, John John, and they really kind of, they, 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 they backed the goofy footers into a corner and they say, oh, you're gonna take off over there? Okay, I'm gonna take off back here. Mm -hmm. Basically taking off at back door and being able to do those right angle bottom turns, whereas the goofy footers have to do a more kind of extended line into the peril. As you see, late drop there. And this is Ryder Gast again. Little bonus foam ride there, but dude, imagine the feeling of even though that's not going to be a high soaring wave, the 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 stoke and the you know the the joy that making that drop, the uh, the the level of intensity, just standing up and just feeling nothing under your feet, and then being able to regain composure and make that bottom turn, that's a huge feat in itself. Man, I think every surfer on earth knows that feeling. I mean, maybe not a pipeline, maybe not on a, an eight to 10 foot wave, but the thrill you get when you are just weightless and you ride out of it clean, that is as good as getting barreled, as good as a big roundy. You know, you can really get stoked on that feeling. Uh, even if, you know, you get to the uh, the bottom turn and there's not much to do with it, right there getting a little foam ball ride. But yeah, I just think the goofs, mate, they've just, managed to find a way to combat that regular foot approach at Pipeline in the last couple of years. It's definitely later, it's definitely more under the lip, and there's a lot more free fall going on. Yeah, and I think it's, uh, you know, the positioning in the lineup has all changed. Now you're seeing, you know, on a, on a free surf day at Pipeline, when it's second reef, you'll see guys like Derrico, Mark Healy, you know, Wakita out there way out the back, and they're gonna be looking at those big roll-ins, mm. you know, and then, You'll see Bear Mamiya, John John, Nathan, kind of a little bit further on the inside on their back end when it's a proper pipe swell. And when you get into a contest setting with only four surfers in the water, you really have your choice of where to sit. So that's where we're gonna see, I think, to your point, some of these goofy footers putting themselves later in the lip just to be able to get to the bottom of the wave in that spot where we are seeing the, the regular footers able to grab the rail and pull into the barrel. Yeah, and I think that that's probably been happening at Chopu more than Pipeline over the last few years. That's that's where it sort of started to change. Just thinking about performances from Gabe and Owen Wright, and those sorts of guys who are really just bottom turning in the barrel. You know, that's, that's the difference. It's not bottom turning to get in the barrel, it's actually pumping straight off the takeoff, knifing it. Well, in this first round, it's a uh basically all surfers either from the Hawaii or the Tahiti or the Hawaii Tahiti Nui region. So that's why we're seeing, you know, these pipeline legends, these icons of pipe and backdoor. And you have these hard charging young surfers, kind of the day-to-day -day pipe guys like Landon McNamara, Ayala Stewart. Uh, and then you have your, you know, your kind of prototype QSers coming from the pro juniors up into the QS ranks like Ryder Guest. Uh, and undergrounders, and then you look at the list that we have coming up in the next rounds. I mean, things are things are going to get nuts. An international field coming through. You've got servers from Japan, uh, Portugal, Peru. Uh, you know, mainland USA, Barbados, big names: Dusty Payne, Gavin Gillette, our regional champ for 2019. Tyler Newton, Eli Hanneman. Uh, then you keep going down the list: Benji Brand. 
Uh, some of the ultimate pipeline surfers, Ian Gentile, Soli Bailey, past champion. Matthew McGillivray, 2020 qualifier for the championship tour. John John Florence, Billy Kemper. I, I mean, I could just keep saying names off this list and you're gonna be impressed, Yeah, I'm, I'm losing it already. Billy Kemper is on the biggest roll of just about anyone ever. Like, Italo is maybe the only other guy who can sort of string it together uh, a better couple of years than Italo. He has been unbelievable. Yeah, some uh, some other names. Let me let me just keep going. Jack Robinson, Seth Moniz, uh, Aritz Aramburu, Cam mm. Richards. I think Aritz just won a, an event at the Spanish Pipeline, uh, El Gamau over there in the Canary Islands, which is, you know, it does a pretty good impression of Pipeline. It's it's known as the Spanish Pipe, and yeah, he just won a huge comp over there. Big heavy surf, mate. So Aritz is probably gonna he's gonna come into this one feeling confident. I'm gonna give you. Just three more, Got just to get you psyched. Do it. Landon McNamara is stalling in the barrel. He was up and over. He needed a 2-6-3. Continue on this list. Connor Coffin, Sebastian Zeet, Keanu Asing, Jacob Wilcox, Reef Hazelwood. Wow. Yeah, Evan Geisman. I mean, I could keep going on. Mitchie Parkinson, Wiggly Dantas, Tudela, and then that guy who's uh, the winningest surfer ever in this event. John John Florence is back. What happened here, Vaughn? I thought everything off the takeoff looked pretty good. He almost just lost his balance as he was setting his line and that pitched him over the falls. There was a bit of a, a warp through that wave as well. But you can see he, he grabs the outside rail, sort of steady, steady himself just as the backwash hit. So a 1.93 and a 1. It, it's a lot trickier out there than, than it looks from the beach, Kote. Every wave from the beach looks pretty much like your dream wave when you're a grommet, but finding it is tough. 20 seconds. Quick one there for Ayala Stewart. Needs a 2.64. And here's Ryder Gas again on the dream run. Not a super long barrel, but I tell you, any surfer in the world would give anything to ride that wave. A beauty. So uh, safely navigates that way from the outside. Well, right when I say safe, the S word, it's pounded on the other side <laughs> section. So as it stands now, unofficially, Ryder Guest. Stitched him up heavily. Yeah, he's gonna get the win with Dylan Fransman. So we do have score coming through and it's Ayala Stewart. The last second wave is enough for now. So Ryder Guest, Ayala Stewart, one and two. Fransman third, Bannon McNamara fourth. So anything goes. Today, you're going to see some wild, wild heat finishes, Vaughn. Uh, yeah, definitely. That was huge. Well, thank um, you so much, Vaughn Blakey, for joining us. We'll have more Vano later on today. Oh, we've got an all-star lineup coming in to call these next couple of heats. Megan Abubo and Kaipo Guerrero joining us in the booth. So heat four, done and dusted. There's Ryder Guest. Beautiful gift that just kept on giving on that last wave at Pipe. So this opening ride at 7-3-3. And we've talked about the incredible season over here on the North Shore of Oahu. And here's a guy that's been witness to every event, nearly every session that's gone down at Pipeline and Backdoor. Kaipo Guerrero. Welcome to Pipeline, my brother. Thank you, Chris, and uh, what a great opening day here at oh the Volcom gosh. Pipe Pro. Yes, sir, bless sir. There's no need to stress, sir. We are in Hawaii, opening day, and we saw the young rider guest moving on into the next round, along with Ayala Dalla Stewart, and the action continues here at the Volcom Pipe Pro. Got heat number five in the water, Gavin Hogan, Luke Adolfson, Kekoa Casamero, and Koa Rothman. Talk about an all local affair. It certainly is. Uh, this opening round 144 is what we're starting with here at the Volcom Pipe Pro. We're going to narrow that all the way down to final day to our final four and crown a champion for the 11th year in a row here at Pipeline. More sets coming through and talk about local flavor. I got right next to me. Megan Abubo, welcome to the studio, Megan. Thank you for joining us yet again for the Volcom Pipe Pro. Good morning, Kaipo. Thank you for having me. Well, it's been a story of 
the young dogs this morning, Megan. It has been the new generation that have been taking out the win so far in this opening heat, opening day at the Volcom Pipe Pro. We'll see if that theme continues on. Take a look at a replay here. This is first wave of Cole Rothman, just feeling it out for the young North Shore upstart and an a extremely well-versed pipeline surfer. Oh yeah, super experienced. Uh, comes from an incredible lineage of um, great North Shore surfers. Uh, you know, follows in the footstep of his brother. Uh, and he's just, he's an, he's an animal, especially when the surf gets bigger. Yeah, he's uh, had his, he's won a Dahui backdoor shootout out here at Pipeline, which has a unique format and a lot of waves ridden in that event. Usually, usually epic conditions. We, we weren't able to run, run it this year, uh, but typically that event is has epic pipeline and the Vulcan Pipe Pro, Megan, we've been blessed. It seems like every year pipeline turns on for this event. Yeah, you know, I think it's at the perfect time of the year and uh, it we get past those, like usually at the end of December, you get those kind of stormy conditions and then in the last week, it just turned on the conditions, the wind, the swell direction, and the sand is perfect. This time of the year, that's a big thing that people don't talk about in the beginning of the year. The sand's not always set up perfect, and right now it is. Yeah, small beach, and a lot of the reef exposed. Taking advantage of that, it's going to be white. This is Kikoa Casamero, a little tube seeking there. He's not going to find the barrel. Of course, when we look at the criteria for judging at the Bonsai Pipeline, it is all about the barrel ride, mate. Is, it definitely is, um, and you know our judges are very experienced to like break down that barrel ride, everything from the where you take off on the wave to how deep. Taking a look at our criteria, our judging criteria, commitment and degree of difficulty, innovation and progression. That's going to be at the end part of the wave. S uh, speed, power, flow, always the basis of good surfing, and of course we're going to look at time in the barrel. That all equals numbers. Poor, fair, average, good, and everyone wants those excellent. Anything above an eight-point ride, excellent score is deemed. We have an international panel of judges upstairs. We have five judges. They all assign a number for each of the waves. We take away the high judge number, we take away the low judge number, and we average out the remaining three. That's how we get scores for all these waves. Taking another look here, Cole Rothman. Cole and a nice deep one right there. You know, tries to stall, unfortunately that one, you know, it didn't set up the way he wanted, but like you said earlier, Kaipo, he's just trying to get a rhythm out there, trying to make it happen. Uh, 20 minutes left in this heat. He definitely has a lot of room of improvement. I mean, look at it. Look at this heat he has, too. He has Keikoa Casimero. He's a he's another great pipeline specialist as well. Yeah. Local boy. And then um, Luke Adolfson as well. Check out this replay right here, Kaipo. Yeah, so you can see, we Koa knows exactly what he's looking for. And he wants to take his time off the bottom of this wave, a little bit shouldery, so not offering the barrel. And he identifies that right away. Just gets out of there. He's going to keep on trying. He's got one and a 0.93. It's been a quiet scale so far. So no big scores. Anyone's game with 19 minutes and 50 seconds counting down on our Volcom clock. You got any? So Kikoa Casimero. White jersey out there. One of our a, a great surfers. Coming off a quarterfinal finish, we just had a, a QS 1000 over at Sunset. Comes from a great surfing family, but also a great entertainment family. You have a, you have a, you have the brothers Casimero. They they're great entertainers in Hawaiian music. You got a you got a favorite Casimero tune? You know. At home in the islands, maybe. Yes, definitely. Um, when I used to travel, I used to listen to like all the old school jams. Just so you get homesick? Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> but um, not only that, but Keiko, you know, he's, he's, I remember years ago seeing him actually at a college campus. You know, he's, he's always busy. He stays focused. He, he, he realized that he wanted to pursue professional surfing more and stay at home. And I believe he's, he started his own brand as well. He's yeah. an entrepreneur. Yeah, he's got a know. brand called Ambassadors with Aloha. Here we go. This is Gavin Hogan, one of our up and coming pro junior surfers here in the Hawaiian Islands. Nice setup there, goes for knee drag, just gets the ax. Right behind him. Luke Adolfson. Luke's a, a Maui surfer. 
uh, he, he also does a lot of work with like the young kids, the next generation as well. He, I mean, it's not that he's an old dog, but you know, he's a surf he gives coach. back, he's a surf coach. You know what, speaking of young dogs, it's been the theme of the day so far. We've seen the young guns winning heats. Winner from the last heat, I want to wel welcome to the set. Thank you for joining us, Ryder. Ryder Thank guest, you. taking out a win here. How's your experience out there, Pipeline? Uh, it's firing out there, I had so much fun. Yeah. Just stoked to surf with three other guys out. Yes, that is usually the feeling. And But a lot yeah. of opportunity for you to make a name for yourself. How old are you right now, Ryder? I'm 19. 19 years old. You're just out of the pro junior ranks. We've seen yep. you surf a lot of the Tahiti, Nui, uh, Hawaii region pro junior. So now you're on to the big leagues, the QSs yep. from uh, Kauai. Yep. What do you like about home? Uh, it's a lot like here. A um, little bit less crowded, which is cool. But um, this is my favorite wave, so I'm st stoked to surf it with the other guys and get some fun ones. And I'm stoked that the waves are actually good because the last two years I had like, it was like this big and onshore for right. my weeks, so, so 10 right. foot west pipeline is pretty cool. T can you tell us a little bit about the first time you might remember paddling out a big pipeline? Um, probably Uncle Reef over there just told me you're good. Just go and sit by the photographers and then seeing it first time is pretty nuts and then you kind of slowly get more comfortable and more comfortable but all thanks to reef over there <laughs> yeah well, one of the godfathers right bringing up a lot of a lot of youth uh, here at pipeline that manages the, the quicksilver house over there you got a 733 in your heat gavin that was a great wave i want you to talk us through it it's right on the screen right here what were you thinking um landon just missed it it was like the first set that came in it's a beautiful wave um i thought i wasn't too deep so i went to stand there and then I started going into like the soundbar running section, so I just had to make sure that I made it out um, before getting, because it was kind of wonky, but just didn't want to get my head clipped before coming out. And then I came out right there. I was so stoked. <laughs> yeah, bro. You know what? You started out a little Jerry Lopez with the stand-up style in the barrel. You ended up Gabe Medina when you exited. <laughs> Good combo for you. Thank you. Looking forward to more? What, what are you? So okay, stoked. so I want to hear, what's your goal? here at 2020 Volcom Pipe Pro? Uh, I was thinking about that last night as I couldn't sleep because I knew the waves were going to be firing. Um, my goal is basically just to surf as much pipeline uncrowded as I can, and that contest is a perfect asset for that. And I mean, obviously, I'd love to win this thing. That's always the goal. But I'm just taking it heat by heat. Just want to surf uncrowded pipeline. Right, because every heat, you got to make a plan. And you have to be reactive to what's going on. A couple of heats before you, we saw really low scores. No one breaking a five-point range. and a really quiet pipeline and not a, not a lot of big scores. Do you always have that in your head, like a plan B, a plan C, a plan for D? For sure, for sure. Um, I kind of wanted, my goal paddling out was just to be on the first set wave and then that worked to my advantage. I got a seven and then from there I kind of could just wait and then I didn't really back it up with anything much, but I had that under my belt so I kind of could just like relax after that. What size equipment were you riding out there today? I was on a 6'4 Pizel, but it's got a little bit more meat in the front, so it's basically like a 6'6. Six, six. So a little step up for you? Yeah. Ah, another Pizel plug. You're welcome, John. We need to keep them coming. <laughs> <laughs> this is just the beginning. We got more. We got more coming. Thank you, Ryder. We'll Thank see you guys. in the next round. Stoked. And hopefully we'll have another chance to talk to you after another heat win. Ryder, sure. guess. Thank you. Right Thank on, guys. You, 14 minutes and 45 seconds on the clock here in heat number five, round number one, opening day of the Volcom Pipe Pro, 11 years running, and still small scores. Let's see if we can change that. This is Kikoa Casamaro. Again, no barrel on offer. So Kikoa still seeking waves out there. Kikoa and the other goofy foot, uh, Cora Rothman, have been the busiest so far. Catch waves, see another set, Megan. You always got to pay to play sometimes, getting mowed down by pipeline. Yeah, pipeline can kind of be one of those waves, uh, all or nothing. You know, you either go for it, you, you hope one's going to open up and you get a 10, or you get a 1. Uh, these guys are just keeping busy. I mean, you're going to see this out at pipeline. You're going to see waves of flurries of waves, and you're going to see some lows and some little bit more north sets, some more west. So, you know, you're going to see a shift in the lineup at times, especially with the tide. It, the tide seems to be dropping out right now. And for people watching, can you ex expand on the difference between a west set here at Pipeline and a northwest set or north-northwest set? With the, what's the different angles going to do out here on the reef? So definitely the sets that come in, the more west ones, I mean, you're going to go left on a west set. As you can see here, we've got... Um, this is Luke Adolfson. 
The Maui boy? Maui boy just, you know, it says, you know, he needs a point one three, but early days in the heat, he's not going to count that. Um, we also see. Sir. Yeah, it's Gavin Hogan in the red jersey. And Gavin fights his way out of that. So it's not every barrel is going to be a clean exit, but I like to see the surfer fighting his way out for the score. I think Gavin's probably going to go in first place after we get the number in. So we'll be waiting for last score for red Gavin Hogan as well as blue with eight off seven. But going back to the direction, West sets lefts. Yes, so the West come in, they're going to be tend to be more lefts. Uh, last night and even this morning, you know, you'll see the more north sets that come in, you're going to see sometimes a TP peak. You know, you're going to be able to see lefts and rights, but those are the ones that you're going to want go to go to back door on. So the more north, you're going to open up the rights. The west set's going to be on the lefts. Numbers have just come through, and as we suspected, 3.5 for Gavin Hogan. Hogan goes to first. Coral Rothman falls to second. Just a fractional score for Luke Adolfsen. So a very, very tight, tight heat, because when you look at a two-wave total for our leader, Gavin Hogan, a 4.33, any of these surfers can eclipse that total with just a single wave score. Another look, talk us through this one. Thanks. Yeah, it looks like he took off super deep, grabs his rail, really leans on that front foot to, to engage, you know, so he doesn't slide out, and then he just punches through right there. He's got to be proud of that, because that's like the first made barrel out there. Like you said, Kaipo, earlier, it doesn't have to be perfect. You punch through, and that's going to score. So say he's got a 3.5 right now. If he capitalizes on that and gets between like a 5 and a 7 on his next wave, it, he's going to even just gain on that lead. Yeah, regardless, it's still a game. It's still a competition. To, to, to win the game, you got to play the game. And so once you put the jersey on, you got to just, you know, sometimes there's going to be grindy heats where you're going to need a four. You're going to need a five. And with that, you know, that's that's what you got to do to advance out. We'll see who's going to advance out of this heat into the next round when we come back with more of the Volcom Pipe Pro. I want you to stick around because we're just getting this get beginning right now. More on the back of this break. I'm Kaipo Guerrero, and you're watching the 2020 Volcom Pipe Pro. Hit it, boys. Volcom Pipe Pro. <laughs> All right. Welcome back to the Volcom Pipe Pro. Kaipo Guerrero, along with Megan Abubo. Thank you, Drew Tunes, for the Drew Tune. And uh, Megan, I travel with a band sometimes now. I see that. You yep. have a posse. I got a, little, I got a little posse going, so maybe we'll bring the band a little bit later. Uh, it's four-day competition here. Big airdrop there for Kikoa Casimero, and he dodges the lip, so boards in one place, and more importantly, the body is all good. Kikoa, just a year ago, split his eye wide open out here at this very event. Uh, had to take about, I want to say, 15 stitches to the face. Uh, one of the world's most dangerous waves, the Banzai Pipeline. Yeah, and, and that situation he was just in is very dangerous because that's one place you don't want to be above the lip. Uh, he negotiated that pretty well, and he got over that. But um, you'll hear it from a lot of guys. They'll say, oh, it looks like we got Gavin Hogan again. He's trying to go for a, another little tuck and cover. But, you know, just like, like we said earlier, he's building on that. See how he's at? 
he applies that pressure to that inside rail there. Unfortunately, the wave didn't really give him what he wanted. He really gets low, doesn't he? Like, he got a wave earlier, I saw. He was practically sitting on his board. He's young, he's still flexible. Those new joints right there, I, you know, still a, still a pro junior in our, in our region, Gavin Hogan. And he's actually just begun to make his presence known on the QS level here in the region. So, uh, surfed great at sunset in the last event. Uh, so I'm expecting big things from Gavin Hogan. He's out in the lead right now. It's seven minutes and 50 seconds on the countdown. But with the low scores on the board, this one is going to come all the way down to the finish line and the final hooter because anything's going to turn this heat right now. 4.33, two-wave total. Anyone gets a five, they're going to go straight up to the lead. Yeah, uh, it, early days, I mean, even though it's not, when you look at these scores, it doesn't do the waves today justification, but last few minutes of this heat can definitely turn on and I mean guys are known to get two two perfect waves in less than five minutes out of pipeline. That's right Megs and guess what you get a 10 you get a perfect score out here you know what else you get you get the Yeti Tundra 110 cooler for every perfect 10. So we got giveaways here for both our competitors and for you the viewing audience we're giving away every day we have the Vulcan Pro sweepstakes at VulcanPro.com forward slash chillin you can enter every day where we're going to give away that Yeti roadie cooler to one of you lucky viewers as well as $400 in Vulcan gear so all kinds of ways to get involved here not just enjoy the show maybe be the lucky one and win some uh, goodies from Yeti as well as Vulcan who doesn't want to win Yeti stuff I mean Yeti stuff's unreal. I was at the beach the other day. You know, I had my whole lunch, everything. I was down there for like 10 hours. Ice wasn't even melted in the thing. Uh, I know you show up at the beach park with a Yeti cooler. That's like rolling up with a brand new Benzo because that's like the top of the line. Like, that's a status symbol. You have a Yeti cooler, not only going to have cold drinks guaranteed, maybe for four days, but you're looking good too because everybody knows that's a Yeti. High commodity, you need to almost lock that thing up. Don't let your friends borrow to go fishing with a Yeti cooler. Keep it in your own garage. Take it to the beach yourself. Taking a look at Luke Adolfson. Last ride of the blue jersey. Looking for the barrel again. The theme of barrel seeking continues. But Luke still not finding the bubble, not finding some shade. He's got five minutes, 45 seconds counting down. But just needs 1.51 to go into second place and advancing position. Yeah, small score. But, you know, I think he's going to, he might improve on that 0.5. So. I mean, it's so close that that might improve his situation right now. Like all, like all these guys just need one, even medium-sized wave right now, like average scoring wave, and it'll get them in the lead. When we look at the graphic above your screen, there is a priority intact here. And the guy who's first in line, you see the green Volcom next to Kay Rothman, Cole Rothman, has been patient out there. He holds first priority, so he has unimpeded right of way on any wave he chooses. Koa, a fantastic pipeline surfer. I think he's being patient, and he's going to make the dash for the finish line within these last five minutes. This is Gavin Hogan, our heat leader. A little pit ride for Hogan. And he will get rid of his fractional score of a 0 0.83, which he has in the score line. We've been waiting for this. Here we go, Koa. You're right. Look at Koa, just right in front of that spit line. What a way to take a morning shower. Spit all over Koa Rothman. 2.61 will take Koa into first place. So we're waiting for a couple of scores. One for Gavin Hogan, one from Koa Rothman. Both one and two. Both in the advancing position, 50% advancement into the next round. Another look, Megs, at Koa Rothman. Yeah, look at this late drop. And, you know, on your forehand, you don't have the advantage to grab your rail. So, like, see how low he gets, and he's actually stalling with both hands. And then to be able to, like, stay upright with all that spit, that that's not easy. And, and on, like I said, on your forehand, you don't have the advantage of grabbing your rail and, and be able to get a little bit deeper. So that's why he had to use those two hands. Yeah, another, I like the second angle here. You can see the double hand drag. I mean, I think the first people I've seen do that double hand drag would have been uh, CJ and Damian Hopwood right out here, and they were kind of with the first.
course, Goofy Foots had developed that, a way of slowing down, and now you see it utilized in all kinds of hollow waves around the world. Yeah, I might even say Kalani Rob, he was a master at that out here. He, he always did the double hand drag, you know, and he'd always get those, like, perfect positionings, like, and in, in the last, what, 20 years, you know, Kelly Slater's reshaped backside surfing out here, and he's made the impos impossible possible. And now the goofy footers tweaking the way to be able to get deeper. I mean, you see those maneuvers. And like you said, Koa, he's got a lot of experience out here. He knows what kind of wave he's looking for. That perfect unridden wave out yeah, there. Yeah, beautiful waves moving through. And uniquely, 11 years, this is the 11th year, but the previous decade, 10 years of the Vulcan Pi Pro, we haven't had, speaking of Goofy Foots, we haven't had a Goofy Foot champion as of yet. They've been all regular foots. So that's a testament on how far backhand tube riding has come, but then also, you know, if backdoor turns on, it's fronthand tube riding for the, for the regular foots. But maybe this year is going to be the first year that we see actually a Goofy Foot on top of the podium. Yeah, there's a huge contingent of Goofy Footers, and uh, we also see so many uh, extra Hawaiians in the event as well, and these kind of conditions are are definitely favoring, and we know all the local boys want to surf this kind of stuff. Um, they're excited. You know, this is what uh, 5,000 this year. This is this is a big boost for these guys. Oh, that was a horrible wipeout for Luke Adolfson. We're going to keep an eye peeled for his head to pop up right behind him. Okay, cause we're going to have to go around this first section. Casimero hoping for a hollow section through the sandbar left, turning, going to turns for the score. So this is going to be a, a unique ride and an interesting score for Kikoa Casimero. He needs a 3.1 to go into second place and advance into the next round with one minute, 20 seconds. It is, I mean, it's pipeline. So we, they want to see, the judges want to see barrels. I mean, any other contests, you know, you would have probably factored that into your top scoring two waves, but out of pipeline, not quite sure. See what this will be interesting to see where the judges are going to be on that. And the, the score is in a two point, I'm sorry, a 1.4 for Kikoa Casimero. He is in third place and is in danger of elimination in this heat as we're down to the final 45 seconds. Last score for Cole Rothman was a 2.2. And Luke, 0.3 for that horrific wipeout. Man, he was super deep. It almost looked like he should have gone right on that thing. He was so deep. And we're going to see if this is worthy of the sea tree initiative that we hear at the Vulcan Pipe Pro at the end of the day. Remember, we're going to be planting a sea, a sea tree through sustainable surf uh, through all of those wipeout contributions. Guys, paying on the reef here at the Bonsai. And uh, we continue to be a deep blue certified event and working with a sustainable surf and sea trees to be a sustain, uh, you know, a really carbon neutral event. We're powered 100% on biofuel. This particular event, we're using all of our uh, compostable garbage here, as well as reusable water containers from Yeti. So really being aware of our sustainability here at the Vulcan Pipe Pro. And here we go. Let's take a look at the recap. Again, the youngsters been the standouts day number one this is gavin hogan gavin surfed to criteria and gavin's gonna make his way into round number two makes yeah he played it smart he got a couple of you know medium scoring waves and and he advanced through the heat it, i mean that can happen out here you just never know what you're gonna get and he just kept building and building and there that was like one of the only completed barrels out of the heat and then koa last ditch effort and that nice double grab rail barrel there things kind of right in front of the spit line but nice and heavy yeah not the best heat i've seen Cole rothman surf out here but he got the job done we're going to see him in round number two and i'm glad to see more of Cole rothman at pipeline because he is actually one of my favorite pipeline surfers so Cole rothman is going to move on 
as well as Gavin Hogan as we go into round number two. And we're going to get through 11 heats of that round number two today. I'm promising you a full day of action here at the Volcom Pipe Pro. And we got another heat in the water. Just rolling into heat number six with Kainaru Kato in the red jersey. Kalani Rivero is in blue. Tai Tai Kirby in white. And Shiloh Tenberg rounds out the four-man heat in the green jersey. All youngsters in this heat. Everyone under, I think, I'm going to say under 21 years of age uh, in the heat in the water. So the youthful theme continues opening day of the Vulcan Pipe Pro. Thank you for joining us on Red Bull TV. I'm Kai Bugaro along with Megan Abubo. New clock, 25-minute heat, and uh, we're going to see who draws first blood, blood out here, Megs. Yeah, Kai Bugaro, interesting. This is a young heat, but all these guys are pretty experienced out here for Pipeline for, for being so young. Uh, Shiloh Tenberg, he's a uh, North Shore kid, spends a lot of time out here. Kalani Rivero is uh, also a North Shore kid, spends a lot of uh, time here. And we've just, we've actually watched Kalani grow uh, up here on the North Shore and grow his hair out too. He's got a wonderful Afro. So we'll see some of that Afro. Hopefully it'll be deep inside a pipeline barrel. Tai Tai Kirby, what can I say about Tai Tai? Kid's so good, mom and dad had to name him twice. Tai Tai Kirby, as well as Kainaru Kato. Out. Yes, and he's another like little pipeline surfer as well. Kaipo, to, to say again about the afro, is there just something about afros that just kind of make you styly anyway? You can, I mean, I, I just, buttons, Rob Machado, you, you show up with some big curly hair like that, you get extra style points guaranteed. Michael February. Michael February. Right. Michael Hull back in the day had a pretty good sized fro as well. Yes, he did. The I'll, fro and the mustache. <laughs> the combo. Uncle Mike still <laughs> charging pipe. And there it is. The pipe showing its teeth as it's just feathering out there. Second reef. We've been blessed with great conditions and a lot of swell on tap. Kainaru Kato. See right here, they're just jockeying. Like they see the waves coming in and they're like, where am I gonna be? Where's my spot? How am I gonna get it? It's gonna be interesting with the with the with the kids at this pull away shot. We can see Kalani Rivero, he's in the blue jersey. He's by far the deepest. He may even be looking back door. But for the younger surfers, this is strange for them. Why? Because there's only four guys in the water instead of 45 or 65 or 85 guys. And no offense, but they're going to be kind of lower on the pipeline pecking order, wouldn't you say? Oh, there's a pecking order out here for sure. Kalani Rivero, he was the deepest, and he's just going to pack that barrel. Didn't look like there was any exit there for Kalani, but I like the fact that got going. He's going to get a number, and he's going to start the ball rolling here. Tai Tai. Yeah, Tai Tai just getting his account started right here. Looks like this one open up a little bit. You know, he just he's just dusting off the jitters right there. Um, did you see that last wave when he just stood straight up when that thing was just sucking and just went, I'm just going to stand straight up backside in this thing. I mean, that's when you know they've got some confidence. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Kalani Rivera, we talked about the Rat Pack in the past with Nathan Florence, Cole Rothman, Karan Jambor, John John Florence. There's a new Rat Pack and the new Rat Pack I'm going to expand on that after we go through some of these replays. First, Tai Tai Kirby finds a little shade, Megs. Yeah, you know, he set up really well. The thing just kind of backed off a little bit, and then he played it smart right there because it wasn't worth, like, pulling into that thing and possibly breaking your board in the first five minutes of the heat. And there is Kalani Rivero in the blue jersey. So I'm talking about the new Rat Pack, and Kalani Rivero is actually part of this new Rat Pack. Noah Beshin's in this new Rat Pack on the North Shore. Makana Pang. We got a lot. It's just the, the keep on spinning them out. You know, the youngsters and performers here at Pipeline. It's really cool to see, you know, this next next generation after generation. They, and they've all been kind of brought along by the generation before them. And like, like we were saying earlier, there is a pe pecking order at Pipeline. There's a respect. There's, um, you know, you, you bring guys up. Looks like we see him getting ready for yeah. his board. And speaking of Rat Pack, you can see that is Makana Pang, who's got the backup board for Kalani Rivero, as well as Noah Beshin. So just the guys that we were talking about, 
the crew. They're sticking together. They're supporting each other in competition. They support each other on free surf sessions. They yell each other into bombs, whether it's here at Pipeline or in Second Reef. So there's no shortage of talent coming out of the North Shore right now. And I, and I love this new generation coming up. Uh, and in addition to that bat, uh, rat pack of Kalani Rivero, Noah Beshin, and Makana Pang, I gotta add a, another name of a North Shore kid that has a big, bright future is uh, Baron Mamiya, who was runner-up last year here at the Vulcan Pipe Pro. Big future. Yes, and he's so almost so ahead of its time. You forget he's part of this this generation, this right? This generation, but he is. You know, I mean, he's he's just phenomenal what he's been doing at his young age. This is Shiloh Tenberg. And no barrel on offer for Shy, but he'll get a number next to his name. Yeah, just starting that account, getting, you know, sometimes, you, especially if you're one of these young guys, you know, you haven't done a lot of these, like, WQS events. They're, it's not a junior event. Look at how much more spotlight there is. Look at the live cameras. Look at everybody on the beach and all your sponsors right there. So, you know, sometimes you got those jitters and those nerves. Yeah. As you should, I mean, honestly, you were an outstanding competitor in the pro ranks. I had a pretty forgettable pro career. I put on a jersey, and I automatically get super, super nervous. So it is something that you, that is for real, um, and it takes a personality to be able to, you know, to 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 perform under pressure, especially when you have that colored rash guard on. Yeah, uh, competitive surfing. It's all a mental game. It I is. Mean, Everyone you're competing against is, you're all just as good as one another. It's who can put it together mentally. And sometimes you put on a jersey and you just thrive. Just like. Well, speaking of mental, the guy that puts on mental performances here at Pipeline, Cole Rothman's in the booth with us. Hey, this is living, huh? <laughs> yeah, this is living. That's what I thought. Yeah. I mean, I, hey, look at Cole. You can be honest, that wasn't your most outstanding heat at Pipeline, but it was good to see you to come it, through because uh, I know you got a lot more for us. I know, it was kind of a, a little bit of a shocking heat for me just because I kept catching these waves that were just big teepees and then like not much of barrels. And I was having the craziest drops. I'm like, oh my God, I almost just ate it and there's no barrel. I'm like, oh, whatever. But it's nice to make it out of my first round heat. So we'll see what the day brings. Well, we know you can win out here, Koa. You've, you've won the shootout out here in the past in some outstanding waves. You're one of the new generation's top pipeline performers. I'm going to put you in my top five right now. Thank you. <laughs> appreciate it. Goofy Foots, for sure. Yeah. I mean, and anyone who watches clips, you can YouTube it. You know this already. Or you can just go to This Is Living and check it out. Uh, I mean, the guy gets deep barrels out here. How do you identify those long running deep barrels? Um, you can tell when they pop up out there, like the ones that are good. Um, you see like it, there's a teepee here and then you see it stretching down the beach but not too far it's it's pretty easy to tell honestly you got lineups on the beach i do i have a, a few lineups but i'm not gonna i know share you're not gonna share them. yeah you don't need yeah them. i have don't, a few lineups on the reef too don't disclose those to anyone right now yeah no. No, I, won't. <laughs> I was super impressed Cole, uh, how you handled the end of that heat you know everybody had kind of low low scoring waves but um you took off on a couple of waves in the end there that weren't perfect but you you execute them well with your double grab in the wall yeah like, i was really just trying to get like a score like anything i was trying to get like a three to a five i'm like any little wave just please barrel for there me. you are oh yeah i thought i was going down on that drop <laughs> and then it see how it's, it wasn't barreling but it was a cool spit Talk to us about the drop at Pipeline. How the radical is it? It's the gnarliest drop on the planet. There, or here, and Chopo and Tahiti are some of like the craziest drops. And Jaws, the right, is one of the hardest drops I've ever had to. So vertical, over vertical, steep drops. What's the secret to getting um, to the bottom in one piece? OK, it's what I've watched, like all the good guys, like Dingo Morrison and stuff, like the barrel riders when I was young. Instead of like fall, like free falling like I have, or I still do sometimes, it's I try to bring my uh, my back shoulder that's over my back foot forward and become like square to my surfboard, and keep my rail in the wave, and I feel like that's the best way to avoid air dropping because you don't really want to air drop. Like air dropping is usually an accident. Yeah, yeah. It's it's almost counterintuitive if you would because. Your yourself is telling, whoa, this is scary, and you want to lean back, right? Yeah, you're like. But the guys that that are gnarly guys, 
put their head down and lean forward. Yeah, and they bring their back shoulder forward. I like dissected a bunch of clips of guys surfing slabs, and all the really good guys have their back shoulder like almost forward behind their front shoulder. There it's you go. a little go. confusing, but. Hey, free yeah. 90 free for all of you out there. Those are making the drop tips from Cole Rothman. Absolutely free. You're going to want to think about that next time you yeah. put yourself over the edge. Oh, wait, I have something to say. Can I say one thing? Go ahead. I just dropped a new movie today. This is Live In, the movie 2.0. So if you guys want to check it out, it's on my YouTube channel. There you go. Learn, and you know what? I've been watching it. It's extremely entertaining. Good job on that, Cole. Thank you. Let's talk about Vulcan Pipe Pro real quick. OK. I just want to get your goal for this year, 2020 Vulcan Pipe Pro. I want to hear it from Cole Rothman. My goal. What are you going to, yeah, your goal for this event? I would like to win this event. That's what I like to hear, young man. <laughs> yeah, thank You're you. You're on your way out of round number one. Thank you for joining us, Cole Rothman. Thanks, Cole. Thank you for having Good me. Good luck. Here we go. 12 minutes, 55 seconds, and a great catching up with Cole Rothman. We're going to see him in round number two. We're going to get into that round number two today here at the 2020 Vulcan Pipe Pro. Looking at the, the numbers on the board again, Megs, slim pickings. Yeah, uh, like Cole was saying earlier, there's a lot of waves that are just coming in and TPing. You know, there's not a lot of wall to them. So, you know, maybe we'll see this start to come to fruition with the way people are going to, like, go out in their heats and they'll have a little bit of a different game plan than, oh, I'm just going to get that bomb. Maybe we're going to see a little bit more, okay, I want to get a couple of fours, you know. It, it could also be a tidal thing, typo tides. It could be a tide thing. Mm -hmm. This morning there was a lot. Of, there was a bit of backwash. You know, it was pretty high tide in the first couple of heats. We could be seeing that kind of switch, and it's just backing off a little bit. Yeah, we are expecting uh, the swell to kind of taper off a little bit today towards the afternoon. But great news for all of you surf viewers is that our forecast is outstanding. We got another backup swell. Yeah, we got another backup swell. 8 to 10 foot, uh, 2.4 to 3 meters of west-northwest swell. That is exactly what's happening right now at the Bonsai Pipeline, the world's most famous and dangerous wave. I like how they throw up the 2.4 to 3 meters, because anywhere else in the world, like Australia, they measure everything else in meters. Uh, you know, growing up in Hawaii, everything's feet. Actually, everything you cut in half in Hawaii, so if the surf forecaster usually tells you 10 feet, yeah. It's five feet, but that's growing up here in the islands. It's a little scarier. <laughs> it is a little scarier. So we kind of under, you know, we play down waves. But it is interesting that everywhere else we, you know, is mo most of the rest of the world is a metric system. So a lot of times surfers will, you know, call waves by meters. But what is really hard to wrap your mind around is that although there's more metric system countries in the world, we still measure surfboards in imperial in feet and inches. Ponder that next time you order a surfboard. And now it's um, volume. And then your volume, in contrast, isn't by a pint, it's by a liter. So your volume's in metric, but your length and your width are in imperial, in inches and feet. Why? I don't know. Are, are you a volume guy, or are you still like, I like it's six foot by 18? Like, um, how do you like I trust order? my shaper. <laughs> I've been old enough to, to just go, to just trust your shaper. And trust me that we will be back with more fun opening day here at the 2020 Volcom Pipe Pro. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere.
This is a public service announcement from the Volcom Houses. You want to keep it nice for your kids? You better stop using those plastic lids, boy! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to 2020 Volcom Pipe Pro, and thank you for watching on Red Bull TV. We're live from the North Shore at the Bonsai Pipeline, Kaipo Girl, along with Megan Abubo. And uh, we are also a Deep Blue certified event. Listen to the Volcom houses when they tell you, pick up your trash, we want to recycle over here. Really interesting that the Volcom Jerry House, um, the land there was, I think the property was bought in 1979, Megs, um, for a grand total of $30,000. Wow. And then Jerry <laughs> built the three-story house, 3,000 square feet, three-bathroom, three ba uh, three four-bedroom, wonderful place, a lot of history there. Uh, but what a deal. If you could just take that time machine back to 1979, you could have bought this for the price of a luxury automobile. You could have seen pipeline about this crowded, maybe less crowded. <laughs> but what a great setup we have flying by. Volcom House 1, Volcom House 2, they're really happy. And they should be. They've seen over a decade. They've actually seen a long time since uh, that Jerry Volcom House, that uh, came into acquisition, I want to say, uh, 2007 and the original Volcom house even before that. So Volcom making their presence here at Pipeline for decades. And what a setup we have. Yeah, those are, I mean, this whole strip of real estate, as, as you may call it, is, it, it's a gold mine, but not just financially. The fact that they've actually been able to keep these houses within the sport of surfing, that's pretty special. And that, I think it's actually created such an amazing platform for every pro surfer in the world to be able to come through these houses, especially the Volcom houses, and to be able to, from it's young days, yeah. yes, the history and the way that they bring them up. And you know, they're taught to do their dishes and pick up after themselves, and, and they graduate to the Jerry house. It's, it's, an, it's a great evolution to watch. Yeah, and, and you know, as being a local, Megan, is a lot of times visiting surfers, we try to instill that kind of hierarchy growing up. And I think it's really health, healthy for young surfers to do the dishes, sweep up, listen to your elders. I mean, these are bigger life lessons than just surfing. It's learning to appreciate your elders. In, in Hawaiian, we call it your kupuna. And a lot of times, a lot of wisdom comes uh, from those f folks that had a few more years on earth than some of us youngsters. Yeah, and you know, you respect what's around you. It's the same as when they paddle out at Pipeline. They respect themselves in their areas. They're going to respect others. You know, you're not going to drop in on people. You're not going to, you're not going to cause too much hassle in the lineup. And and they all learn that. And I think it sets them up for traveling all over the world and staying elsewhere. And you learn the way that we all grew up. And you're not going in the house with your shoes on. You're not leaving your wet trunks on the the floor. Kalani Rivero, you can see him in the blue jersey, will never walk into your house with his shoes on. Born and bred here on the North Shore comes from a great surfing family. Stepdad Bernie Baker, actually one of the legends of the, on the North Shore. One of our early surf photographers. Had a house right at Sunset, Sunset, and we talk about history. That's, where the, that's when the IT people used to hang out in, back in the 70s at Bernie's pad on Sunset. So, so many stories here. Yeah, Bernie, Bernie is so instrumental in and uh, achieving, having so many young Hawaiian surfers achieve their goals of becoming professional surfers by whether or not taking photos of them, or also he used to be Randy Rarick's right hand man. That's right. As well, he had a- Ye Years of triple crown. Yes, many years of doing that. Uh, just a lot of knowledge as well. Kainaru Kato, Kainaru. Just needs a 1.36, stalls for that barrel, way too high for that one, gets the rinse after that, so I don't think he's, think he's gonna get the number. This is Shiloh Tenberg. And Shallow Tenberg, also looking for the barrels, just gonna get some foam on the face. Tenenberg looking for a 1.25 to go into second place held by Tai Tai Kirby. Tai Tai Kirby in the white jersey, you can see the white Vulcan by his name, has first priority being patient, down to just three minutes and 50 seconds counting down. You know, this part of the heat, 
I can't speak for these guys in the water, but I know if I was in this position, I'd be like, you know, I just want to leave this heat with one good wave right, right here. I want to have a good wave, so I have confidence whether or not you make it out of the heat. You know, you just, you want to, you're, this is your chance to surf pipeline with three other guys out. You want to leave the water knowing that you got a good little wave out there. And I'm thinking that's exactly what Tai Tai Kirby is doing. Waiting for these three minutes. He's in second place. He's looking good to advance right now. He has first priority. Unless he hears a big score, I don't think he's going to be pulling any kind of panic. I think he's going to want one of those gems. He got three minutes. We could see some of the lines out the back. And so we're going to have another set before this heat ends. Yeah, you can see it kind of a little feathering out the back. You, you know what's interesting about those last couple of Flurio waves the guys took off on is was just all frothy and foamy and they were they were just trying to take off on anything and you can you can tell like kind of a big set came rolling through and wasn't really shaped very well and that's what happens you know you have those like moments where these ro wash through rolly ones come through and then they're set up so maybe this is setting up for something nice coming in right here first wave of the set unridden second wave of the set coming through here Kalani Rivero is the deepest. He's in the blue jersey, his second priority. He sees that Tai Tai is not interested in this wave. Here we go. Kalani Rivero, deep on the reef. Pokes the nose a second, but makes the drop. Little stall, looks back, throws a pose, gets a carve. And that's going to be enough to see Kalani Rivero into round number two. Down to two minutes. And Rivero will improve upon his position in this heat and remain in the lead. Yeah, that was probably the most open, cleanest wave of the heat so far. But I mean, we still have a minute 45 in this heat. You could, you never know. You could see these other three guys all get basically a two or a, th a 2.5 and make the heat, you know, and overtake him. Here's the replay. And Judge is still deciding upon the number for this wave. Wasn't able to finish it off, Megs, but great job making it to the bottom. Watch his poke. Yeah, he came back pretty well from that. I mean, he could have dealt for lobsters on it, but he didn't. He hung on really well. And it looks like he's setting up here, and he's going to just get a nice little stamp barrel. He kind of gets a little shampoo there, like, from that angle. But fortunately, I think he didn't have a little bit more turn to it. 1.93 for Rivero. He remains in the lead and down to under a minute remaining. And interesting little play here as we get into the 45 seconds. There's going to be time for probably two more waves to hit the reef, Megs. So and uh, Shiloh could be forcing Tai Tai's hand if he spins around on one of these. Yeah, we know that Tai Tai has priority right now. He's in a good position, but will this wave get to him within 30 seconds? Big peak coming through here. Tai Tai Kirby in position with priority. Got the white jersey. This one's stretching. And Tai Tai is out of position for that one. So Pipe taking a little bit of a breather, kind of. Not the best shape going on right now. But Tai Tai Kirby got the job done. He's going to move on into the next round. Kalani Rivero is going to meet him in round number two. 2020 Vulcan Pie Pro, so it's going to be that young man, North Shore resident, Kalani Rivero, is going to move on with uh, Tai Tai Kirby. Thank you for joining me, Megs. It's always a pleasure. We'll be talking more today as the day continues here at the Vulcan Pie Pro. Let's take a look at our heat recap. Kalani Rivero, the youngster from the North Shore, did some charging, and that was enough to move into round number two. Tai Tai Kirby facing the wall here at Pipeline gets a pit ride, and that's enough for Tai Tai to get the numbers that he needed to continue on here at the Vulcan Pipe Pro. A little style to finish off this recap from Kalani Rivero. And like I say, the show's gonna continue, but let's look at some of the digits that we're able to acquire in uh, this Heat number six of the first round opening day of the Vulcan Pipe Pro. Kalani Rivero moving on.
So as Kalani walks up the beach, a sigh of relief, but no, knowing that he's got more surfing to do today. We'll be moving into round number two today. We have eight heats in this round number one, and this is the result of heat number six. With Kalani Rural, Tai Tai Kirby moving on. We're gonna move right on into heat number seven. And for that, I'd like to welcome to the booth, Sal Masakela, hate number seven. Sal, take it away. Oh, thank you, Capitan. Round one has not been boring. Kaipo here at the 2020 Welcome Pipe Pro as we are heading into heat seven. Ezra Sit, Jackson Bunch, Luke Swanson, and Tak Wakita. I am joined by one Mr. Bemi. Hello, mate. Are you on? Have you got your headset on, Matt? All right, all right, all right. There we go, one, there we go. One, two, one, two. Bemi with us here. Uh, round heat number seven here in round one. When I think about, like, the flashback to how we started off the 2019 Vulcan Pipe Pro to this year, it's like almost like another planet it, it is and that's what the Vulcan Pipe Pro brings right I mean day one round one to see waves like this is just phenomenal isn't it I mean from from that first heat all the way through to now and it's looking like I know the forecast is lucky I'm touching wood right now it looks, I mean look it looks amazing you don't want to get too excited but at the same time you want to get excited because we could theoretically I mean there, there it is the window there this is a generally a four-day event we could get this done on the front half of the waiting period in epic conditions. Well, exactly. I mean, there's the, the next four days, all the way through to Saturday, just looks crazy as we see uh, Jackson Bunch get a little of, uh, full of water there as we try to make it out of that little pipeline wave. Yeah, Jacko Bunch, the, um, he's a world champion. He's a world champion. He won that junior world champs yeah. over there at Huntington Beach. So that kid has a huge future. I mean, I just saw some footage of him recently at, at sunset. He was putting on a, a really big show. I mean, that kid is, is just an, a phenomenal surfer. That helmet also. I mean, if <laughs> yes, you're going to wear a helmet, go all the way for it. I like that the kids are putting in full design. It almost looks like a, like a Raiders helmet. That's what it was. I mean, you think about this reef and what this, this, this wave, these 10 foot, 12 foot waves landing on you, it would be like the whole linebackers running at you and jumping on you yeah head first so i believe a helmet is very worthy absolutely absolutely i mean i, I was always people always say like oh which would you would you want would you want to get hit by a linebacker in the nfl or take a 10-footer uh, like blindly get hit by a a, a linebacker or, or take a 10-footer on the head you know what i can't answer that question because i've never taken a 10-footer on the head here <laughs> i know you have but we should ask someone who really knows as we are joined the third member of our broadcast today can't believe he's giving us the gold early the 2019 defending champ your newest uh, world championship tour member fresh from costa rica mr jacko robinson thank you sal Man, yeah jack good to be here which would you take jack right off the bat linebacker 240 pounds coming at you across the middle or 10 footer on the head at pipeline a linebacker because i'm probably faster at getting out of the way of that. When you have a 10-foot wall, it's a long way, so you don't really have any, any room to move. <laughs> I was I was watching one of the earlier heats where it, it, it started feathering out the back, and you saw all four competitors look out there and then start to paddle west, but also, like, look away. They just put their head down and looked away and just started paddling as hard as they could. I'm one of those people who, like, gets in his head and is looking out there, but these guys were like, no. Not going to look that way. No. No, you don't even want to think. <laughs> What's right. the worst place for you, Jack, to get caught, so caught caught here? Like, where on the reef is the worst place? At pipeline, or probably back door, because that's where the shallowest part is, I feel like. And I've been hurt there the most. I've hit my head multiple times there. So that's probably the worst place, because it, it doesn't really let you go in or out. It's it constantly hits there and it just keeps sucking you back out like a washing machine. And you stay there, right? You don't get pushed all, you don't get pushed inside. Yeah, no, you don't go anywhere. So that would be the worst spot for me to be caught. As we 
see some uh, wash throughs coming through. We'll take another look at that Luke Swanson wave. Looked like he got a nice, like a little double double barrel. Didn't make the second section. Yeah, this drop he took was insane. Look at this, just paddling, just looking down, going, okay, I need to connect that inside rail. Loses a bit of fins, but this is the part we didn't see. Nice bottom turn, coming around this section. He looks to set up the barrel, but I think this one stretched on him. Just big shampoo and just stands tall. I mean, beautiful drop. Tries the doggy door, but there was nothing there to get out of. So, I mean, Luke Swanson's a really good surfer. I've seen him surf down um, down the way. I think he grew up down there at, um, at, at Rocky Point down there. He's got some really good tricks under his sleeve. I've seen him do a huge air reverse one day. I rocked up. During the Triple Crown last year, and I seen this kid just fly through the air on the lefts. I just continue to be astounded by the the age level of of kids, of, of young teenagers in this event. I mean, growing up, you know, Pipeline was always considered strictly like man camp, but the, the the youngsters getting their skills up earlier and earlier and younger and younger here. Yeah, how how is it the way the generations change every? feels like every year it goes quicker and quicker there's younger and younger going up and up and up and uh, like when I first started surfing it when I was around 12 it felt like there was a lot less now every kid wants to be a part of it and um, it just feels like it's spread so widely now the generations out there from Derek Ho even Michael Ho all the way down to the Manahoonies you know it's like <laughs> yeah, exactly it's, it's so widely spread now what was that like for you? Because you really didn't come up with a bunch of your peers, like kids your age out there. What was the process like for you? Well, it probably makes you jump into the, uh, you know, it's more advanced realm once you, you get into that. It's, it happens a lot quicker. Um, you know, it was a different time. So, yeah, it throws you into it a lot quicker. There's Jamie's, there's, there's everyone else. Like, all the gnarly guys are out there straight away. So you're, like, looking up to these guys. <laughs> you go, oh, I'm already here, you know? Yeah. And then, um, you know, it's, it's probably better um, that it was like that. So then I got better quicker. But, uh, yeah, man, it's, it's so cool to see now. There's so many kids want to, you know, they're hungry for it. So it's, it's, um, it's exciting. Yeah, and everyone's looking after each other out there too. Like, I mean, as much as the lineup is super heavy and everyone's trying to battle, get their own waves, everyone's still making sure everyone's okay. Like, after a big wave or someone... A little grom takes off. Everyone will be looking in straight, making sure he pops up. Because yeah. I mean, it can be a three-foot wave out here that can be deadly. It can be anyone. Because that that reef, um, if you if you're in the in the wrong spot, you're in the wrong spot, right? And it'll slam you down. And I mean, yeah. everyone's got to look after everyone out there, which is a, it's a cool thing. But I mean, to be a 14-year-old competing in this event right now, I mean, that is absolutely crazy. But the kids are having having a dick. They're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I did this event till I was at least 17 maybe yeah around that and now there's yeah like you say 14 year olds and everyone's looking out for everyone so it's it's really good because this wave's too dangerous not to be yeah yeah it's, it's cool luke swanson just getting clipped by a, a sneaky little pipeline wave we'll take a look at it hey, for these kids who, who have never who, what's it like when you're out there with just it, it of course just three other people but you also don't know really have a lay of the landscape yet suddenly like all right got this whole thing to myself like i always wanted let's take a look at luke nice little bottom turn just engages that rail but oh, i did well to get under that really well but uh the thing just stretched out again on him so i mean he's got a point a 1.6 and a 0.93 and i mean he's been sending it yeah really so i'm afraid one of the thing I, uh, things I noticed about this wave is that you just don't, you don't have time for adjustment. It's like you, everything needs to be set, your body positioning, feet positioning from the second you stand, stand up so that any adjustments that you make are happening in the flow. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's one of the hardest things to do out here. Probably the hardest thing is you see a lot of guys, they don't really take off behind the way and fully backdoor and utilize every part of it. There's all, it's, because it's one of the hardest things to do is, is stall and actually maximize the barrel time off the takeoff and then and it's cool to see as well like Jamie O and John John there's guys that have figured out you know the best way for themselves to to uh, make the most of 
you know, getting the deepest barrels out here. And everyone's different. Their, you know, their body's different. The mechanics are different. He might, you know, Jamie might pump different than other guys out here to get speed. So when guys like that take off, you can see that, that you know, they've definitely figured it out the way they can maximize every single part of the wave with their type of surfing. You know, it's um, yeah, everyone's got their own view on it, but you can't really be taught that. You know, it's not it's it's not something that. You know, you get coached for or something. You know what I'm saying? Someone's looking at Pat up to you, be like, "Hey, yeah. uh, you're doing it wrong." <laughs> exactly. You're gonna go tell Jamie, "Hey, you should be pumping like this and tuck your knees in more." So, you know what I mean? You can't really do that. You know, it's not. So it's everyone's uh, kind of self-taught out here. I feel like self-taught and watching. Yeah. And one of the one of those areas of self-teaching is uh, how to remain calm when you look out into the line up and you see waves that are waving at you from the second reef. Yeah. Just a beautiful, magical day here on the North Shore. No better way to start off the Vulcan Pipe Pro than maxing six to eight foot, occasionally slightly bigger. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely big ones out there. Yeah. Six foot. I was like, hang on, that's yeah, hang on, hang on that? wine over here. <laughs> it's, there's a couple of double, born, double born, that. Let's double born, that, eh? <laughs> born, born and raised here. <laughs> yeah, never be I always, get, I always get yelled at for saying too big, so now i just like, all right, cool, I'll, I'll do it like you guys do, six to eight foot short. <laughs> yeah, well, I used to do that too, but then I would go and surf these like really crazy waves sometimes, and I'd say it's this big, and then the guys would be, it's way bigger than that, man. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, so I'm... Well, we are going to continue to enjoy this Heat 7. Take a little bit of a break as Luke Swanson is our man in the lead. Welcome back, round one, heat seven at the Volcom Pipe Pro. Luke Swanson in the lead, and we catch Ezra sit, just getting clipped at the end. Looked like he had that thing sewn. We'll take a look at a wave that Luke Swanson uh, caught during the break as he just sneaks underneath a little pipeline wave there. Sean Kelly here with Bemi. And Jack Robinson. And uh, here's a look at Luke Swanson's wave, Jack. Yeah, this was a nice little inside drainer that he picked up. It's hard to pick the waves out there right now because there's so much backwash going back out. And if you can find one that just like holds up. See, like this one, Ezra's wave, it was going up and down. The backwash kind of hit it, and then he got clipped right here. So it was, it was hard to time that section. But uh, that wave at Luke's was nice. Yeah, Ezra did really well then. It's just unfortunate that last bit came down and got him. I thought if if Ezra can't come through that section, no one can come through that section. Not a small human. Yeah. No. Strong. He's a strong, strong. man. Strong. <laughs> yeah, but I think Swanson done really well then. I mean, yeah, the 5.10, you know, sorry, it's a 3.5 is a really good score for today. I mean, we see a lot yeah. of guys in second, third, and fourth battling for ones and 
1.5s at the end of their heat. So um, this was a good wave. It was that one of those inside ones, Jack, and you know he was in fourth priority, so it was a good choice. Oh uh, yeah, this was well worth it. Um, yeah, that was a good wave. It's amazing that can happen. That perspective, uh, that just that switch of angle. Yeah. There's so much for perspective. Yeah. <laughs> Get to see how thick it is, and I mean. Always want someone watching the barrel from behind, right? You look yeah. way deeper. Look at yeah. <laughs> and also, it looks bigger each house you go. As for you go down to, like, so the Volcom house, it looks nice. You're always going to want to pedal out because it doesn't look as heavy. And you go down to, like, say, Jamie's dad's house or something. Oh, it looks a little bit scary. I might not go out today. <laughs> it gets bigger as you go down. Get further down. Yeah, every every time you go down, every house has a different perspective of it. So. For sure, if you're looking in from from the sandbar, which would be to to the right of your screen. It looks like almost almost inviting, like, oh yeah, I could get one. And then you get to the you get just a little bit to the other side of your screen and you're like, yeah, I have no desire to be anywhere near any of that. Well we talk about uh, angles and perspective, but there is one angle um, that we get the full context of what pipeline, and that is from the one and only Dave Riddle's corner. Rid, it's bots. You see anything out there? Anything on the way? Let me know. Oh my God. Oh, that's an insane one. Oh, cause he's going right. What, check the right? Oh, he's in, he's in, he's in. Oh, he's out. That was really sick. That was incredible. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love the cameo oh, by Matt Bemrose. <laughs> Just applying all the SPF 90 that he can. As well as Shibata, <laughs> and we are joined by the man, the myth, the legend. We got eyes on him. Good morning, Dave Riddle. Good morning, guys. Nice to join you. Maybe just take your mic and put it up there so we can hear the, those smooth tones. Do you, uh, do you have me now? Yeah, we got you now, Riddle. What do you see? Tell us about this, about uh, what, what the swell's doing out there, uh, where you're seeing capitalization, where, where athletes can improve. Talk to us. Well, I'm, I'm seeing a building swell. And a lot of it is just kind of centering it is, its attention on the inside reef. It's like it misses the outside and comes in and just jacks. It's really gnarly. But there are opportunities. Uh, Nathan Fletcher showed us. Uh, Nathan Florence uh, probably sh showed us how to do it today. And I think in this heat, we got the kids, Jackson and Luke, catching waves. And we got the older gentlemen kind of holding their ground, waiting for a score. And, you know, Bemi and Jack and yourself know that, you know, as a coach, you can tell kids or adults, hey, this is a heat to get busy and just catch a lot of waves and make things happen or sit there and wait for a good one. And today, I, it, it, you know, the, you can see Jackson and Luke are just, you know, catching waves and trying to build a score. But Takayuki, if he got lucky and one of his bulls came, he could get a bomb and get a nine and, and win with that. It's, it's, a, it's a risky little... Uh, deal today so so Reed, if if say jack's sitting here and you you had some advice for him what would you be telling him god there's barrels out there and there's not much to tell him you know he's just with jack it's just like he's so damn humble it's ridiculous like he, you guys just said if ezra couldn't get out of that heat nobody could but i have to say i think jack could but uh that's just me um, he's it, blushing over here, well, Justice. <laughs> he's so oh. humble, it's ridiculous, but he knows where the opportunity is today, and I can see him catching a couple rights. Oh, you know? oh Jackson Bunch. There he goes. Oh, is that Jay Bunch? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. See, they're catching waves and just get a couple little scores and, and hoping that that big 8, 9, or 10 doesn't come. And if we're looking at all the scores for the day, we've only had a couple pretty high scores, but, you know, nothing huge yet so yeah I think Nathan Florence is is the was far and away the highest heat score total I that we've too. had today from uh, his little backdoor festival yep and I think there are some backdoor waves to be had there but you got to take the risk and just get over there and take that steep drop and, and Jack knows how crazy the drop is on the right today it's crazy yeah. so so red so red are you are you feeling the judges are holding some scores back just because there are tens out there. Uh, where are those tens? Have you seen any today that have gone unridden? And if so, why? No, I, I don't think I've seen a ten go unridden. But you're absolutely right about they are holding down the score because you and I talked about Nathan's wave earlier, and we kind of went higher, and then we 
just both agreed that it's too early to go too big right now because if everything came together and hopefully it will like uh, the tide change and maybe the wind just get a little more offshore it, it could become epic today so you know pipe is where they set the bar low because out of nowhere you know as you guys know a tent could show up you know so they're they're uh they're staying in the low range category right now yeah we're taking a look right now at that wave that you were describing of nathan florence from this morning with the sun in his eyes on this beautiful back door nathan's just laughing this is a you know the kind of day where there'd be a big crowd out there but he'd sneak over there and get that kind of wave and so he's in a heat and you know he he, he finds that wave and he kind of sticks with it and uh it's he made it look easy but it's that's a really difficult one right there it's just a straight up and down thing you got to get in and then pull right in and that that was a remarkable job he did on that yeah he, he had a few waves in that heat too he was back to back he was like on a roll huh so he got like two or three back door waves huh Both yeah the, yeah and knowing the, the place the way he does yeah yeah definitely well, yeah. Riddle, thank you so much uh, for, for manning the corner and giving us the perspective. Won't be the last time that we check in with you. All right, boys. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. No worries. Yeah, Riddler. <laughs> I, I mean, love Riddler. When, when you talk about a mentor, yep. when you talk about someone who has taken generations and generations under his, his, uh, his tutelage and guided them through what the North Shore is going, you know, you, you think about... about about Andy Irons and, and, and Bruce Irons. Like, yeah. Dave Riddle played such an incredible role in helping them navigate uh, building a relationship here. What is it like for you? What's it been like for you, Jack, now to be in this camp and have access uh, to, to working with Riddle? Yeah, it's really cool because he, you know, the, when people have seen so much over so much time, you know, they uh, he just has uh, a lot of knowledge and everyone, uh, you know, he's seen a lot of history, so it's it's really cool to, to have that, and, and from people that are humble as well, and they're you know always uh, you know just there to explain and if you, if you need something, so uh, it's really cool to have it. You just got to have the ears that are willing to listen and, and, and take in what he's got to offer. <laughs> yeah, well that's right. Yeah, you, yeah, you gotta you gotta just sit back and take it all in. I like this little battle that we have. This heat has flown by, um, but. Luke Swanson and, and Jackson Bunch throwing some blows. And, and, and like uh, Riddle pointed out, Takuki Wakita, who just loves those, those big second reef bombs, he's out there camped out hoping for one of those big sets where he can get a roll in and get that, that big giant cavern. Well, that was going to be his game plan. I mean, if you got a section of the reef named after you, you're going to go sit on it right for your heat. I mean, Jacko Bunch just getting nice oh. drop, standing tall. I mean, he's Cheeky. definitely getting rid of that 0.93. So, Jacko Bunch, in my opinion, is going to move to the lead there, which is, that's where you want to be right now because 54 seconds to go, Takeyuki could get a bomb and easily get the, you know, the, the five that he needs to get through this heat right now. Love, I, love, I love that little slight body arch claim uh, before he came out. He did a good style, yeah, I like his style. Mm. The way he drops in. Take a look at this. Yeah, look at that. That was nice. He's he wanted to stand tall there, but he knew he wanted to make that wave because he wanted to get out of that second, which is uh, the spot that's could come here. Jack, what do you think of this? Yeah, I think he did well just to get another score. What priority was he in on that one? It was not sure, second. But second. Yeah, we're just <laughs> yeah. There's only ten seconds left. You got to <laughs> get what you can. It's um, it's it's one of the craziest places isn't it like how much a heat could change out of nowhere you could have no waves in a heat or you could it's just like so much happens here this yeah. is this is one of the most exciting probably the most exciting wave when the most happens in a heat i would say it can change so quick it's the, the the wave that i don't think they'll ever be able to manufacture uh or or, or build a replica of at any point no. i mean this is one of one it's jackson bunch with the double arm drag set up for that last wave uh, takes himself in the lead off the bat it was luke swanson uh, who was the aggressor nice little inside pipeline wave there to set up got himself in a nice little rhythm 
And then Luke Swanson with that Raider helmet energy. And then there's this last wave that puts him in the lead. Love that critical two-hand drag to start things off. Another perspective of it. Put himself in a nice position to get blown out with the spit and say, thank you, I will take the win here as we are really heading into heat eight. Officially, Jackson Bunch and Luke Swanson moving on of this, out of this all Hawaiian heat. And as we roll into heat number eight, Eli Olson, Amos Cermak, Levi Young, and Ben Brantle. We are going to uh, enjoy Jack Robinson for back to back to back, dude. You're going pro. <laughs> yeah, keep me in it. I got nothing to do for the next two Thomas days. Pro, the defending champ hanging out for back to back heats. What? Yeah. When you are, when you are uh, later on in the draw, how do you manage your? Because I'm sure this morning you rocked up and you're like, "Can I go now, please?" Yeah, yeah, I felt like that. I, was, I went out because I got back from Costa Rica last night, so I was, um, yeah, I uh, I got I wasn't feeling that good on the plane. Delta Airlines, they don't serve any water on the flight, so it's like <laughs> I sit down there going, oh, yeah, dehydrated the whole way back. <laughs> got here last night, went straight to sleep, and then woke up, and I was like, oh, it's on, you know. Adrenaline hit, so I was, I was yeah. Wait, what do you mean they didn't serve water on the plane? They didn't serve water to me. Get out of here. Uh, yeah. I slept for like a couple of hours, but yeah. That water, right? Wow. Yeah, as, as, stick as, to one world. As a, as a, as a, Delta, <laughs> as a Delta Diamond member, oh, I, I no. would like to apologize, and I'll also I'll look into it. I have some pull over there, but I mean, we but can't. But Delta. But yeah, come on. We can't be dehydrating the champ. <laughs> No, I, I mean, I'm not a Star Alliance member, so uh, <laughs> stick to the one well, Vemi. <laughs> yeah. <with you. laughs> yeah, well, well, fortunately, there is a Yeti hydration station. I don't know if you've gotten your bottle yet uh, uh -huh. since we have no plastic here, but um, we'll get you one. There's big, giant Yeti coolers keeping us hydrated, um, and we'll, we'll make sure that that's not the case for you today. I'm going to actually take a swig right now in your honor. <laughs> yes, mm. no, I know you guys want I got, I'll get sorted over here. Don't worry. Wow, I'm literally, I'm calling Delta and be like, hey, what's going on here? Yeah, we can't I know. Have that. No, that's, that's it's crazy. That's disgraceful. That water. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at the players here in Heat 8. Who are your picks? My one, I'm going to go with you know, Eli Olsen and Emo from, um, from Tahiti. I've seen that kid just Emo over the last, last couple of years. I mean, some of the bombs he's been getting at Chopu, and I'll tell you what, today... There's plenty of waves out there that are very similar to what he's grown up with in his backyard. I mean, I mean to the other two guys, yeah, they could easily beat him. But, I mean, for me, it's those two guys. And I just wonder, in that last heat that we saw, you know, Ezra Sid, Jackson Bunch, Luke Swanson, and Takeyuki. Jackson Bunch, who got first, and Luke, who got second. Those guys stayed super busy, and they got through the heat. The guys that waited for the bombs that never came didn't make it. So I wonder if they're going to take that strategy into this one. Yeah, I feel like they will. It's, I don't know. I'm not really seeing it changing too much. It's kind of, yeah. You kind of have to have the opportunity of not wanting too much today. So, yeah. Love that perspective uh, of the drone. The, our, our folks over at TJ, TJI Mechanics giving us some very interesting angles of perspect, perspective of Pipeline today as uh, we welcome in. He's just thrown on his headset after a great heat. Uh, Jackson Bunch. Thank you. How was it out there? Oh, well, it, was, it was pretty nuts, actually. It was, I was kind of tripping. It, this morning was not as big, and now it's just gotten way bigger. And not really those outside sets are the best ones. It's kind of those inside double ups. How does that change your, your uh, uh, approach when it, when it does, when it's heaving on itself on the inside? Yeah, those. Those double ups are definitely really sick there. You gotta bolt for the shoulder when the bombs come and as soon as the last one doesn't last one comes in, you bolt straight back <laughs> into the pit kinda. Back into the belly of it. Yeah. So with that strategy lock I was talking before, you got really busy out there and you saw Takeyuki. Were you were you worried you you was gonna sit out there, wait for those big Takeyuki bombs and you just went, Well I'm gonna get busy, I'm gonna focus on what I'm doing, I'm gonna do what they do and 
you know, you came out in front. So was that your game plan? Yeah, I knew Takayuki and um, Ezra were going to catch the sets. And it's always pretty nuts when you got those guys in your heat. They're so good out here, and they're, it's pretty sick to get the win. Yeah, for sure. No, it's whenever I have, like, gnarly heats or whatever out here, it's uh, kind of just try and get in a good rotation. Yeah, not really get too involved with anyone, but also if a good wave comes, you're not going to back down. Yeah, so you yeah. got to go, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was, it was it looked tricky out there in that heat. It looked uh, hard to find them. Yeah. You know? um, at the beginning, I was trying to get outside and maybe get a little deeper and try and get one of those like medium sets. And then I saw my friend Luke, he got the first good double up and I just knew I got had to get at least two of those and get a couple waves to then I could go outside but we, we were having a discussion here so we can ask you because you, you, were, you were out there how big is it um <laughs> come on don't lie don't lie <laughs> come on don't lie I don't know it's <laughs> kind of bombing out there I was <laughs> fearing a few of the sets but they're not too like square that's more of a roll in right now but it's definitely sketchy when you're surfing eight to ten foot pipe okay there we go because he, oh, he, he was trying to say it. six he goes six eight eight. Away. Mm. he's going he's pretty humble this yeah, guy isn't I said he six to <laughs> but i mean and i and it said and some bigger ones so so, so you're, the you're the junior <laughs> world champ now so congratulations on that yeah thank you so, so what's 2020 having hold for you are you going to do the qs campaign are you going to do the juniors what what do you want to do I'm mostly looking at doing all the pro juniors and getting to Worlds and doing Wait. good in that. But for the Hawaii region, maybe I'm just doing all the Hawaii contests, going to try and get into the Triple Crown. So those are my two main goals, Triple Crown and Worlds. Well, with the surfing you've been doing, you're going to get it easy, so. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, keep doing what you're doing, and thank you for stopping by. We'll let you get some hydration and some recovery and hopefully get to talk to you again, thank Jackson. Thank you. Good job. They grow up so fast. So fast, exactly. It seems like he was, I mean, he was like a little kid yesterday. He was. He was. He used to ride for us. And I remember there was, uh, I'd done a bunch of trips with Jacko. He's so humble and he's definitely, um, he's definitely one of those future stars. You can just see in his nature, in his surf, in his approach, in, um, you know, his attitude. He's kind of got it on and just to, to be that way inclined at, at such a young age and He's already goal set it and he knows what he wants and he, he's going to get after it. It's just a pleasure to see. Especially at this age, there's a lot of kids out there that, I don't know, a lot of kids don't really get what it's always about, you know what I mean? They, you, it's good to see kids that are focused too, you know? It's, um, they just do their thing, go about it and do their work and, and that's how you get to, the, you know, get to get better and better. So, uh, super cool. How do you not get caught up in the noise? at that age just so many people telling you what you should and shouldn't be doing um you know not to mention how you you're lining up against your peers how, at that age for you what what how did you maintain have you been able to maintain focus wow i mean probably not showing your role to everyone that it's it's to be honest everyone wants to see everything of you they always want to know everything about you so to be kind of Oh, here we go. Who's this? Emio. Sermak. Some little bonus on the end. Little choke boosties. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that was a nice one. Oh, who's this? Right behind him, Ben Brantel. Oh, spitting. Wow. It is really unloading out there to be spitting and double spitting and triple spitting. I mean, that just shows you how thick and how much, how much uh, water's caught up inside those barrels out there. Yeah, it's, it feels like it's reinforced as well. It's hitting really hard, so, yeah. It's something about, like, the, the energy, the body language of the kickout says everything. <laughs> yeah. you, you saw it back to back. As we take a look at this first wave of Amo. Oh, this is uh, Brentel. Oh, this is Brentel. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, a really good one. there's the reason why he's wearing the helmet. I mean, look at this thing. Just a nice drop. I mean, he looks young. Looks like a Grom. I'm not sure how old he is, but I mean, that is a really big wave. I mean, look at this thing. He just triple spits on him. Doesn't really get covered up. 
but I tell you what, <laughs> he wouldn't have even known that because just spitting on him and it, and it goes again right here. It does a little added little hoof just to send him on his way. And he's fire hose. And he's just stoked there, you know. Right on his mate. <laughs> we go in here. See, he's got a good style on huh? He's good technique. And his backhand barrel riding is uh, all steez. Is that just honed in from his backyard at Chopu, do you think? Just from surfing every day, you, that's like kind of the perfect stance? Yeah, there's really no other way. I mean, he's uh, just honed it over time there. And, that, and that's what will happen, I feel like, if you uh, really work on it in places like that, you're just thrown into it. Yeah. You have and no choice. You put the time into it, if you're out there every day, it just naturally happens. And I mean, yeah, he's no stranger to take it off thick, deep, steep, and then get blown out of barrels. And it, and it feels like he's young and unbreakable. He's so like, you know when you're young, yeah. it feels like you get less smashed sometimes. Yeah. I don't know if that's true, <laughs> but it feels like that because some of the waves I see him go are very heavy. Sorry, I was uh, talking to headquarters trying to get an, oh, age, right. an age on uh, Ben Brantle because he said he looked like a Grom. We're, the, right now, we're, we're hedging between 13 and 15. We'll get you Whoa, uh, he's a Grom. the right number. But either way, Grom out here at the Vulcan Pipe Pro amongst 144 in this first round getting after it. What a moment it's got to be for him. We've got 13 minutes to go here in Heat 8. We will take a little break and see if... Amos Cermak can keep that Tahitian flow going and move on into round two as Pipeline is just doing it. Day one of the 2020 Volcom Pipe Pro. Watching the Falcon Boy Pro 2020. Don't go anywhere. Don't laugh, boy. This ain't funny. This is the Vulcan Pipe Pro 2020. Ah. <laughs> Are you kidding me or what? <laughs> what? Did you not get the member to send into your voice? No, oh, that's just Ty Van Dyke. Look at me. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ty Van Dyke as Bemi. <laughs> All time performance. Again, we're going to have to put him up for best performance at the Vulcan Pipe Pro. <laughs> Not only is he killing it on the trig, on the Traeger, Ty Van Dyke, incredible uh, impressions. Uh, <laughs> Sound like me when I was 12, baby. <laughs> 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 oh, amazing. Oh, wow. Hey, welcome back. We're having a blast here. Amo Cermak in the lead, doing, uh, bringing his uh, Tahitian backhand rail grab and applying it at pipeline we have confirmed that uh, ben brantel is 15 years old which regardless as you said during the break ben I mean, like that's young that's a grom he can't, he can't drive a car but he can drive through some barrels at pipe yeah i'll tell you what that's young and uh, you know i love that seeing him wear the actual helmet i mean there's probably going to come a time you know later on where every competitor has to wear a helmet especially in waves like this because i mean you know it best that in during the snowboard events they have to wear them right yeah i i also remember in snowboarding when you know you got made fun of for for wearing a helmet as we see uh, eli olsen hoping for this thing to set up on the inside stalling looking cool and stylish that way not giving him really what he wanted i remember when it was not cool to wear a helmet and you would get heat 
Um, but then the more and more that uh, we saw different athletes battling injuries, et cetera, some, and also like, listen, traumatic brain injuries that, that have taken place. Now it's it's rare that you see someone snowboarding not wearing a helmet. It, yeah. I don't know if it'll ever yeah. make that way across the entire landscape of surfing, but it clearly here, uh, at, at waves of consequence and at, and at pipeline especially, it's becoming, it's just, it's becoming more and more common. And to see the Grom starting off with it at a young age, that just becomes what they're used to. Yeah. I mean, you look at Tommy Carroll from way back in the day. I mean, he should have made it cool. And then, you know, Owen Wright and Jeremy Flores and those guys are sending it on everyone. It's just, I mean, for you, Jack, I mean, never see you really wear one. But is it something you thought about before? Yeah, I haven't worn one really ever because I feel like it's more of an awareness thing for me because I, I don't like wearing hoods, like rubber hoods when you're in cold, cold water. I don't like that. So a helmet's like way more than I'm not probably used to. But I mean, when you've had heavy brain injuries or a head injury and I have hit my head out here and been knocked out before it's I mean I probably should wear one you know what I mean it's it's yeah I just probably have to get more used to wearing one that's that's all but um they also scare me a little bit sometimes you know if it sticks out and it's not multi-head then it can catch the wall of the wave maybe and it's not it's 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 not to say that a helmet prevents brain injury that's a or, or concussion that's that's the myth but yeah. I think that for a lot of people, there is a, a comfort that comes from it that allows them to put themselves in the position yeah. where there is an element of safety and there is more safety there. But it's not, it's not a, a, you know, a protect all. It just it is a layer of protection. It's still yeah. pipeline and you can still get hurt. Yeah, exactly. You can still break the helmet and who knows what can happen. It's it's just a little bit more reassurance, you know. We were talking during the break about um, backhand barrel techniques. And uh, one of the things that I always see is uh, that ability to sort of know when to grab the rail and know when, 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 when to release, uh, as we'll, we'll take a look at through here. And I mean, Jack, it's something that you do really well. Yeah, like, it's interesting when to grab and when not to because on a lot of takeoffs, you see guys like Kelly sometimes will go no hands. But then on takeoffs with guys like Bruce or Jamie, they do grab the rail to hold and have the, the control. Um, and, and also where you grab on the board too, it's, you know, without saying too much and giving everyone too much, you know what I mean? <laughs> everyone's everyone's going, start going, 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 going. Everyone's going to start riding backhand barrels probably these days. No, no. But, I just saw but, your brain be like, yeah, break. I was going. Yeah, no. How do you? But but <laughs> to 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 explain it, you but know. But where a, you grab your board is critical. Is where you grab your board is critical. You grab it too far back, you're gonna be, you know, it's 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 not balanced well. If you grab it too far up, you're gonna be doing like a, a little reverse 360. You know, right. you don't want to be doing 360. So if you you know you just got to find that place, you know, on the board, and then also depends with the stance. You know how how you take off with your stance how flexible you are um, to control those crazy takeoffs as well. And once you find your place and you know, you know your balance is good and, and you can s drop your ass in the wave and actually stall properly on the way down while grabbing the rail in the right place of the board, mm. that's when you really master it. And then to let go and also pump while holding your rail and having a lot of leverage. So it's, it's kind of complicated, but... Um, you know, it just takes time, and and uh, but when it's it's all about you know a lot of little things that add up to it. You know, I, I, yeah, I'm not gonna tell anymore. I don't tell. I don't <laughs> yeah, no, you said much, you didn't you know want to tell anyone, but it's, you yeah. pretty much nailed but, it. But, uh, but you, yeah. you did nail it, and it, it's good. And you're not giving away like your particulars, but no, it there. I think sometimes for people who are watching an event at Pipeline, it's very easy to think like, oh, stand up set your line and be in the right position and the wave does the rest. There's yeah. so much that's happening in real time adjustments that you're either doing here or you're doing with your feet positioning, etc. Yeah. And that just comes from time under tension and doing the thing. No, and that's something that no one really explains too, because you see it all there. A guy is doing the right thing in the barrels. But what do you actually get from that to go and use and go go do? It's like, um, yeah, it, it's it's... It's just you have to really look at every inch of, you know, as he goes down the way of what he's doing, you know. It's, it's, it's knees, it's ankles, it's arms, you yeah. know. It's, 
body. It's like it's, it's uh, so many moving parts. It's, it's a lot of skill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the Spartan doing that that weird. What was that thing? The one-legged thing that, that oh, Michelle yeah. did at, at, at Fiji. That's at right. Fiji. He pulled that one out. He put yeah. his leg way behind. Yeah, how good was that? His legs. That was crazy. That was like, <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember China. Remember China from the Gold Coast, like way back in the day in the '80s. He used to do this crazy, like leg off the board and store with his leg that way. And no way. And put it back on the board. Yeah. I even started doing it kneeboarding, going down the way of kneeboarding and old backhand barrel riding with kneeboarding. So I could teach you guys that as well if you want to know. Cool. Well, there's <laughs> going to be a demo uh, this afternoon on the beach, just a land land demo, backhand barrel riding positioning with. Jack, be here around 4:30, <laughs> um, and yeah, we'll see. What we can see. We'll get a little bit weird with the three minutes and 56 seconds to go. I love this conversation, um, good. just because I think in general in surfing we don't really talk about body positioning and feet positioning enough, and there's so many nuances that make that give different surfers uh, an, an advantage. For position is everything. Yeah, 100, percent and also. The way you read waves, I mean, that, and how you're going to get to that next section and slow down, it's, um, oh my god. Then there, and then there's that, as you see uh, young Ben getting slammed, and I believe we saw him get picked up one more time, the wave to the beach, before getting pulled back down and just popping up. It's, it, look, he needed a .57, so you say, if he made that drop, he's probably going to get the score, right? .57. .57, so. yeah. I mean, that was crazy. It's just these waves have got a lot of white water in them. I mean, your boards just don't, the fins just don't penetrate. And they bounce you off. Look at him here, just that white water under the board there, Jack. I mean, those ones you don't really want to look at. No, every, every, like, uh, you know, white water, like, there's so much water going different ways that it hits your fins and makes you feel unstable. So definitely don't want to look at those ones. It is, I just, I can't get over the fact that, like, how much a, a 0.57 or a 1.3 becomes a 10 at Pipeline in a way that it doesn't at, a, at other places. Yeah, and it's always, you're always a, a, a mill off. You can go from a 1 to a 10 by a millimeter. You know, you're either a millimeter too deep and you get blown off. I mean, how many rides have we seen today where the guy just didn't come out that would have been an excellent score? And that's the thing with Pipeline, right, Jack? It's like yeah. positioning and where you position yourself on the wave, even paddling into it. If you're an, an inch too deep, automatically that can uh, that can be the difference between an 8 and a 1. Mm. Yeah, and you see it happen every single event out here. It doesn't really matter how big it is always. It's always happening. So, yeah. Our leader, Amos Cermak, with priority right now. So pick of the litter with a minute and 45 seconds to go and second priority with Eli Olsen who's in second place so it's pretty much uh, theirs to lose at this point but look again Ben Brantel doesn't need the most he needs a 0.57 <laughs> and you know the guy in fourth needs a 1.04 but I mean we've seen today 1.04 as small as it is you still got to make the right it's I mean, huge here we go. He, he needs a 0.57. It's, he's done a little cutback here. He's come around the section. Are they going to give that the score? What are you going to do? <laughs> it's way exactly. Look, oh, someone else is doing it. Oh, Eli. You know what I mean? So is is that the score? I mean, the judges have got it worked out. He got a 0.2 for that last ah. wave, not making it. He took off on a smaller wave, done a kind of a little wrap, and then pulled off. Now, a 0.57. <laughs> I mean, they're going to Is, is that a 0.57 a pipe? I don't know where the scale has gone. It's gone out the window. I don't know. He, well, he didn't get it on that last takeoff, so that was a bigger wave. Possible. He didn't fall off on this one, so, and it was a way smaller wave, so I don't know, and it well, wasn't. With 30 seconds to go, we see some waves of consequence coming through. Eli Olsen, who lost his second pride on that last that, wave. Standing up trying to do something. I don't think he got it on that wave. It was too small. Well, he didn't. He got a 0.37. Oh. <laughs> there you go. So, wow, isn't that? That just goes to show you pipeline. These guys want to see you steep and deep and getting blown out of barrels. And so you didn't on, get a four. Good on the judges. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm with you. Absolutely good on the judges for I'm saying, hey, nice try. Appreciate it, but not here, not today. <laughs> yes. Yeah, what's it's out this. there? And if you're not going to get it, well, then no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. It is not that party. Jack Robinson.
future commentator extraordinaire in like 35 years, uh, maybe when he retires after he's won all the things. Thanks. Thank you, brother. If you're still here, I'll be doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Eli Olsen. Doing the thing with Amo Cermak. Tahitian pressure applied. You can tell by that body style on the kick out. He was stoked. Young Ben Brantle made the effort, just wasn't able to put himself in the right position. But uh, he was loving it nonetheless. So as we say goodbye to Bemi and Jack, there it is officially. Amos Sermak and Eli Olsen moving on into round two. Here, day one of the 2020 Volcom Pipeline Pro. Just a magic day. And uh, with that, friends, I am going to hand it off to my man, Chris Cote, who just, he took a, just took a little spray of, of singers, the magic uh, throat spray. It means you're ready to sing. I've been screaming all morning long. Pipeline has that effect on me, and I'm sure all of you out there watching right now are excited about entering round two. That's right, we're already here. Pipeline absolutely firing. Today we got Makai McNamara, Guy Sato, Danny Fuller, Nathan Florence. Some verified pipeline specialists in the lineup, starting off with one of them right here, Makai McNamara. Great way to start this heat. I know, the, I know another very excited surf fan, an absolute legend. Megan Abubo, you're in the same boat as I am. You're in the same boat as the tens of thousands of people watching right now. Very hyped up and excited about what we're seeing here on day one at the Vulcan Pipe Pro. So I'm to uh, be able to pull up to Pipeline today and watch this for opening day. <laughs> you I mean, feel it, right? You know, it's, I mean, I think it's perfect out, perfect out there, but uh, the swell is just starting to like pulse. It's kind of shifty movie, so we're really gonna see those guys that know pipe, and they're gonna, you know, in this heat, like one of my favorite all-time pipe surfers, Danny Fuller. Super stylish, Danny Fuller will be in white. The first wave ridden by Makai McNamara. Strong start, a 6-6-7. Six, six, so remember back in 2016, Makai McNamara, all the way from the early rounds, surfed his way to a third place finish at the Vulcan Pipe Pro. He had a ninth place at the Sunset Open just a, a few days ago, actually. And here's his opening wave right off the buzzer. A 6-6-7, six, six, what a way to start. Yeah, I mean, what great way to open up round two. He just grabs that rail and he's in there for a while. And, you know, as we saw in round one, the judges are, you know, they're they're taking their time. And he exited clearly, cleanly out of that wave. Look at that. He disappeared for a little while. All you can see is kind of the nose of his board. That's a good way to, to start a heat. I mean, the last couple of heats were kind of low scoring. So to be able to start with a 6-6-7, six, six, that's almost total heat score of some of the heats in the last round. And Mikhail at, at uh, Pipeline and Backdoor, he's one of these guys. It's It really is all or nothing. We've seen him have brilliant heats here, put together you know high eights, nines in heats. And we've also seen him just charging for ones and twos. Um, so for Mikhail McNamara, for him to start off with a 6-6-7, six, six, I mean, that is a, a, a strong sign of uh, Makai being on for this heat. Uh, you see all zeros on the score lines for the rest of the surfers. Guy Sato will be in blue. Danny Fuller, super stylish goofy footer in white. And Nathan Florence will be uh, in green. We already saw Nathan this morning get an absolute, uh, you know, just one of those beautiful golden tickets of a heat where he seemed to be alone in the lineup multiple waves in the high seven range. Pipe, back door, he did it all, made it look easy. He's got a, a test in this heat. Again, as we see a split peak, not much on the left, but the right, yeah, all eyes focused and nothing doing. You know, two of these guys, born and bred, North Shore, right here, grew up, been surfing this wave pretty much before they could walk. Um, and they, they come from huge surfing families that are, have really proven themselves out here. And then Danny Fuller, he's he's no joke out here as well. He's a total pipe charger. So, I mean, look at this. 
as you can just see, he's searching. He's searching for a wave. He's just getting started. I mean, just to see, he's got such a big wave knowledge out here. His, and then to see him be able to split the peak right there. I think we're going to see that a little bit more, a little more splitting the peak because we're starting to see some backdoor waves open up. I mean, what, what, what's, what's better than a beautiful peak at pipe and backdoor? We see surfers going both ways, just getting absolutely pit. I mean, that is as good and as entertaining as surfing gets. Oh, definitely. I took a photo last night, two guys taking off spinning the peak. It, was un it never gets old, <laughs> no. right? We got 19.35 to go here. As we said earlier, we are now in round two, heat one, Makai McNamara in the lead for now with a 6.67, 19.20 to go, so plenty of time left. Guy Sato, surfer uh, in blue, the 2.33, Florence with the 1.17. We just saw that split peak there. Danny Fuller yet to uh, get involved in this heat so far. Well, the first round, I mean, if that's any indication of the talent level we have coming from the underground here in uh, the Hawaiian Islands and Tahiti Nui region, I mean, Megan, the, the, the future is looking incredible. We're seeing it unfold right in front of our eyes. Yeah, it definitely is. For the, a lot of these young guys, a lot of them are junior pros and come up through the ranks. They're getting their first start here at Pipeline against, you know, some other seas. And, and this isn't just any old day at Pipe. This is solid, real, legit Pipeline. And this is where surfers can come from the depths of the QS rankings, from the pro junior rankings, to make a name for themselves on a global stage. Uh, we've seen it happen in the past. There always seems to be that one undergrounder that comes from these early rounds into the finals. So you see Mikai McNamara get around this first big section straight into the pit. Nice clean exit. See how he just stalled once he got to the bottom there? Like, that's good wave knowledge right there. He knows exactly what the wave's going to do. He perfectly stalls, waits for it. You know, Mikai, all that time he puts in out here, and he's nor normally, he sits pretty deep out here. He, Usually gets, he's pretty up there on the pecking order, that's for sure. I like the patience here. Not forcing it into the pit, but just that perfect stall. And the outer arm drag, the uh, the arm reaching towards the beach from that back arm, I mean, that right there is very subtle, but extremely technical. So 17.45, wait the, the judges score. Now we're gonna welcome Amo Zermak. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Big heat win right there. So. This is, a, uh, this is special for all of us watching, including us, Megan and I. Uh, this is a name that we're seeing coming up through the ranks that not super familiar with yet. But yeah. with each and every heat like that, your name is going to be on the minds of the rest of the field watching. So tell us a little bit about yourself, where you come from, and how'd you get into the Vulcan Pipe Pro? Uh, I, I'm Amy Ochenak. I'm from Tahiti. And uh, yeah, I've been... I've been surfing some QS this year, so I've been qualified to the Volcom Pipe Pro, and, and yeah, I'm pretty stoked. So yeah. like a lot of QSers and pro juniors coming up through the ranks, you had a decision yeah. to make, right? There's a yeah. QS 5000 happening in Morocco, then you got the QS 5000 yeah, exactly. here at Pipeline. What uh, led to this decision for you? Of course here, because I'm from, I from Chopo, so, so I surf those kind of every day almost, and that's easier for me to, to surf here. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the similarities. We know it's all, friend, all Polynesia. Mm -mm. So when you get off the plane here in Hawaii, what, is, what kind of thoughts does it bring you like back to home? How do you feel um, close to a place like this? Like here I feel like kind of like home. Like it's like my second house. I go, it's my five time this year already. I go, no, last year I've been going like six time here and yeah, I, I feel, when I'm here, I feel like I'm, I'm at home. Yeah. Well, you look comfortable out there. Do me a favor, take a look behind you at these six photos, all right? Are we gonna see Imo up there? And if so, how are you gonna do it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I made you nervous right there. I know it's kind of daunting to look behind you. Jamie O'Brien, we got Kelly Slater and uh, the champions mm -hmm. out here. So, hey, who knows? That could be you. We got room for your face right there. So yeah. good luck in the next couple of rounds. We look forward to seeing more from you out Thank here. You. Thank you so much. So surfers from the Tahiti Nui region, like you said, Megan, they have a, a kind of a, a confidence level and a comfort built in coming from a big barreling left, beautiful blue water, tropical temperature. I mean, you know, you put all those things on paper and you think, all right, well, does that mean a lot? 
but the confidence that we just saw from Imo, I mean, that's telling right there. Oh, for sure. I mean, he probably grew up since he was 10 years old taking a boat out grew there with his the dad or mom. And, you know, that's how it is there in, in French Polynesia and Tahiti. Yeah, everyone grows up on boats. Um, all the surfers, are, it's such a close-knit family. And when you go there as a Hawaiian, they treat you so well. It's very similar. You get off the plane, you have, you know, Tahitian music is playing, you get lays. It, it's, I know a lot of Hawaiians that would spend months at a time there, especially during the summertime. So their summer swells are like our winter swells. So every, especially pipe surfer, they're gonna wanna go to Tahiti during the summertime and get those kind of waves. Well, here's a guy that, uh, like you said, loves Tahiti, loves the barrel, Danny Fuller. And look and at that style, oh, Chris. He's just, he's so smooth. Right, it's, it's classic. I mean, he, there, there are times when you're watching Pipeline when there's 150 people out there, and it's kind of hard to decipher who's who until a guy like Danny Fuller takes off. You go, oh, there, there's Danny. I mean, it's that undeniable, just trademark style. Uh, I mean, this guy, he's done it all already, and he's still a young surfer. I mean, he's a Pipeline specialist an artist, photographer, a male model, a quad enthusiast. I mean, he lives a good life. And then Nathan Florence, born and bred, steps from Pipeline. We all know his world champion brother, John John. I mean, th this heat right here, if you don't, if you don't even watch Pipeline, you're gonna watch a heat like this and go, I'm psyched to see that. This you, is the, the heaviest heat of the day on paper, for yes. sure. When I saw this come through, I was so psyched to watch this. And the surfer in blue, he's got an interesting story as well. Guy Sato, which we'll get to know more about Guy here in a minute, but there's the approach. Ethan Florence, I mean, one of the rare kind of non-makes for him. He seems to be so consistent out here, but sometimes the reverberations coming out, I mean, there's not much you can do right there with that much happening in the barrel. No, and he was, he was on the pretty far back on the foam ball, as you can see from that aerial view. So I don't think he, I think he did all he could do on that. Uh, you know, it's been interesting to see. I love watching like his Instagram, and you know, we all know him for charging and surfing big pike. But he's been like super focused on his aerial game. Right, right. So I've, I've been in, enjoying watching that his aerial clips this year. Well, with 12:50 to go, love to see that. To me, that's one of the greatest combinations you can do in all of surfing: barrel, air, and pipeline. And it's rare to see that combo happen. We saw Itzel Ferreira did it in the Pipe Masters Finals. Uh, one of the reasons that he sealed the deal. Barrel, air combo. Will we see it from Nathan Florence? You're gonna have to wait and see what happens next. We got 12 minutes, 30 seconds to go. We're gonna take a quick break, but we'll be back with more. 2020 Vulcan Pipe Pro Pipeline is firing and will continue to do so after this brief message. We'll be right back. Welcome back, Surf fans, to the Vulcan Pipe Pro 2020 edition. Pipeline absolutely firing as we enter round two, heat one. Chris Cote here with Megan Abubo, and we're talking during that break, and you said it perfectly. It's escalating. We, we now have real pipe specialists coming through. We're already seeing that, and the consistency, bigger scores rolling through, taking nothing away from those first round performances. Here's where we're really going to start to see you know, the shine from the locals and the surfers from the from the international 
war, uh, realm. Yeah, what a better time to see the pumping surf, the surfs coming in, and the seated surfers coming into the event as well. And uh, the future is looking bright for all surf fans and for surfers in this draw. And uh, to testify to that, we've got Kevin Wallace from Surfline. I've got a stat here, Kevin, <laughs> and this comes from an email that you sent out last night. Wednesday, 8 to 12. Thursday, 8 to 12. Friday, 10 to 15. Saturday, 10 to 15. One of the better forecasts I've seen for a pipeline event in a long time. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's the swell is not going to be the issue over the next few days and really over the next kind of week and a half. Uh, it's going to be dialing in the wind. Uh, you know, great wind today. We've had this little, you know, the land breeze in the morning. We'll probably see it swirl around a little bit this afternoon, maybe go sea breezy at times. Uh, similar as we head into tomorrow, uh, just really light wind, another beautiful day. And then towards the end of the week, Friday and Saturday, things look a little bit dicier to me, but the trend in the last two or three days has been for a better wind overall. And as we look at our animation here, you can see, uh, you know, the North Pacific lit up with those reds and purple colors. That's a great sign for us. That means a lot of swell on the way, uh, a little reinforcing swell tomorrow, another one coming up Friday afternoon and before tapering off through the weekend. It looks like more around the middle part of next week, kind of around the fifth, sixth. So again, it's just going to be dialing in the wind conditions and, and to me it's probably going to boil down to looking at Friday Saturday versus kind of the middle part of next week and winds for both swells and and uh, we'll see how we go. Well it's always great to start an event like this I mean with a classic day and it seems like this season has had some seriously uh, spectacular sessions kind of uh, I would say one of the better seasons we've seen maybe in the past five or six years uh, but what is it about the Volcom Pipe Pro window that always seems to just line up perfectly with those uh, th these winter swells? So we've got a couple things going on for us, a couple things in our favor. Uh, number one is this is kind of the climatological peak of the North Pacific season for Hawaii to see North Pacific swells. And then the second factor with that is we tend to see swells that are more west in direction starting around, you know, late December, January into February versus early season and late season when there's more north in direction. Pipe loves the more westerly swells. So, you know, traditionally backdoor shootout gets great waves. Uh, the, the Vulcan Pipe Pro gets great waves. And, uh, you know, it's not every year but it seems like most though for sure I, I think the Vulcan pipe pro is just blessed too because not everyone was here a few weeks ago but we were very unblessed for those <laughs> those holiday yeah. periods so it, it you know everybody says it takes a little bit of rain and sunshine to make a rainbow so that's what we're seeing right now and it, we're so I mean I haven't seen this a, a kickoff to this event in a while like this and to see that kind of forecast as a local surfer you just looking at going I'm not leaving my TV <laughs> yeah and when you know everybody has access to, uh, to to the information via Surfline right so all the surfers all the fans um, is there is there kind of an extra uh, special look that you give during these contest period windows when you're hyper focused on pipeline itself uh, what are the key factors that you're looking for you know, to make the calls of 8 to 12 feet, 10 to 15 feet. I, you know, for, for Piper, really anywhere around the world when we're doing a contest forecast, you know, we're looking at specific swells, um, specific swell directions, swell periods, things like that. And, you know, each spot has kind of its magic numbers for, for all of those variables and wind as well. Uh, so when you see them all align, you start to get pretty excited about a forecast like, you know, I certainly was, especially for the beginning of this forecast. Um, it's fun to see. You know, you try not to get too excited. I, you don't want to overhype anything, but. When uh, Kevin Wallace is smiling like that, <laughs> you know that's good news. And so I love the point of we have a great problem in. Now we have plenty of swell. We've got the whole contest window to work with. So now it's just about picking those gem days. So the night before the event, you know, you have this probability, right? I think last night it felt like 99 to 100% that felt we were going to start night, today. Yeah. Uh, I know it's early. We're not even at lunch yet, but how do you feel about tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow, I think very strong chance we're going to be running again. I, from the, the last couple things I've seen, wind doesn't look quite as perfect. You know, it's, it's perfect wind this morning, and um, it should be pretty good through the day. You know, maybe a sea breeze picking up. Uh, tomorrow looks just kind of more light and variable, probably swirling a little bit more, so maybe not the uh, perfect, perfect win that we're seeing now, but I think still a very good chance that we'll go tomorrow. Um, and then the big question again is like, okay, looking at Friday, looking at Saturday versus a little bit wait, a little bit later in the waiting period, and um, how do you know, especially how do the how does the wind look on both of those days? Um, so we'll, we'll see. We'll, you know, as we get, as we move it through tomorrow, and uh, see, you know, that more and more information is, is available and. Um, we'll, we'll make the call then, you know, Marty will make the call then. And do you have a, a, a special hotline that you give out? Do, do international surfers who maybe not <laughs> super familiar with Pipeline, do they have the ability to call Kevin to go, 
pipeline or backdoor? What am I looking at for tomorrow? A few, a few. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, you know, magic I'm, I'm discreet yeah. about giving out that number. Yeah, but yeah, for for sure. Oh, we can't wait to, uh, you know, wrap up the day today. We're barely even cracked into this one, and we've already seen some incredible waves. Thank you so much, Kevin, for joining us. Now get back to your computer, get back to your charts. <laughs> we can't wait to see what happens for the rest of the waiting period here. So 4.58 to go. Megan, we're looking at this heat right now, and that opening wave from Akai McNamara, the 667, that's really uh, kind of the, the benchmark that's been set, and that happened in the first minute of this heat. Everybody else playing catch up for now, a 3.03, .03, a 4.27 for Danny Fuller, so no real huge scores coming in yet, but with four and a half to go, this is where uh, people start to roll the dice like this wave from Nathan Florence. Yeah, look how clean that wave was. He executed that perfectly. It wasn't a big wave, but he's right here. He kind of stalls. He knows, okay, this thing's going to set up right here. So he draws out his bottom turn a little and then snuck, sn sneaks right under it, grabs his rail, just perfect positioning. When they make it look this easy, you've kind of got to just try your best to imagine all the decisions that are happening when they stand up on their board, when they paddle for that wave. I mean, it starts with when they see the wave out the back, then it's like, oh, am I gonna grab, am I gonna let go? And these guys are, are so tuned in mm -hmm. to this wave. You saw Nathan Florence right there. I mean, that was eight decisions within the span of about half a second yeah, to grab mil bottom turn. You're right, they're, they're milliseconds. Like, that whole clip was what, two, two full seconds from takeoff to where he kicked out. So y you figure, I mean, we hear, heard earlier Koa talking about, you know, slowing guys' clips down. I mean, that's where surfing's evolved. They're slowing, slow motioning, like, waves and seeing exactly where the positioning is. And that's what they're practicing. And I, sometimes I think these guys, they don't even go out and, like, practice full waves. They're just seeing, like, what if I did this with my shoulder? What if I dropped my knee there? What if I, you know, tweak something? And then that's how they, you know, they evolve to position. And, you know, I just love how he drops into that wave, Chris. And see how per he doesn't drop too low on the wave, but he just sees that thing open up, just squares out his shoulders and drags his, like, inside arm right there. And, you know, you can only see the tip of his board. Perfect little spit out. And I don't think he could have done that better. It was just a, you know, nice, clean ride. Didn't get greedy. If you get greedy on a wave like that, you know, at that size, we've seen it already happen today. You're just, you're gonna get pitched. And right there, it was just a perfect read. The score's not gonna be huge, but it's gonna be enough to get him in the conversation. Now in second place. So Danny Fuller in third place. He's got a 4-2-7 to start. He needs just a .53. He does have priority. Guy Sato out the back in blue. Needs a 2-4-8. He started with a 2-3-3. We haven't seen a lot from uh, Guy Sato, but in doing a little bit of research, he did surf the Vulcan Pipe Pro last year. And if you want to know more and see more of this guy, watch the film Hanalei Bay. He is a verified uh, Japanese movie star. Wow. Yeah, he's an actor, an actor and a surfer. And right now he's acting like an incredible surfer and doing a great job of it. Well, th th this day and age is pro surfer has to be multi-talented, right? You have to keep up with your Instagram, your Twitter account, get photos in on online, have your own blog, and then be an actor, obviously. Uh, Chris, I just wanted to touch on one of the X factors out at Pipeline that everybody knows about. You know, you think about Tahiti. Tahiti's like perfect, it's always glassy, but the wind factor, and when you have those strong northeast trades, it really makes that takeoff super sketchy. So as a surfer, you wake up, you look at these kind of conditions. I wake up and I think, oh my gosh, it's buttery out there. You know, just perfect. And I feel like with this kind of conditions, you have that extra couple of milliseconds there that you can play with on the takeoff. So it's a little more as user-friendly as you want to call pipeline. Yeah, I think, I mean, that's a great point when you're looking at it, especially for these pipeline specialists. They're looking at this probably through the lens of a free surf session thinking, you know, when they're free surfing, a guy like Danny Fuller, he'll wait out there for two hours for that one wave that's going to be the wave of the winter potentially. You got to kind of step out of that free surf role and know that you really don't have that much time. I mean, we saw Jamie O'Brien and Derek Ho earlier uh, unable to you know, capitalize on a quote unquote perfect day at Pipe because those are two guys that are used to going out there, drop an anchor in that spot, in their spot on the reef, 
Uh, but you gotta take the free surf hat off and put that contest hat on, which Nathan Florence has already done well in his opening heat, and it looks like he's doing that yet again. So for a lot of these guys, these pipeline specialists, these pipe free surfers, they could catch maybe two, three waves in a three hour session. You've gotta really pack it all into these 25 minute heats. Yeah, and they must have telepathically heard you talking about that, because at the end of the heat, both guys knew that they needed a small score. Uh, I think Nathan might have had the upper hand on that because he already kind of had two waves. What, you, com competitive surfing pipeline? Yeah, and I see Makai McNamara who is going to get through uh, with the lead for now. Things have changed. We are waiting for some scores to come out, but you know, that was one of those heats where, again, on paper, the heat of the day in terms of talent, but uh, I think these surfers all kind of went out there thinking that classic 10-point wave was going to come through, but you have to start getting scores on the board, which is what Makai did early with a 6-6-7 six, six, and a 4. Yeah, Makai got busy real early. He played that heat very smart. I think he was watching the heats prior to that. And so did Nathan. Nathan wasn't just going on bombs, you know, like like this perfect little wave cluing into these little barrels. I mean, he built upon his little house as well. Those are probably waves that guys like Makai and Nathan and Danny would almost donate to the Brahms. You go on this one. I'm waiting for the big one. Uh, but with the results coming through, Makai McNamara officially is going to get the win. We're still waiting for one score to drop for Nathan Florence. He needs a 3-1-2. He did get that last wave at back door. And most likely that's going to be enough. Some four fives, some fives coming through the scoreline. It drops as a four six seven. So Nathan Florence now jumps through to second place. And unfortunately, and tellingly to how deep this field is, we lose pipe specialist Danny Fuller, as well as Guy Sato. Yeah, that's just the way the co cookie crumbles out here. You just never know. Every heat's going to be different. Every wave's going to bring on that reef different. That's what makes pipeline so exciting. The, the last heat's not going to happen, what's going to happen in your heat. But uh, if I know Danny, he's going to be out there as soon as this contest is done. Yeah, these, uh, these round two heats are just keeping up with the tempo. Hinata, Aizawa, Roy, Kanazawa, Daiki, Matsunaga, and Chris Rodriguez enter the lineup. So uh, unlike round two heat one, which featured really kind of household names for Pipeline, this is an all undergrounder affair. Uh, this is going to be one of those heats where one of these surfers is just going to put their put the pole in the sand and go, I'm here to be that story, that Cinderella story that we see every single year. Looking at the board here, you see Soli Bailey, 2017. Not a name that you would have picked at the beginning of that year, but he showed early on that he was going to be the surfer to beat, and at the end of the day, he won. So. Will it be Hinata, Roy, and, Daiki, Rodriguez? And this event has really like helped those surfers, both of them, I believe, even Jack Robinson oh, last yeah. year, helped them get on the world tour for the following year. So, and this year it being a, a 5,000, this is a, you do good in this event, this is gonna be a counter for you. This is at least gonna excel you and you're gonna start the year off with that confidence, you know, and know that I can surf pipeline. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're you're absolutely right. Jack Robinson and Sully Bailey, after the win here, got the momentum, got their season going. So I guess technically this is the end of the North Shore season competitively or the beginning of the QS season, however you look at it. But either way, a big result here. Your 2020 is starting off strong. It is. I, I, I think there's it's the beginning of the season. It's January. I, everybody likes to throw away last year's jerseys and like start fresh reset. reset and what a what not a better place than the bonsai pipeline right and it, you know again for it, it kind of depends on goals right you have the goal to qualify or you have the goal just to really stamp your name on the uh, on, on, on the map at pipeline which a win here that tell i mean that's i would say it's right up there with being a pipe master because we know how deep the field is here. We know how hungry all the competitors are here coming into this event. And I tell you, the, the servers that have won this contest can attest that that is a, a life hammer right there. There are many surfers that have made a life and a living and their passion is to surf pipeline. And that's all they want to do. Guys that live and breathe to surf pipeline. 
and none better than you know all these local guys these young juniors these these guys coming up through the ranks that some of them if they do want to do the world tour they can use this as a stepping stone and you know quite a few of these junior surfers they've never actually been even into a qualifying series event and this is going to just help them for next year if they want to do the world tour or say the local hawaii surfers that want to qualify for next year's world tour events over here so th this event is very Im important for local surfers and you know and surfers who want to specialize in pipeline absolutely and by entering this contest you're walking into a gauntlet and uh no heat's going to be easy but when you got this guy in your heat, you know it's going to be twice as hard as every other heat. Makai McNamara coming through again. Congratulations on that. I mean, that on paper, that was the draw. That was the heat of the day so far. You had a couple of your buddies out there. Uh, tell us when you go into a heat like that, when you see names like Danny Fuller, Nathan Florence. I know you're not scared of anybody at Pipeline, but what, what kind of preparation do you do for yourself before that heat? Um, actually, lately, I haven't been looking at my heat. <laughs> just don't look at it. I just have my girlfriend look at what heat I'm in and then just go off of that. But uh, I get pretty fired up when I have, like, hard heats at pipe, especially, like, right off the bat, because if you get through it, you're a lot of confidence. Sorry, I'm, like, out of breath right now. <laughs> of course. I mean, it is, yeah. it's, it's wild out there right now. Yeah. Let's talk about the 2017 run. Got third place out here. Uh, you came from these early rounds. Um, tell us what that meant for you. You weren't necessarily going for qualification. You were going for the pride, the glory of Pipeline. Of course, the points and the price money don't hurt. Yeah. But tell us about 2017, and are you tapping into that for success here in 2020? Yeah, I definitely look back on that every time I surf an event here, and it just reminds me that I can go all the way. And that year was, I think, like the best year of waves and like the best final I've seen out of like name besides my name the guys in that final were really really high respected pipe surfers and uh, but yeah i just use that for confidence going into this and it feels good to get a win per seat and uh, i'm starting the same round in it as i did back then so it would be seven heats if i'm into the final so hopefully the same thing <laughs> i was just wondering maybe if you can tell a little about growing up and having your dad as a Pipe specialist and his influence on your life and growing up and maybe that some of the first times you surfed out here with him yeah um, well yeah he has the biggest influence on how I surf out here and what waves to pick and where to sit and all that stuff and uh, my brother actually kind of got out here before me he was like the one with just big balls and on it at 13 like packing 10 footers even 12 like I was like oh, I don't know if I want to do that <laughs> And then uh, once I got like 14, 15, he just, he never really pushed me to go like super big or anything, just kind of slowly get there. And I kind of started to shine more like in the contests because it's a good time to like show how you, how you can surf and get waves. And uh, yeah, so I think I gained a lot of confidence from like I made the trials in 2016. And that was kind of when I was like, okay, I can do uh, that was a, a great performance there. I mean, really kind of one of those heats where you just it just looked like you had everything in control from beginning to end. How are you going to keep that role going here to potentially get your picture on this wall with these yeah. fellas? Yeah. Um, I don't know. You just got to you can't you got to take it heat by heat like they all say. But then you also got to have that goal of winning, you know, and uh, that confidence that you can. That's what I'm looking to channel. I had a big chance, and I look back at it every day of winning that year that I was in the final, and it, everything seemed to go my way to win, and I didn't capitalize on it. So I just want to get another chance. All right. Well, the chance is now. Yeah. The swell is here. We know the window's going to be you. big. Good luck. <laughs> Watch Thanks. out for Makai McNamara heading on into round three. So uh, with that heat win there, you can just you can feel the confidence, Megan, coming from these surfers that are sitting in that chair right now. And you know a lot of the, the first round heat winners were kind of just awestruck when they came in here. But as you get into round two and round three, these are surfers that know where they belong, they belong in that chair right there. Yeah, and they've not they're not only pipeline surfers, but they're they've surfed multiple heats out here. They know what to expect. They know that it's not a free surf. So, you know they're waking up their own. Well, and speaking of that, the flip side, uh, potentially surfers with less experience 
right there, and that could be less heat experience and obviously less pipeline experience. This was uh, Daiki Matsunaga, who was your surfer in white. So right there taking off and obviously impeding the surfer in blue, Roy Kanazawa. So Megan, I know you've surfed in a million heats. You probably have had an interference or two in a, in a career this long. Tell us what happened right here. Uh, why was it Daiki Matsunaga that got the interference? Well, as you could see at the takeoff, it was a pretty dominant left right there. And um, obviously the other surfer was trying to make it seem like it was a split peak situation somewhat, but um, you could see that it was a left. So the interesting thing, I mean, the rule, some of the rules have changed a little bit, but it's still the, the same law. Basically, you just don't interfere with another surfer if it's their priority or if it's their right away. Uh, everybody wants to see a clean heat. Uh, good thing, like like we were talking about earlier in that heat, that they're both actually wearing helmets. Oh, as you can see, you know, surfer in blue is going to take off right here. It is, I mean, it, I think it's kind of a left, but I mean, you know, maybe from that slowed down perspective, I can see how both of them thought they were, had the right of way. Well, and you know? depending on where they were sitting also in priority, so... I mean, that's something that we, we see happen even to the best of the best. We, of course, remember Gabriel Medina and Kyrie Belly. That was a big storyline for last from last year. Uh, fortunately for this heat right there, I mean, there's two really... Getting an interference with pipeline can be dangerous. I mean, if not deadly. So the good news is both those surfers unscathed after that. I mean, drop-ins out here can have heavy consequences. So it's nice to see both these guys straight back out there and... The, the, and the best case scenario is all that's going to happen is part of Daiki's score is going to be taken away. No harm, no foul in terms of personal bodily harm. And that's why um, in 2020, the qualifying events, which is, you know, the predecessor to go on the world tour, there's a lot of priority. There, there's the similar rules as, as opposed to it used to be like dog eat dog. Like, every, you know, you'd have your people known as hasslers and... and the game's changed a bit. There's more priority, there's more respect in the water because of it, you know, there's consequences. Uh, you don't, this is a dangerous wave and you don't want to see crossing like that. Um, I know Chris, during the break, we were talking about helmets. Yeah. It's interesting enough, this, both of those guys were wearing helmets. So, you know, a lot of stuff can happen when, when you cross paths, you can get in little accidents, you can, this is a super shallow wave, you can't, the average person at home doesn't realize it. it's like two, three feet deep in some places, you know? Yeah, and I think for uh, for some of these young surfers out there, you know, right there we saw uh, Matsunaga, who, and do not count him out, because you can still advance through with that interference if you get a good enough, you know, high wave score to get you through. But the, the helmet conversation, it's been growing and growing. I mean, you see uh, Matsunaga right there in white. I think he's about 20 years old. So a uh, younger surfer, you see Roy Kanazawa, 17 years old from Shikoku, Japan. Younger surfer at Pipeline, maybe not tons of experience out here. Why not have the peace of mind to wear the helmet? When guys like Owen Wright, uh, you know, Koa Smith, some of the best surfers out here. I mean, all the way back to Liam McNamara. Landon McNamara is wearing a helmet. So we're starting to see more of them. And I'm good with that. You know, in a lot of other sports, snowboarding, you know, vert skating, high risk sports helmets are almost mandatory they're not mandatory in surfing but uh we're starting to see i think kind of a resurgence uh, of helmets and you know what if it's going to get people into heavier deeper steeper more wild situations of pipe let's go for it yeah and save save our favorite surfers heads exactly sure. 12 20 to go more action coming at you after these brief messages you're watching the 2020 Vulcan pipe pro stay tuned
All right, Chris, it's either me or the Volcom Pipe Pro. Take your pick. Ooh, tough one. I think I'm gonna go Volcom Pipe Pro. See you later, babe. Let's go. Pipeline's firing. Woo. Dad, are you psyched for the Volcom Pipe Pro? Oh, I'm psyched, son. I am psyched. Oh, I might be in a little trouble for that one. But hey, you gotta make your choices. And uh, for all of us watching, for all of us here on the beach at Pipeline, I think we made a pretty good choice. The Volcom Pipe Pro, day one. First day of the waiting period. Now, now this is a rarity. To start a contest with a bang like this. Perfect pipeline. Chris Cote here with Megan Abubo. You've got round two, heat two in the lineup now. 10 minutes, 22 seconds to go. This has been kind of a random weird heat. The first interference of the contest has happened. No scores of note on the board. Four surfers that are underground chargers. No household names in this heat. But with 10 minutes to go, this is where we could see, you know, that Hail Mary ride. We could see a Yeti giving away for a perfect 10. It could happen. These four guys, they, they're good enough. The waves are good enough. Is it going to be Aizawa with that last wave? Might not be a 10. No, but I mean, you know, to give them a, a bit of credit, the slate onshore just came in. You know, we're going to see that swirling throughout the day. But Aizawa just snuck into a little bit of a head dip right there. He's, you know, that's what it's all about. He, he, regardless if it's a low scoring heat, it's whoever has the best score in that heat. You yeah. Know, some, you can't always go in the heat and go, oh, I'm going to get 14.5 points total. So he set up pretty good for this. It just was a, it wasn't a super long barrel, that's all. That would have been one of the best barrels I've ever had. So put that in context there. You know, nobody looks back and says, well, you got through the first round with a, you know, five points. Nobody says that. They only go, all right, what are you going to do next? This is about surviving rounds. You know, when you have waves at this size, when you have a field this deep, it's about surviving rounds. And then when you get into the conversation of third, fourth round with John John, you know, with Jack Robinson, then it's about, okay, this is time where you're not going to get through heats with five-point totals, eight-point totals. You're going to have to have 14, 15-point totals once you get into those latter rounds, but it's about getting there. It doesn't matter how you get there. It's just a matter about being there. And right now, two of these surfers are going to get through this heat, most likely uh, with single-digit scores on the board. Yeah, and it being some of their first round, sometimes it's just about getting your feet wet. Sometimes it's just about feeling your equipment out like did I take the right size board out was my board too big was it too small you know how do my fins feel because as we said earlier in a free surf you don't ever have three guys in the water with you so, so maybe you normally sit further in than further out so your game plan this is what sets up the rest of the event for you like okay I get out of the heat I only have seven points what am I going to do in the next heat like you said Chris like am I going to use that board am I going to use a different board like did I look kind of skittish on it? You know, you're going to feel it out more. And that's what that first heat usually is. It's a feeler heat. If you do great and you get good scores and all the more merrier. But if you don't, just use that to, to build upon your entire event with. Yeah, and I could say if you did get through one of these early round heats with a five or a six point total, you're thinking, wow, I've got plenty of room to grow. If you get 19 points in your first round, you're talking about peaking too early. So. Uh, you know, any way you can get through these early heats. And I'll tell you, even though it's a short 25 minute session, it's a battle. I mean, these servers are all getting pounded. It doesn't matter how good you are. I mean, Derrico, Jamie O'Brien, the list goes on and on of surfers who have already just taking heavy beatings this morning. So while it does look inviting on the right waves, some of these wipeouts are brutal. But, you know, luckily for these surfers, this is something new for this year, Volcom CBD. This is, uh, this is a natural product that you know, they have rubs and ointments and stuff to where you're feeling sore, you come in, and uh, it's all waiting for you right there. So, stoked to have uh, Vulcan CBD on the beach for the athletes and, you know, for us. We're, we're getting hyped up in here. We might need some on the back of our neck or something. It, my feet, maybe? Exactly. Maybe? No. So I mean... Vulcan CBD party later. Wow, late drop, Rodriguez. That was one of those waves where, you know, he did the hard work. You don't want to spray the water. Don't. <laughs> you don't want to. Who's out there? Uncle Terry. No, you don't want to spray the water. No. Um, you know, shoot. He doesn't have too many too many waves under his belt. Just trying to, like, get over that ledge, take that drop. It's so important. And like you said earlier, Chris, 
th this is you're building that house. If if you can, you can come away from the, a heat like this, and you know know how to surf it out here. It's all about putting your time in. You don't do well on the North Shore without putting your time in. And this is a this is a 25 minute heat where you know you can catch as many ways as you 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 want to catch out there without anybody telling you no that's my wave you know there's no pecking order except for who has priority so this gives everybody the opportunity equally to put their timing out at pipe and that's what they all want so that last wave for rodriguez comes through at a 1.53 or a, a 0.90 so I did like that he rolled the dice there. He had that late drop, that big takeoff. And, you know, a lot of times if the surfer's patient, they make the drop, they can look down the line. Sometimes that middle inside section that we saw earlier from Ryder Guest, who was super patient, waited for that inside section to barrel. He got a 6.67, six, I believe. So it, it happens. It doesn't have to be the biggest, tallest waves that come through they are going to give you those biggest scores. Sometimes those medium waves that hit the reef just right can give you the opportunity. There you see Rodriguez making his way back out there. So, the, you know, this guy's a veteran. He's been around the block. He's been tubed out here plenty. He knows, what, you know, what it's going to take to get the score. Uh, but I think a lot of times for, for surfers who haven't competed here a lot, their, their, uh, you know, their time spent at Pipeline is going to be with 400 people in the water, some of the best Pipeline surfers ever. Uh, on any given day, on a day like today, it would be, the crowd would be just incredible. You know, you'd have everybody out there and good luck getting a wave. So a lot of times when you're out there, you know how, uh, how it's awkward to be on the dance floor when it's empty? You don't know where to look. You kind of like, where do I stand? What moves do I do? I think that may be the same feeling out there where you're so excited, but usually you're going, I'm gonna sit next to Jamie O'Brien. I'm gonna sit next to Derek O. You're out there going, where do I sit? What do I do out here? no idea what's going on yeah there we see he ha he set up pretty good like he grabbed this rail but i mean it wasn't the biggest wave so he didn't have much room to like get into the barrel um as you said chris you have your um what are they they're almost like little buoys right you know where like you said you can line up you see where jamie is you see where Maybe Uncle Mike is. You see where Uncle Derek is. You see where all these guys are sitting. And you know, you know where your place is in the lineup. Yeah, I'm gonna sit 25, 30 feet inside from where those guys are sitting. I, I like gums, actually. No. Oh, me too. <laughs> I'm right joking. there with you. I mean, this is, for, for as easy as these guys are making it look, this is, this is heavy. I mean, this is, this is one of those days where you know, any wipeout, look at, you look at how, shallow the reef is you look at those deep scars in that coral reef and that is not something to be trifled with it's still 8 to 12 feet out there there's giant sets rolling through and just the, the slightest error you know you look at that wave right there and you're thinking all right you could probably surf that wave well yeah you probably could but when you pull out of it there could be a monster behind that you have nowhere to go so uh, there are consequences even when it looks perfect like this I mean, I, I, I consider any surfer who signs up and enters this event to be a true warrior, because we've seen it in the past. I mean, we have been, we've surfed this contest in crazy, unruly conditions. You never know what you're gonna get. So just by signing that dotted line, the Vulcan Pie Pro, I mean, you're, you're gonna be walking into uh, some nuts for sure. Yeah, and you, do, you just, not only that, but you have a factor of like, all these houses right here and like the best pipe surfers are watching you so you have the nerves of that and and the you, not the uncertainty of what the waves are going to be like in your heat as well like i noticed these guys have a little bit of length because it was bombing prior to their heat and sometimes maybe having a little extra length would have been better in the prior heat but maybe in this heat they needed less so you just don't really know that's the thing about surfing there's no like canvas where or there's no model that it tells you oh it's gonna be this like this in your heat you just have to be prepared that's the most important thing to be prepared for the unexpected yeah and we saw in that last heat Kai McNamara and Nathan Florence uh, they were just in the right spot at the right time they made full use of the waves that came to them and it didn't look like they were really out there you know they, they weren't stressing in this heat I see a little bit of you know urgency 
maybe some stressing, maybe some confusion. Uh, so it, it's just telling. And, you know, give Azawa a couple more opportunities out here, and he will adapt. All these surfers are good enough. Obviously, they've got guts to go out there and charge on some of these waves. So just with more opportunity, more reps, you know, with, with more time spent in the lineup with three other guys, I mean, that's, that's just going to give you more confidence moving through. So for a surfer, oh, yep, I said it. I got to do 10 push-ups after this for that. 38 seconds to go. As it stands now, Rodriguez, Azawa, one and two. Uh, Kanazawa needs a one, four, seven. Matsunaga needs a one, four, three. So last second Hail Mary. I love that drone sh or that, that overhead shot because you can see all the fingers in the reef. And you know, if you ever listen to interviews with like top pipe specialists, they'll talk about those fingers, the reefs, they all have their little spots. The the real pipe guys, they know what finger to sit on, what little piece of reef to sit off of. Yeah, it, it looks like a great place to snorkel when it's flat. Not say this is a good snorkel spot when it's eight to 12 feet. Well, needing a .60, oh, this could be interesting. That's a smart move, Chris. For Roy Kanazawa. I make the judges think because you gotta look. You gotta look at the rest of the heat and see is that were they a 1.6? What did they give a 1.6 to? Or he actually no a 0.6. 0.6. So I would venture to say he's got it. Just really just for that, that one kind of tap turn. Yep. And again, you don't have to tell people your score. You just gotta tell them you made it through your heat. And it does. So a 0.97. 1.87. The total for Roy Kanazawa making it through that heat. And you know what? Those numbers tend to disappear when you're talking about advancing through. So as it stands now, Hinato Azawa gets the win. Roy Kanazawa gets second. Rodriguez third. And unfortunately for Daiki Matsunaga, who is coming in to this heat as a kind of a highly touted young surfer, gets the interference and unfortunately drops to fourth place. So thank you so much, Megan Abubo, for joining us. More to come with Megan later on today. Mahalo for having me. As uh, round two, heat two, heat two wraps up here. Well, these four, these four surfers kind of come in and going, what just happened? And that was a kind of a vexing heat from the get-go. Two surfers advance through, two surfers pack it up, head on home. US 5000 action unfolding in front of us and the stakes just get higher from here. There's that interference we saw in the last, the only interference of the day so far, so good clean surfing on the day, only one interference and luckily for everyone involved, you know, there's no tax paid other than points taken off the board. So as we go into round two, heat three, we're gonna welcome in Kaipo Guerrero and Von Blakey. Kaipo, a little bit, yeah, like mid-morning, quiet down, but as we know, when things quiet down, the volume tends to turn up. Let's turn it up, Chris, and we're gonna move on into this next heat. Round two, heat number three. Yesa, Blessa, and the show continues here. First day, 2020, Volcom Pipe Pro. Kaipo Guerrero in the studio. My man, Von Deadly, is gonna be joining me. We can see couple of advancements into the next round. The next round is going to be the round of 96. But it's round two action. And I love this setup for this heat. Heat number three, round number two. It's going to be all teenage affair. Robert Grillo, Max Beach, Joshua, Chester, and Sammy Gray. Grillo, 16 years old. Max Beach, 17 years old. Josh Chester. 18 years old, the oldest of the bunch, it's Sammy Gray, 17 years old. So Vaughn, we got the young crop out here in Heat 3, Round 2. Good to see you, Kaipo. Ah. Good to be back here at the Vulcan Pipe Pro, mate. All teenage heat, this is... I love it. Trippy. Just trying to think about my teenage years and what I was getting up to. Surfing Pipeline was probably somewhere in my brain as a fantasy that I was hopefully, hopefully going to achieve one day, but, you know, most of these guys uh, have actually put time out here in this lineup over the last few years and uh, you know went trolling through their Instagrams before and most of them have a pretty decent shot out here so this is a good opportunity to show what they can do uh, after putting in some time 
I'll have the lineup to themselves. They won't have to jockey it with, uh, you know, the alpha males and the big dogs. I'm with you, Vaughn. I think that's actually one of the giant pluses of the competition that we're opening it up to 144 competitors that we're starting off with. And it gives a lot of these young guns some valuable time on the reef here at the Bonsai Pipeline. Mm -hmm. We know it's a highly competitive lineup on a normal day. Up to 80 folks out here, every single one of them ripping and charging. So this is a big chance, but I think the challenges for some of these youngsters is their lineups without the crowd because all of a sudden they're in the arena and they're like whoa all the seats are empty yeah it's so true the whole lineup just expands doesn't it all of a sudden where you know you've got maybe 10 or 12 guys who know the wave really well who you kind of they become your markers rather than something on land and uh all of a sudden without those guys there you just you really just left to your own devices where are you going to sit on a day like this it's huge out there kites it's actually massive mate like been sitting on the beach watching and when a set rolls in you see it coming from miles out to sea and as it starts standing up on the first reef i mean being a teenager and having that coming at you you've got some serious choices to make man yeah, uh, yeah but you know what this. surfing's evolved in the prodigious talent that we see now from youngsters and i'm gonna have to give it up really to start off to john john florence where he came out here 10 11 years old 12 years old it was kind of unheard of at the time. He was an anomaly. Now with all the team houses and the bar continues to rise, you see kids surf and start surfing pipeline as young as 10 years old. Mm. And so by the time they're 17 years old, they're seven years veterans out of the pipeline. You know, and, and the, best, the best thing for them, I mean, as you're developing as a surfer, is sit back and watch. Mm. But all of that time, you're gaining knowledge of the different personalities of this wave. Yeah, it's so true. I remember paddling out here a, a couple of years ago um, and just being terrified because, you know, Pipeline holds a place in my imagination as the big dog. It's it's never not scary paddling out there. And I was, you know, gathering up courage and losing my breath a little bit. And then a, a pregnant woman paddled past me and a five-year-old on her heels. I was like, oh, my goodness, what is going on here? But that's, that's how quickly it's moving, mate. On a day like today, you're not going to see that so much. But, you know, that's, that's how deeply they want to be out there and experiencing this way at a younger age yeah it's they're uh, out there it, in the womb in utero bro it's it truly is one of the wonders of the surfing world and we're always blessed at the Volcom pipe pro with great conditions great swell it's a great time of the year to be in hawaii look at it's january balmy weather mm. the uv index is way up there you can get very <laughs> tan we've had a run of i'm gonna say probably 10 days non-stop of surf here on the North Shore. North. Going up into the extra large range too. Mm -hmm. like sometimes why it gets too big. Unique. Take a look at a replay here. Just a starter. For looks like Joshua Chester getting blasted there. And here's Max Beach, young surfer from San Clemente. And actually it was Max that took that wipeout and with that comes a lesson as well. Yeah, that's uh, always going to be a rattle fest. It's crazy, isn't it? Like the, the most mellowest looking wipeout out here will rattle you. And I think, you know, thinking back to the Pipe Masters finals, uh, Gabby getting a pretty bad beating out here uh, in the final. It, he never seemed to bounce back from that, mate. I, I was pretty blown away by just, you know, from a guy who never really falls off or puts himself in the wrong position, even he can feel the full brute force of pipeline and get rattled by it. Well, there's going to be a test right now on camera for Max Beach, another wipeout for the young surfer from San Clemente. And Max is shaking it off. It looks like he's handling it well. Good news for Max. He's got 17 minutes and 50 seconds on the board. No score of, scores of any weight as of yet, Just but just another lesson there. Yeah, I don't really want to know what it feels like to get bounced off the bottom out there. Have you copped it? I cut my foot wide open in November, um, just out here, right at the beginning of the Triple Crown. Mm. Yeah. My worst wipeout at Pipeline actually came walking up the beach after my first surf out here. Did some action. I tripped on a rock, face planted, ate sand. Yeah, we have those hidden, we have hidden rocks here. Mm. All kinds of landmines happening. So that was the last wave of Sammy Gray, the young man from Kauai. So we'll be waiting for the score for Sammy Gray in the green jersey. Continue to set this heat. Again, we said this is all teenage 
heat out in the water. Heat number three, round number two. This is the round of 128 here. First day opening day of the 2020 Volcom Pike Pro. Thank you for joining us on Red Bull TV. Sammy Gray out in this heat. He got through that first round this morning. It was a real tricky heat. Lots of warbles, lots of backwash. There was actually waves breaking back towards the lineup. So, I mean, that's uh, making a hard situation even more difficult. But Sammy, uh, he got through basically just by pulling into a couple of closeouts. And uh, he sat in here with us and he was basically, you know, he just was saying, I just got to make some. Like this, that was a pretty frustrating heat. I saw him actually uh, flip off one of the closeouts that he pulled into. So, uh, you know, he's got some attitude, which is good to have out here at Pipe. I think, you know, you can't be sitting back and hoping for the best. You've got to attack the wave as best you can. Yeah, the cool thing about watching Sammy Gray grow up as a surfer is the kid charges, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a theme amongst this next generation of surfers from Hawaii, but it seems like all of these kids kind of put their head down and is expected of them. And now, Vaughn, with the level of pro surfing continuing to rise, if you want to be a pro surfer these days, like young Robert Grillo on our screen, you have to charge pipeline. You probably need to get a 10-foot board now and catch a couple over at Jaws. And um, you have to be a master in, in the barrel and also be able to do full rotation airs if you have any hope whatsoever of being a professional Isn't surfer. Isn't that crazy? I mean, back when, <laughs> back when we were like first, you know, watching pro surfing evolve and fans of it, you kind of had a lot of one-trick ponies on there. You yeah. had guys who were an air guy or guys who were a tube guy or a guys big that were turn guy. guys, yeah. And they kind of all existed in that same space. And now it's everything. Yeah, you have to be able to do it. To hey, uh, I've got a question for you, Chops. Sure. Like this uh, event, the Vulcan Pipe Pro has been elevated to a 5,000 uh -huh. uh, this year. This huge news. So this is an event that will more than likely feature in the keepers at the end of the year for whoever's qualifying. Yeah, I mean, a, if a, you get a win. A first or second place, yeah. yeah, could be a keeper, yeah. So, I mean, what does that do for the mindset, of, particularly in these early rounds, for guys who are having their first shot at the QS or have surfed in a couple of events to get a good result here? I mean, that's going to really help you out to get a ranking uh, and to stay within the seeding order as we get to the second half of the year. Because what we do is we do a, a mid-season re, uh, readjustment and reseed for the end of the season, and the end of the season is heavy in those 10,000s, right? Those Challenger series. And those 10,000s are going to let you get you on tour. So you do good at the beginning of the, se of the season, you get that seed for the, the back half of the year, and you got to make sure that you perform in those big Challenger series coming up uh, at the year end on the World Surf League. We're going to take a quick break here at the Volcom Pipe Pro as we wait for the next set to hit the reef at the Bonsai Pipeline. But we'll be back with more action. Don't go anywhere. Check out the Water Channel on Red Bull TV and dive into the exciting worlds of surf, wakeboarding, cliff diving, and many, many more. Download the Red Bull TV app for free and don't miss any of our films, shows, and live events. Get it now. Need those apps on your smartphone. That way you're in touch with everything that's going on at your fingertips. Mm. Love the Red Bull TV app. Same, Mark Gromies are addicted. Red Bull TV. We love it. RG3 up. This is Robert Grillo the third. He's a four-time national champ. Yeah. Uh, surfed his first triple crown last year, Cops, which is uh, a big feat for anyone. Uh, you know, that's 
basically next best thing to a world title, isn't it? Even on par with a world title for for a triple crown. anyone from here. For sure. I mean, the bragging rights are incredible. Here we go. Sammy Gray in a deep one, threads it through the second section, and that's what we want to see. Now Sammy Gray is going to come up with a meaty number for that backdoor barrel. Well deserved for the young Kawaiian. Looking to pipeline lefts, dropping into this one. Max Beach has to stall, gets under the hood just for a sec, and completes his ride with a nice grab rail cutback. Oh man, that was crazy. Sammy Gray this morning could not make one. Got through on a couple of closeouts. That is the wave he's been hunting out all morning long. What a drainer. I can't wait to see that on the replay. More sets starting to roll through here at Pipeline. Really tricky conditions. It's, it's huge. It's big out there. We've seen a lot of low scoring heats despite the apparent quality of the surf, Kaipo. It's, it's just so hard. It's really standing up on the first reef. Super wedgy, super thick. And finding a nice deep section is actually a massive challenge out here this morning. 100% right, Vaughn. And what, what, what a lot of people don't see as well is how shallow this wave is. Just a couple of feet of water separate you from the lava reef below. And that lava reef is full of holes and crags and anvils and all kinds of stuff with an odd tube worm out there. Yeah. But I was uh, given good advice. Don't go swimming at Pipeline on a flat day. It'll spook you heavily for you know, when you're uh, paddling around on a bigger day. You just do not want to know what the bottom looks like. Well, you can see all the boils and stuff out there and signifies signifying the shallow water. We got a number in for Sammy Gray, and it's a good score. A 7.33 for the teenager. That's what he wanted to do, Vaughn, and he did it. Yeah, and he did it in real style. Uh, I think we'll get a replay up in just a moment as we look to the lineup here. Here we go. This is RG3 again. Robert Grillo has to do a little dance to stall. Just a little pit ride. But that is going to better his situation out here. Just a 1.41, and he'll go into second place. It'll be a little bit of a battle for second place at this point because Sammy Gray dropping a good score of a 7.33. And those have been rare this morning, Vaughn, as you were talking about the conditions and how difficult it is out there and scary at the same time. For Here's sure, Sam. here it is. Look at this late drop, critical up under the guillotine, flying at high speed, deep fast barrel and goes for the big hack on the end doesn't make it but all the work was done this is an unreal takeoff Kaipo look how late he gets the airdrop engages the fins here gets down low pushes up under the curtain and then he just races at high speed the judges love it when a wave spits while he's still in there if you come out after that spit you're definitely going to start pushing into that good to excellent ride range and the hack just losing the fins there but looks like he's on a pretty small board out here for today as well yeah and that's another thing that we've seen development of equipment out here at pipeline uh you know really playing with where the thickness and the taper is in surfboards so putting a lot a lot more volume in a shorter package seems to be the trend lately over the last few years for pipe boards. For sure, yeah, that's been a, a huge development. It used to be, you know, seven, nearing eight foot, really narrow, long, thin, pinned out. Rhino chases nearly back I mean, in the day. The pipe gun was such a specialist surfboard. Uh, now we're almost seeing, you know, really wide noses, heavier boards. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a product of, you know, the late 80s, early 90s, and your 6870 oh, were kind of like almost your normal mid range boards and 7.6s, mm. 7.8s seven seven all the time. Well, I remember seeing a final of uh, that Robbie Page won. I think it was a, a Pipe Masters. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't Pagey. a huge surf, but he was riding a board that you could ride out here on a second reef roll in day. And uh, I think that was part of his strategy. He was watching guys take out smaller boards and he was going, I'm just going to get the bigger waves from a bit further out. And he managed to take the win. So. Yeah, you don't really see a whole lot of uh, longer boards out here. A couple of the old, uh, older pipe specialists. Some of the older guys, the, and a lot of the guys that would, on a day where second reef would be breaking, there's a different crew there that ride bigger boards, sit on that second reef, mm. and they get those roll-ins out there, oh. and then they're well prepared for the, the 
deadly killer. It has that beautiful first reef section. Anticipation when you see someone rolling That's in. That's crazy. On those. Right? You just the whole beach stops. Everyone watches it because they can. They can just be cruising on that wave for a good 30 seconds before they even hit first wave. And you know something's going to happen on yeah. the inside, and it is going to be heavy. <laughs> Remember seeing Jack Robinson do one after the comp a few years ago. It was so incredible, mate. And he, he got barreled pretty much from off the wall across the entire front of the reef there through the pipeline. That was amazing. Yeah, speaking of that, I'm glad that we're going to see later in the competition, when we get to the round number four, the round of 64, we'll see Jack Robinson out here. And um, that's going to be really exciting. He's our defending champ, and he's a new addition. He's going to be a rookie on the 2020 Championship Tour. So it's been a while coming. He was a, a huge star, or you know, people had seen him coming from a long way off in Australia. Well, I think he was just a little bowl cut whippersnapper from the West. Yeah, he was tiny, mate, and he was just surfing so incredibly. Everyone knew he had an, you know, just incredible sense for the barrel even way back then. And he was really good in heavy water. He came over here and surfed the Pro Junior at Sunset when he was developing still, and I think he was maybe 16 years old. He won a comp And he at won Sunset, it, right? yeah. and it was, and Vaughn, it was all of 12 foot, Hawaiian, no problem, borderline, closing out Sunset. Wow. And, and he was absolutely brilliant out there. And that's when Robbo came into my radar, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, this kid's, he's got something special. Well, when I was editing Surfing World magazine, we ran a shot of his head on the cover because it was just the quintessential grommet head. Yeah. A couple of freckles. Well, Aussie grommet head, too, with the ball cut, <laughs> yeah, that whole thing, right? Cut. I love it at home. The mullet is having a huge comeback. I love it. Hey, bring back mullets. The more mullets, the better. We appreciate every mullet out there. And I want the mullet to go international. I don't want it just to be an Australian thing. Yeah, I'm backing that. I, I think Billy like, Ray Cyrus would have had a killer mullet for he, years. You know what? Yeah, he had a hit this year, too. Little Nas X. <laughs> this is a hit right here for Max Beach. This is his fourth hit in this heat. Another wipeout. But he is hanging in tough. He's still in second place as we hit the five minute mark. So great effort for the young surfer from San Clemente taking his beatings, but still maintaining that advancing position. That could change right here. Let's see what happens. But Robert Grill makes the drop. And that was one of those waves. And it's easier because when, when I'm in the studio, I'm like the smartest surfer in the world when I'm sitting on the couch with the headset. But it seemed to me that was one of those waves for, for Robert Grillo. On the back end, he really needed to pull into it at an angle right from the takeoff. He dropped down to the bottom of the wave, and then that just exhausted all of his opportunities. Sammy Gray here, back door, pulls in late under the curtain. He's not going to find an exit on this one, but I like the bravado showed by Sammy Gray, our heat leader. May just ditch that 1.17 slightly that he has in his score line. And he'll take this one on the head. Mm. Leash test. Hectic. Yeah, J.O.B. <laughs> snapped his leash in his head. I think he had to swim about two and a half miles down the beach. The current was just insane. But, you know, we haven't seen a lot of backdoor today, Kaipo. The, the few waves that have come through have actually scored really well. But not a lot of guys going backdoor. And then the left is really difficult. It seems like guys aren't able to backdoor the peak. They seem to be right on it. And I heard Nathan Florence talking this morning about that, saying, you know, if, you, if you're not going to really get in behind it and backdoor it, then it's almost impossible to rinse the speed off. So you're going to find it really difficult to get in a pipeline barrel if you're not backdooring that peak. Uh, backdoor itself, if you get caught on the inside over there, well, that's a nightmare. But it does seem a little easier to get in behind that peaking section and you can get a bit more of a drainer and a bit more run. You don't have to get rid of that speed so quickly. Well, down to three minutes and a big set washing through all of our competitors. Situation remains the same. Our heat leader, Sammy Gray, looks like he's going to take the long way out. Remember, his last attempt was at back door, got washed in a little bit. Now he's probably heading out to the left, the channel at Pipeline. What's the deal? Does that rock still pop up out of the whitewash there from time to time if you uh, get caught on the inside of back door? Yeah, I mean, so there's that section right there that's eight, you know, between backdoor and off the wall, and it is extremely shallow over there. That's why it's called Ains, because it ain't backdoor, it, it ain't off the wall. It's where you don't want to be. And um, yeah, and then that, the little rock that we had in the foreground over there, I used to call that Harlow's Rock, because that was the name of the family that owned the house in front of that rock. But that goes all the way back to, again, the 80s, maybe the 70s. <laughs> 
there it is. There we go. And you can see also on the shoreline the sandstone. The sandstone is compressed sand, okay? And that stuff is razor sharp. Mm. So getting in and out of the water, too, um, has its hazard. Well, the worst thing about it, as we see uh, a late drop here, Maxi Beach stalling for some cover up time. Just again, you can see it. You take off, often you're caught in the lip. By the time your bottom turn, the barrel's already done its thing. Max is uh, at least staying busy in second position. Yeah, that sand stone. The worst thing about it is when you're coming in, you can't see it. Yeah. It's the same color as the sand. You just exactly. rip your knuckles off or you rip your knuckles your off. It can, it. you know, destroy your fins, destroy your board. Um, I'm always a big fan of sitting on the beach at sunset and watching everyone get flogged on it. <laughs> that for sure. <laughs> and also, um, you know, sacrifice the board, not the body. I will throw my board down on the reef anytime before I put my body on it. I know guys who are the complete I know. I, I watch it. I see it all the time. Guys who protect their boards with their body. But I'm just like, hey, I can, ding, I can do ding repair. I can get a new board. Well, I'm pretty sure, like, you know, someone like Michael Ho, for example, will always roll on the rocks before he puts a board there. Because he, 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 loves he loves his boards, boards yeah. man. <laughs> You're right on Mason's that probably no different. <laughs> I mean, he always throws his body on rocks, though. Uh, Mason costs a lot of boards for his shaper map by all this, I'm telling you right now. Down to 35 seconds. This is the last chance here. RG3, Robert Grillo, needs a 1.08, and he's not going to get it. What he is going to get is a giant donut and a trip to the bottom. Hopefully he's not bouncing. We're going to watch for the head to pop back up here. And there he goes. And he's going to take another one on the head. Max Beach, this kid has fought for it for his second place. He has taken a lot of wipeouts out here, paid his dues, but he's going to come out and advance it to round number three. Josh Chester right here. He's a 1.84 on this one. He could be the spoiler. End of the heat, though. I don't know if the turns are going to get him that 1.84 he needs. What do you think, Vaughn? I can't see it happening. I, th I think you're right. My view of that heat was that Max Beach was fighting for it. He, he took off on a lot of waves. He was trying to find the barrels. He did some really good late drops, but he was in and around heavy water the whole time. If he wasn't getting the tube, he was looking for it. So over a couple of little turns, I mean, it's hard to say, really, but... Hey, I'm going to take my hat off to that young man on the screen, Max Beach. He's going to move on into round three here at the Volcom Pipe Pro, as well as Sammy Gray. Let's take a look at the heat recap, Vaughn. Talk us through this. Oh, good start here, Sammy Gray. Just a big late drop. Just looking for a few makes. He surfed the heat in round one. He got no scores at all based on making it. But this was the wave of the heat. Big late drop in under the curtain. Flies out with the spit. And that is just pure critical epic tube riding from Sammy Gray. So he's starting to find rhythm now. Always good to get those dodgy heats out of the way, especially if you can get through Kaipo. But this guy, he just stayed in it, didn't he? Stayed busy, late drops, looking for tubes, cover up there. And uh, Maxi Beach doing enough to get through this one. And he will be joined by Sammy Gray. Sammy served two heats today. He's in one, both of his heats. So he's gonna be looking good and roll into day number two of competition when we get there here at the 2020 Volcom Pipe Pro. That's 7.33 at back door for Sammy Gray. Well done. New heat in the water. Heat number four, round number two. Riley Morgan, Kosuke Okumura, Kyle Tesser, and the young. 14-year-old Sheon Crawford out there. 14? Yeah. Man! Yeah. What? Yeah, that's how they grow them here. Sheon Crawford, <laughs> just 14 years old. Uh, Kyle Tester is out there. He's 17. Um, Koske is uh, 19 years old. So again, a bunch of teenagers out there as we get into round one and round two of competition. I love it. That's awesome, man. There's actually like another 5,000 event on in Morocco, right? Yeah. Um, so Anchor point. That's been separated. Like a few names that we have seen in the Vulcan Pipe Pro have actually opted to go over there. And I know that there's a few point surfers from home who are thinking, well, what are my chances here? I think I'm probably going to back myself in points more or surf them more. I might go over there. But it's opened up the field a bit this year, mate. We're it seeing has. new names. We're seeing some younger surfers. And uh, it's awesome to see, but I don't know, man. Like, for personally, 
I think that every single world champ or anyone who knows anything about, you know, making a dent in surfing knows you've got to be good at pipeline. And you don't get to surf this way with only a few guys out. So this is a great conversation, Vaughn, that you're opening up. In our draw, I think we only have three, no, we have six 2020 Championship Tour competitors. Only six. Mm. Now, I'm not a surf coach, but I will do a little bit of surf coaching. If you're on the Championship <laughs> Tour, you should surf this event because world titles are won here and your requalification counts when we look to the Pipe Masters here at the last event on the Championship Tour. So I'm actually very surprised this year with that few Championship Tour cam campaigners making a showing here. I think that's gonna, people can clue in and, and change that in the future because the more time you can spend out here, the better. 100%. I mean, I'm, no, I'm nobody when it comes to, you know, coaching. I've got a moustache, I look like a tennis coach, maybe. <laughs> but it just baffles me that, you know, you could surf pipeline with three guys out, really get to know the wave on your own terms. I mean, you're gonna be surfing with fantastic surfers as well, guys who know the break. Why wouldn't you get the time in? Yeah, I mean, I. so I know you guys are listening out there and I know you're like, yeah, okay, whatever, but <laughs> it's real. <laughs> you guys come over here, put your time in pipeline. It could be a world title. It could be your requalification to stay on that dream tour. Once you had a taste of that dream tour, you don't want to be left out. Trust me. Plus, just surfing out here with just only three guys is incredible. I was waiting, you see, I wanted to get that Drew tune to pop back up. Thank you. We have a wonderful truck over here, by the way. Day one production is off the scale. Great job, you guys. Yeah, that was on command. Animation on command. Look at these waves. Kaipo, that is thick, heavy, breathing pipeline. No takers. I've seen this all morning. You know, one guy, getting the best of the heat and three guys battling out with low scores. It's really hard. And one of the reasons is that this swell is thick and it's missing all the back reefs and standing up tall, wedging heavily. It's all airdrops this morning. Down to 20 minutes and energy in the Pacific continues to show itself on gleaming bonsai pipeline you can see the positioning of the surfers in this wide shot only one wave ridden as of yet we start with 25 minutes on the clock we're down to 19 minutes and 40 seconds we also have an open priority so once every surfer catches a wave then we're going to get in line with the priority but right now red blue and green all open priority priority has not been established for any of those surfers so their possession of the wave is going to be deemed by their positioning and deep is right here, Riley Morgan. And he just goes for the sacrificial one on that one. Jeez, that's a good angle, isn't it? You can <laughs> see how fast the wave went from being a line of swell to just a heaving giant. Here's Shion, Shion Crawford, the young 14 year old in and out of a barrel. Nice. Well done, Xi'an. So we're going to see the first meaningful score coming in for Xi'an Crawford. Born and bred here in Haleiwa. Dad runs uh, the Surf and Sea Surf Shop right on the other side of the Anahulu Bridge as you come over from Haleiwa onto the Seven Mile Miracle. And we'll be waiting for that score for Xi'an Crawford. A lot of guys starting to uh, get back into the gas scene. Oh, wow, that was done extremely well. Critical. One leg. leg. That was a one legger for Kyle Tester. So, another great, great wave for the surfer from New Jersey. So, we're waiting for two scores. We need one for White Kyle Tester. Oh, the score is in for Xi'an Crawford, a 2.83 for the backhand barrel. Waiting for last score for White. 18 minutes counting down. Yeah, Kyle Tester from New Jersey, as you say. Uh, looks like he's been getting some good waves at home over the break. Freezing cold, of course. So uh, nice to lose all the rubber and, and get over here to Pipeline. 
Surfed in a few Kiwis. I don't know if he's actually had a full-blown dig at the QS before. He, his best ranking was 450. And nice Vine, little replay there. Vaughn, as we look at that replay of, of Sheehan Crawford and now Kyle Tessie, you're saying the gap's coming back into coming back into play? That's right. It is, and it's a smart thing. And Sheehan at 14 years old, I'm going to get an inside story on that one. His mom, Kyle, says it's mandatory if he's surfing pipeline. So mom said, hey, you better wear your helmet, get used to wearing a helmet out here, kid. <laughs> and I agree with mom. So. So we're just still waiting for one more score to really set our scale. We know that backhand barrel for Sheon Crawford and the Green Jersey was a 2.83. Kyle Tester got a little bit deeper, spent a little more time behind the curtain, and he should be getting a bigger number. Everything about his way was <laughs> sketchy as, wasn't it? He came down, it was a super late drop. We'll have a look at that in just a moment, but 16 and a half minutes remaining. There it is, a 5.83. Kyle Tester goes to the lead. Sheon Crawford in second, 16 minutes and 40 seconds coming down. Let's take a look at that 5.83 on the replay and break this down. We're going to do it in slow motion, Vaughn. Mm, look at it. Light drop. He's already got a chandelier heading down, so he buries. There's a warble on the face, loses the fins, but stays super low. So he's right in the base of it. He's not getting too high, which is a good thing when it's wobbly. But here, I think he loses his leg, does he? Oh, only just. Wasn't quite the uh, Michelle Berez back leg stall that we've seen uh, employed over the last few years. But uh, Kyle getting a score on the board here, a meaningful score of 5.83. This morning has seen guys get through heats. Uh, but a critical that, right, start to finish. That was, that was great. And you know what? You know what was great? It was great to see a young Californian in the last heat take some beatings, take a lick in and keep on kicking into the round number three. Thank you for joining us in the studio, Max yeah, Beach. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, I loved it. I mean, yeah, you, I was... look at you know what's the deal? You know what you showed me, Max? You wanted it in that heat. Yeah, I definitely want it out here. I've been surfing here a lot like the past, ever since I've been here. I've been here for about two weeks now. I've been staying at Kai Borg's house and the Whoa. McNamara's house. And I'm oh, so you're staying thankful. with the heavies, yeah. huh? <laughs> So getting, thankful get, that they're letting me stay. Yeah, you're getting escorted out there by yeah. some of the, the, the real crew here. Yeah. But you, yeah. you're no you're no stranger to, to surfing. Dad's a great surfer. Yeah. Dad worked in the surf industry for a long yeah, time. You, I mean, you had to. Uh -huh. you, you were born to do this. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I, I remember it's kind of like a similar day minus the backwash, the day that Mick Fanning won the world title that one year. I remember that. And it was like just kind of feathering second reef. And I have like deja vu standing over there at the Volcom house, it looks like pretty similar but there's a little more backwash today and you saw me just getting smoked and now <laughs> but now you have an how big is this opportunity for you to surf pipeline yeah with three other guys it's huge and it's a 5,000 too I wasn't even I didn't think I was gonna get into the contest last year my goal was to make it into the contest and then when they upgraded to a 5,000 I was like oh now I'm really not gonna get in and then I don't know I think they have thanks to like the WSL and all the sponsors they have so many more we have, spots. We have more spots. We're starting at 144. And the other thing is, Vaughn was touching on it earlier uh, in this heat, um, is that we have another 5,000 happening in, in the in the European region, in Morocco. Mm, at the so, same time. At the same time. So we're kind of splitting, you know, splitting the field, which, hey, we're fine. It's, it's, it's great because we get to see the new young bloods come up. You know, you're just 17 years old. Uh, I just turned 18. Just actually. turned 18. Yeah. All right. Maxi, uh, give us a rundown of what it's like out there because um, we saw, uh, you know, lots of power in the takeoffs, yeah. but then trying to find the barrel after that. Yeah, it's this firing. Like, actually, one problem, I, it's actually sometimes better when you're sitting a little deeper, and I was sitting a little further on the shoulder. There was one kid, I, I think he had first priority the whole heat, and twice I was paddling deeper than him, but he was, like, kind of making a paddle, so then I kind of went on the other side of him just so he could, watch I could him. see if he went or not. And right. then he, but then I was kind of taking off on the apex rather than like under mm. and then I was just getting smoked. When you take a few beatings out there, does it does it gas you out? Or? Yeah, it definitely like takes a lot of your energy, but I don't know, like if you're hungry enough, you'll just keep putting your head down and just keep getting out there. <laughs> this is like 90% froth in there. Yeah, that? yeah. Is like, this a wave you love? Yeah, this is my favorite wave. I think like more than ever, there's so many young guys that are like, it's their favorite wave. Like, I don't know if that, it's always been like that or I heard you guys talking earlier, like, John John kind of set the way. He was like, he was like, I don't even know, five years old or whatever. I don't know how old he was, but he was, like, doing it from such a young age. Now, like, 
there's more and more people kind of following in those footsteps of John John. I, I was over in the Volcom house before, there was a heap of bro. Oh, if we got an action oh, here. That was sick. So that was Kyle Tester again, spending a lot of time in the barrel, this time back door. That was sick. And, and you know Kyle. Uh, yeah, he, my dad's from New Jersey as well, actually. And I don't know, he, he rides for like Heritage Surf Shop, and my dad's with the friends with those guys over there, so. You got the Jersey connection. Yeah. You got a, you got a big world, huh, Max yeah, Beach? You, have, really you got the lucky. Jersey connection, you live in San Clemente, you have the Hawaiian connection that you're staying with Borg and getting some, uh, probably hopefully some tips from Liam. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Liam and Makai and Landon, they were all kind of like, we were all staying at their house during the sunset contest and they were all like helping us and just giving us pointers out there. Well, big future. Thank you for thank joining you, us, Max. Thank you. And we're gonna Thanks see you around number three, my man. Yeah, thank you. Good I'm job. So Love it. Max Beach, we're gonna see more of him as well as Sammy Gray advancing out of that heat three in this second round. Heat number four. Right now, it's Kyle Tester making a statement. Let's take a look at the replay from high up above oh, here. Big waves coming through in this set. Nearly going over the handlebars here. <laughs> wow, so this is uh, Riley. Just a huge wave. Look how tall this thing is, right up the top. Gets the airdrop there, nearly buries the nose. Comes around the section. Look at the board moving there, Kaipo. And just couldn't get the proper projection out of that bottom turn. But this right here, Kyle Tester in the white jersey, threads a backdoor barrel, Vaughn. 6.1 is his reward for that, and he's out in a strong lead. Yeah, backdoor seems to be giving these guys better scoring opportunities at the moment. Kyle gets a little choppy there as he uh, flies down into that shallow section. But a good left, a good right here from Kyle. He's put himself in a, a really strong position, 10 minutes 40 remaining. Yeah, I was sitting over in the uh, Volcom house before. There were so many kids sitting on the couch, you know, watching the action. Uh, yelling, screaming, sledging occasionally, having a laugh, but, you know, you can't take your eyes off the wave. And it's funny, I just, I reckon that when you've got a big group of kids around, uh, you always hear the momentum generation talk about it when they were young guys. You know, you just egg each other on. You throw yourself into positions that you might not normally do it if you've got a peer group around that you're trying to impress. So, you know, peer, peer pressure, it's not always the greatest thing, but sometimes it'll work for you as well. And it's, it's the craziest thing about this stretch of beach from basically log cabins all the way up to Rocky Point. Every session, and especially this section right here at, at Pipeline, every session, all eyes are on you. Mm. You're not like having hidden sessions. People are watching you, so you're scrutinized on your performances. You're scrutinized on, on the maneuvers you do or the barrels you make or the waves that you, you, you paddle into or the waves that you don't paddle into. People are watching you. 100%. And, and that's... it's your peers, so that's the gnarly <laughs> thing. Like it's. It's the guys you look up to, it's your peers, it's the other people you want to impress. It really is an amphitheater. Yeah, you're so right, man. I mean, imagine coming in, it's like we have a ride here. Kosuke Okumura. Kosuke, one of the, uh, the Japanese typhoon, is that what we're calling it? There's a huge movement coming out of Japan at the moment. So many you know, superstars in the making. A couple, well, they had the first ever WSL world champ. Um, the junior world champion in the women's is uh, Amuro Suzuki. Suzuki, and she's uh, and she's going to be on tour. Surfer, yep, on tour now. So we got news earlier that um, Carissa Moore is going to take a year off. She's going to take 2020 off yeah. for the championship tour, and that opened up the door for the first Japanese women's surfer on the championship tour 2020. When we get that kicked off, we're going to see Amuro Suzuki. Small break coming your way. But don't worry, we're going to be back with more action from Pipeline here at the Volcom Pipe Pro.
This is a public service announcement from the Volcom Houses. Hey, all you cigarette smokers out there. These aren't the kind of butts I like to see at Pipeline. Make sure you pick up your trash, huh? <laughs> <laughs> You're right, Volcom Houses. Those are not the kind of butts we like to see at Pipeline. Pick up your trash. Keep Malama, Aina, you know what I mean? Take care of the land. Malama Ehukai, our beach right here. And a brutal beating and, you know, sea trees. We're trying to wipe out our carbon footprints for every massive wipeout right there. We're going to plant a tree. Oh, that's a worthy tree going in the ground right there. That was hectic. Busted stick! Another equipment casualty here at the bonsai. Couple of big wipeouts. I mean, it's the ultimate nightmare scenario, isn't it? Paddling, paddling, second guessing, and then being stuck in that lip, no board under your feet. Nothing but a couple of inches of water above her. That white ball was radical, though, because the worst thing that could happen is you land on your board on the bottom. So kicks his board away here, but that's the danger factor right there. That was inches. You hit your board on the way down there, you get the double whammy and that could be a serious injury. Well, that will put your body in positions that you've never even dreamed of being in. Not good ones either, <laughs> I've got to say. Yeah, that was uh, frightening how close he came to uh, landing. I mean, the board flips over, you hit the fins, that's one thing. But hyper-extending your limbs... Off a board, yeah. Off your board or into the bottom. We saw uh, B. Derby years ago in the pipe master actually split his pelvis in yeah, half. Yeah, that was a radical one. That and, was uh, hectic. And here we go. You can, and you, we can also see our first responders, our city and county lifeguards, as well as Hawaiian Water Patrol, well prepared and continuing to evolve the safety here at Pipeline. The first response now to a wipeout at Pipeline or any kind of si serious injury has been faster than ever. So the systems are in place for as much as we can do to control for safety, you know? So I think it's one of the most amazing things about events uh, here at Pipeline, also at, at Chopu. You see guys just completely on it. The yeah. moment something's going down, they are there and it's happening. And it's just uh, incredible to watch. So taking a look at the standings right now, we got Kyle Tester with a couple of good scores, a 5.83 and a 6.1. He split that difference with a pipeline wave and a backdoor wave. He does a strong lead. Second place and hanging on is the 14-year-old from the North Shore, Shion Crawford. We see uh, Kosuke Okobora break a board. He's doing the lap. You can see him in the foreground, the whitewater paddling back out to pipeline with four minutes remaining. And Riley Morgan, he's been paying some dues too. Hasn't gotten over a one point, score, uh, just barely over a one point score of 1.03, but really needs to get a meaningful score if he wants to advance into the next round. Mm. Time becoming a problem for these guys, although one wave will do it to get into second. What we've seen this morning, Kaipo, is incredible power, haven't we? The, the pipeline, the, the first reef has just been brutal. It has really been standing up and just detonating and it's been a tricky one it's we've seen the best in the world the best ever at pipeline in fact not get through heats this morning jamie o'brien derek ho probably the two biggest names out of the draw now but it was just one of those mornings there were waves that looked as perfect as you can ever imagine out here and then there was you know a lot that weren't offering much at all yeah it's, it's challenging challenging wave as we take a look at Okamura on his paddle back out and at this spot Abunai it's dangerous 
I'm telling you right now, probably the world's most dangerous wave as we see our heat leader, Kyle Tesla, not just having fun, pull a stall on the shoulder there. He's comfortably in first place. Looks like he's having a great heat. He's looks, I just see from the paddling of this young man that he's very well composed as well. Just 17 years old, but looking all calm and in control. And the deeper you get into the draw here at Vulcan Pipe Pro, the more cred gets attached to your name. Solly Bailey, uh, he was a guy who came over here, surfed this event with the pure intention to get his game at Pipeline rock solid. Two years in a row, he was probably the standout surfer. One year he was, uh, I think, Kelly won the comp, but yeah. it was all time from start to finish. And Solly made the semis, I think, in that event and made a huge name for himself the next year he comes along and wins it. Yeah, that's right. Solly Bailey taking out the win here in 2017. Going into that final, we pegged him as the underdog, but he showed us wrong there. And now you just watch Soli and his and his advancement, you know, got onto the championship tour. Unfortunately, he's gonna spend the year back on the qualifying series, but he has the talent to be on that championship tour again in 2021. Yeah, and it's a, I saw his name in the draw. There's no way he's heading over to Morocco, mate. He came back to Pipeline. This is a wave he loves. He loves big, heavy water. He's a big, heavy dude. And um, it's, you know, these guys are in this position, though. They're in the same position. They're young, they're hungry. They can make a name for themselves just by taking it heat by heat and getting through. And I really like what I'm seeing here from Kyle at the moment. And I'm liking what I'm seeing on the screen right here when I look at Sheon Crawford. I like to see more surfers getting used to and wearing helmets, especially in shallow waves like Tahiti and at Pipeline. There's no reason not to. I, I think once the stigma kind of gets away from it, and, and guys that have made it look brilliant is someone like Owen Wright, makes it look brilliant wearing a helmet. Juan, Juan Tahiti last year, 2019, in brilliant fashion and showed like, you know what, why not be safe? If all of these elements that you can't control why wouldn't you control that to bring oh, the man. most safety? If it's yourself? good enough for Tom Carroll, it's good enough for everyone. That's right. Full stop. Good enough for Liam McNamara, good enough for me. <laughs> exactly, man. Guy had like the face shield and stuff back on the day. Flip that thing down, go for a full Darth Vader on you. Oh, good enough for Barton Lynch, good enough for me. There you go. We can keep on going, you guys. Jeremy Flores. Good enough for Jeremy, good enough for me. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to argue. You've got five of the greatest surfs of all time wearing gaffs out here. It's, yeah. it's, it's pretty good indication that it's not a bad thing for you, sir. Ten seconds to go. One more chance for Sheon Crawford. He's got priority. This is just for the love, because Sheon is going to be moving on into round number three here at the Volca Pipe Pro, along with Kyle Tester. We're going to lose Kosuke Okamura and Riley Morgan, but I'm sure they learned a lot in their 25 minutes here at the Volca Pipe Pro. Thank you for joining me, Vaughn. It's always a pleasure. We're going to gang up again late back in the booth later on today here at the Volcom Pipe Pro as we take a look at our recap for heat number four, round number two, Sheon Crawford started with a backhand barrel and made the most of it. So this 2.83 was a nice start for Sheon Crawford. That was his highest single scoring wave. Then it was Kyle Tester coming through. Kyle has to get a little one-leggy on the end of this one. Technical backhand riding, controls the fin drift, loses a foot, gets it back on. And Kyle thought, you know what? I'm going to mix it up. This time, I'm going to find a backdoor wave. Backdoor barrel 6.1 for this one for Kyle Tester. And another just threading through the needle there. Manages some of the backwash. And he's on to round number three here at the Vocal Pipe Pro. And here's our results, 11.93 won the higher heat total so far today for Kyle Tester. Nice showing along with the North Shore native, Sheon Crawford into round number three. And as we move on to more stuff, we got a great baritone voice coming at you. Thank you, Sal. Thank you for joining me. I want you to take it over right now, my man. I'm gonna hit it in that baritone that you just told me I had that I didn't know I had. Kaipo Guerrero, absolute legend. If you ever are on the west side of Oahu and you're like, I need some guidance, look up uh, the legendary Kaipo Guerrero. As we enter into Heat 5 with uh, Cristobal De Cole, Big Mikey Red, Michael O'Shaughnessy, Remy Jaburi, 
And the guy with the best name in professional surfing right now can go nowhere but up just with a name like that. The Wolf, Wolf Wertheimer. And right off the bat, here is Cristobal Del Sol and a nice little pipeline hand dragger. And when I say little, I, uh, that's just for effect. These waves are not little. Sal Masakella here with you, joined by um, Mr. Dave Wassel, as we see turning and burning right now to go. Remy Jaburi. Get you some Remy. Nice little parking ride. You see all that water that's still moving in and out there, uh, dancing through pipeline. Great point. You can actually see two waves trying to ride up on the other wave. We, earlier today, we got to interview Nathan Florence, and he's talking about how the wave really had a good hold of the reef. And that's this long interval west swell we're seeing here. Uh, to me, it looks like at least 15 second interval, and it's really feeling the bottom, but really feeling the vibe. Cristobal de Cole getting a great opening wave. How about uh, Cristobal de Cole? I mean, this, this guy is just a, a Peruvian charger. We'll talk more about him as we see the Wolf Wertheimer trying to get around that section. Young man who is not afraid to charge out here uh, at Pipeline and also will will chuck big rotational spins if you give him the opportunity, not on a day like today. I wouldn't even put it past him. Really? Honestly, yeah. Cristobal de Cole coming from Peru definitely feels way too comfortable here at Pipeline. Anywhere on the North Shore, a, a competitor and, and a gentleman. Absolutely. How about that uh, that right of the year nomination he had last year at Puerto Escondido, that, that, that right where the thing pre-spits as he's pulling into it and just disappears on his back and knifes this thing. He's just, he's one of those people who's just super comfortable to, to go. There, you're, there are a lot of players from Team Inca. We're going to throw that out there to our, our Peruvian. Team Inca, I love it. Cutting his teeth at some of the better point breaks, which actually get these exact same swells. Right. But uh, right here on his back end, we're talking about that park and ride. That was that was pretty well done. The wave didn't cooperate fully. Uh, you know, the young early, wolf. earlier in the heat, I, I heard uh, the, the last commentators, not going to throw out their names, but they were just saying. <laughs> Do you not oh, want to give them credit? Oh, well, they're saying, hey, guys, guys aren't getting barreled. But you know what? It's not the wave's fault. The waves are still completely piping out there mm. right now. I just saw a few kids who might have been out there for the first time. Cristobal de Colt, definitely not his first time. Right. Opening ride, great score. And one of the things when you look at the scoreline um, today, the variance in the scoreline, some people who, who, who maybe just look at scores and didn't get to watch heats be like, oh, it, it wasn't that, maybe it wasn't that good out there today or something. But, but pipeline is hard. And that's what I love about this event. When you have 144 um, surfers that get an opportunity to, to prove their worth, some of whom are testing their metal, it's right off the bat, like they're surfing and then there's this way. Correct, correct. And I'm actually a bit surprised by the judges calling some of these waves. I mean, throw yourself in Nathan Florence's heat. You got any one of those waves? Were they sixes? I thought they were, yeah, they would be eights. Right. But being uh, the first heat of the day, I understand, but there's definitely some incredible waves coming in. And there have been great waves, and then it makes you think like over the, the, the course of the season, which has been stellar, the opportunities for what the waves still can do you think about Kelly Slater's room to improve? Think God. about Kelly Slater's uh, ten during the Pipe Masters, and if you got one of those crazy six-section runners uh, taking you all the way back to town, maybe they're they're still leaving uh, some room. There he is, the Wolf. What it? What it? You can't go anywhere but up if you, you with a name like Wolf Wertheimer. I'm just like I'm sponsoring you for the name. Oh, and also you can serve. That that is pretty stellar. I, I got to give it to the parents, mom and dad. Good job with that one. The Wolf. Also in this heat, uh, in blue. Mike that, O'Shaughnessy. I mean, the ambassador, right? Like just pure aloha guy who just loves big waves. You ask him where his place in the lineup is, and he will tell you in the tube. Like that's my place in the lineup. Speaking of uh, looking for a place in the tube, Cristobal that Cole going for the two for one gets clipped on that second section as he looked for the door. Up. 
Opportunities are abundant. We've seen some heavy wipeouts today, of, um, and in this whole event being super sustainable on so many different levels, no plastics, et cetera, but there's also to offset carbon footprint for the heavy wipe, wipeouts, we have our sea trees. These, Very these, cool. The mangrove trees that are being planted for each heavy wipeout as just another cool way for offsetting uh, the carbon footprint of this event. And I don't know how many, there's a lot of trees that have been planted, that have already been earmarked for planting today. So have you guys been talking about that? Did I miss that earlier? Has that been brought up? The actual wipeout? Yeah. Those horrific wipeouts. Trees are actually being planted. And you know what? Everybody's talking about how it's going to give back oxygen to the environment. Mm. I'm thinking, how good is that going to be at actually holding the, the beach from the eroding? Right. Brilliance. Absolute brilliance. Um, and some of the, the many ways in which the Vulcan Pi Pro is really unique um, in, in really doing everything it, it, it can to be as carbon neutral as possible. No plastics. There he is. Big. Red, Michael O'Shaughnessy from Kalapana. I mean, in one of the nicest human beings that you're gonna, he's just, just this big intimidating looking guy, but he just breathes aloha. That man right there is as good as they get. You can say it's because he was born with it. I'd say it's because he was born in Kalapana. That young man comes from a very rough piece of coastline on the southeast side of Hawaii Island, but that guy, he's got the biggest heart. The one thing I am jealous about him, he has the longest arms too. That guy gets into some great waves. Yeah, I believe last year he was injured, right? Yes, he had a shoulder injury. Yeah. But, you know, a few years prior to that, he actually won Wave of the Winter mm. on a giant beast of a wave at Off the Wall. Mikey O'Shaughnessy is not scared. No. He's one of those people that, for me, I just want, I want to see the leaders. Because he's he's not the he's not a small dude. There's girth in those surfboards. For sure, for sure. Yeah, you and I could actually <laughs> borrow one or two of those boards. <laughs> Curious. We we're talking about those sea trees, Mister, the young man in red. Riley from that last heat. Mm -hmm. He sustained a pretty pretty serious injury. Uh, I saw the water patrol go and pick him up. I actually heard the ambulance come down. I don't. I'm not sure what went on. We don't want to speculate on the injury, but I, I, that was the one he went over the falls, and I think the, his, his board's not. I, I would not even know what happened, but it was a horrific wipeout, and I'm, somebody, will, somebody will definitely give us an update, but I'd say two trees need to be planted for that Yeah, guy. well, we, we wish him the best. Of course, uh, we, uh, we know that we have absolute world-class um, lifeguards and medical staff here, and they will attend to him, and we'll give you updates. Uh, the winner of our last heat, round four, creative performance, to say the least, Kyle Tester. Uh, and Mr. Tester joins us. Hello, sir. Hello. Nice how are to you? meet you. I'm good, man. Are you well? Yep, very well. You uh, you look like you, you pulled out everything you knew how to do uh, to make that heat. Uh, yeah, well, I'm from New Jersey, and it's pretty good there. I don't know. So I'm pretty used to getting bailed. And I'm just stoked that I got to get a few waves with no one else. Jersey. What part of Jersey? Cape May. As All far right. south as you can go. Shout, shout, shout out to Cape May, which I see those those edits, those wintertime edits there. It gets, it gets, it's cold, but thick and hollow. Oh, yeah. And, and real barrel festivals. Oh, yeah, for sure. What is that transition like, though, in all seriousness, though, from, from Jersey to the North Shore? Well, it's a lot different because you're normally in a lot of wetsuit. So it's a lot, like, tighter and hard to move, so... It's nice when you get into the chunks and everything, and you can just move around, and you're free. Nice. Okay, so my question for you. You are wearing a spring suit, long-arm spring suit. Is that because of the reef or because it's cold? So, flotation. <laughs> there you go. Flotation, nice. in case I hit the reef. And it, I do get cold out here a lot, especially at Pipe and Sunset. So I always wear a wetsuit out there. Double dip protection. I like it. Good job, kid. <laughs> yeah, for sure. What's your uh, relationship like um, with, with, with Pipeline and, and what's it like? I mean, we talk about each heat being an opportunity uh, to really like build. What's, what's been your relationship like in getting to know this wave? Well, I'm from New Jersey and I don't get a lot of waves out here, <laughs> but I do try and surf it as much as I can. And I have gotten a few waves and it's definitely a scary wave, but I'm starting to get a little more comfortable. Just glad I got to get some waves out there. Yeah. Well, you in the hot seat right now. You and Mike Gleason are out at Manasquan Inlet. Who's going to win? 
It's a heat. I don't know. <laughs> bad, bad, bad. Oh, that was the smartest bad. answer <laughs> ever. So I'm not gonna let you do that to me. No, I gotta go home. Another wave up north. So. I gotta go home after this. Yeah. All good. All good. <laughs> what, what, what were the conditions like? Um, they're kind of tricky actually. It looks pretty perfect, but it's very bumpy and kind of wonky. But it's still really, really good. Like, pretty much insane. <laughs> so, tell us about your affinity, what you know about Pipeline. On any given day, there's not that few surfers out. No. So with 25 minutes, how does that play into your mental game? Are you like, oh my gosh, look at all these pieces of candy, I gotta shove them all in my mouth, or are you just trying to get two scores? I just want to get the best waves possible. I just try and, I was trying to wait for the best waves that I could because I don't get that opportunity that often, so I'm just stoked. I tried, um, I don't know, just, uh, I don't know what to say. <laughs> you know what? We appreciate your honesty. Yeah. Thank and you. we'll give you another opportunity next time you're up here, uh, advancing your next heat, and then you can tell us what you wanted to say. All right. Thank but uh, shouts out to Kate May, and uh, keep doing it, man. Thank you. Nice to watch. Congratulations, young Thank man. You. That's well done. Thank you. I love it. All over the world. Just, just chargers that are just waiting for the opportunity to come here and, uh, and and make it happen. There's Tester. Tester just did a little tube steak boogie. Yeah, and then afterwards was just like, yeah. Give a little smash here at the end. Uh, judging from the speed of exit and casuality of that kick out, Cristobal De Cole just got a great barrel. Looked like Remy Jabori getting pinched there at the end will give you a all of what those waves were and that, that hand slap wasn't he wasn't high-fiving himself right there no definitely you <laughs> want to be Cristobal to Cole and come spinning out of the barrel raise your right hand take it over your back and give yourself a pat on the back right but definitely not what the young man in white Mr. Jabori just did uh, it, it's a terrible thing to make it all the way to the finish line and then trip oh look at that I mean that's just got to be the best feeling ever Maybe, especially being able to make it look that casual, uh, that, that setup, hand position, hand drag, all that, and then relaxing the body and being like, okay, I've done the work. You and I should bottle that and sell it. <laughs> I think we'd make a lot of money. <laughs> that feeling What right would we there. call it? <laughs> Joy. Joy. Hi. I'm Sal Masekela. For Joy. <laughs> you would be a great representative. Your voice, for sure. Joy. Are you looking for an exit in life that feels like the spit at Pipeline? Try new joy. I'm telling you. Yeah, there we go. Take a look at the joy from another angle here. What also, what, what I'm seeing is he actually took off behind the peak, did a great job of stalling, did a great job of getting a wave away from Mikey O'Shaughnessy, who definitely was looking at that wave as well, but just perfect positioning, parked it all the way from here to Peru all day long. Cristobal de Cole. And we had Jack Robinson in here earlier for a couple of heats, and he just kept hammering position, position, position is everything at Pipeline because you need to get the work done in the first two seconds. Where you're paddling from, what happens when you get to your feet because there's no room for adjustments or making up for that, that being wrong. Absolutely, and as we just had that young man from the last heat, he said there's a little bit of bump out there. It's a little bit of wonkiness. Without the trade wind cleaning it up, yes, you will get a little more bump. But speaking of parking it and being in the place. Come on! Oh! <laughs> Mikey Red says, give it to me! Shake them up, shake them up, shake them up, break them. Wow! That was nuts. Cristobal de Col. This, this is the first day of the event. And these are guys who actually know how to ride pipeline. No offense to the rest of you kids who are just taking the training wheels off, but these guys are driving that bus full speed down the freeway. Those are some big old pipe barrels. You cannot teach confidence Look at big Mikey Red just toe tapping into the situation. And then this setup. 
the absolute just commanding performance of Pipeline could only be matched by one Mr. Mikey O'Shaughnessy. That is just beautiful textbook tube riding. From Kalapana <laughs> to here. All right, you're a judge right now in that situation. He gets clipped at the very end um, as he was coming out. Oh. He, he just rolled sevens. I gave him a seven. <laughs> you know what? Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm not a judge. I'm not going there. Uh, I don't think they're going to deem that complete. Uh, it's at least a four. How about that? Okay. Okay. I like it. Okay, bad baby. How about that? I mean, yeah, right there, <laughs> right there at the end. Oh. That, that's a tough call. Yeah, I'd give it. I, well, you know what? The judges have been going quite low, so I think a four might be kind of generous. A 2.60 that very easily, with the, with a the clean exit, and stays on his feet. 5.6. Five, 5.6, six. Five, six, yeah, mid-6. Yeah. Yep. According to today's standards. What I, my, my biggest jealousy with, uh, with Big Mikey Red, as you see himself just going like, come on, you had that, Mikey, is um, that arm length, that wingspan, what it must feel like to be able to just like two stroke into waves as opposed to having to just like, ha! Ah! He's, he's, he's got pterodactyl arms with webs attached at the end. We'll see if Cristobal de Cole and Big Red can hang on. And more importantly, if, if uh, Mikey Red can get a rebate, something else like this that allows him to stand tall and get a big score. Heat five here in round two, day one of the Vulcan Pipe Pro. see yet another sea tree being painted excuse me being planted in the, the name of wipeouts here with uh, this heat flying by 454 to go love this perspective from the drone and there another tree uh, is planted negotiating the, the takeoff uh, at a place called pipeline not easy and I believe we may have a Busted stick for Mr. Jaburi. Ah. Busted stick! Shout out to the Hawaiian Water Patrol getting in there uh, to get these surfers out of harm's way in a timely fashion. There you go, young Paul Maiho Pili, and it uh, looks like Kyle Pao on the back being a grabber. Um, hopefully that's just a broken stick and nothing more serious than that. Um, you know, it's those guys have a thankless job, and, and we're just glad that they're here to help us and uh, get our guys back out into the lineup. Yep, as he jumps off, he's absolutely fine. Good going. Team effort right there. 
This is where uh, all that extra fitness discussion uh, comes into play. With three, three minutes and change, he's like, okay, can I get a board back out? Hopefully, be in between sets, get pulled in the rip, get time enough to perhaps make it out there and get one more. Possible. Possible. Uh, curious, I wonder if it was possible to get a two, which he needed, by pulling into that big old bomb wave. Mm. He actually straightened out. The safest place at Pipeline is actually inside the barrel, as being shown by Mr. Mikey O'Shaughnessy. Now, for people at home who are watching and being like, that sounds like a crazy statement. Why is it inside the barrel the safest, safest place? You're going to avoid a lot of other dangers that are involved with that falling lip. A lot of the time, the water that's caught inside the air pocket, it actually gets shot out the back, and so do you. So you're saying, why, if the house is on fire, why do you stay in the house? Right. Yeah, no, no, it's, look, right there, if he had gone straight, it's possible that the explosion might have shot him out, right out the, the back. back. Instead of having 10,000 gal gallons of water land on the back of your head, that is a very dangerous predicament. A weird mental instinct, though, that will tell you in those situations. Run. Run. Yeah. Where, absolutely. where you just should stay. Wow. Oh. Level of commitment right there. Wow. Started off the heat great. I believe that was Crystal Ball. Crystal yeah. Right? Started off the... That just goes to show you, she, Mother Pipeline, is always in control. Doesn't matter who you are, where you're from. I watched Jamie O'Brien go down in a blaze of glory first round. We, that Jamie doesn't happen. Jamie O'Brien and Derek Hall. I wasn't going to say that one, but yeah. I, I'm, and I'm still having trouble coming to grips with both those names being out. But it, it just goes to say, I, like as you were saying, like... Former pipe master. No matter how much you both of them. may appear to have mastery over this place on any given day, you will get humbled. Absolutely. You rocked up yesterday saying, I can't wait to get a big old slice of Aloha pie. I definitely <laughs> didn't want to say it, but I was thinking there's also humble pie to be served here as well. For sure, which is why I went to the gym instead. <laughs> <laughs> smart man, smart man. I said, let me, let me stop and think about this fresh off the plane from the mainland guy. Uh, even though there were a couple of tempting little two, three footers. I mean, even in that, on that last wipeout from, from Cristobal, like, no doubt he watched his surfboard go right by his face. I mean, that was, that was so close. And right behind that was the reef. Right. And so there's, there's lots of factors here. Um, the, the first thing we look at as lifeguards is just as soon as they pop up, they're going to let us know what their mind space is. You see another look there. Yeah. So much happening. Level of commitment. A solid five or six trees for sure uh, in this heat with just a few seconds to go. You see, you saw the young wolf trying to scratch in there as he was looking for a, a 3.06, but that is the horn. And that, I believe, will be a wrap on this heat. We'll wait for the scores to officially pop up, but it looks like uh, Cristobal Del Cole and Big Red Mikey O'Shaughnessy are going to move forward. Well, right off the bat, uh, Cristobal Del Cole said, I'm here to play. He did a great job, kicked off this heat right in the first seconds with a great ride and kept the momentum rolling all the way through the heat. One of the best ridden waves of the heat right there. Not the biggest wave, but just perfect positioning, parking in the pit. Just getting on a full on rhythm, the Peruvian sliding out of that wave with style and getting the score to go with. And uh, with equal confidence and truly charging, Big Red, Mikey O'Shaughnessy. You know, Mikey, he did really well. And one thing I can't stress enough to anybody listening, you only have to win your last heat, okay? Two people will make it on. So second place is fine. 
You only want to win that last heat. A great point. It's one of the few uh, few sports where second is actually first. There we go. Basically. Unlike um, Talladega Nights, where if you're not first, you're last. <laughs> good call, good call. My apologies to those at home. Uh, that was a low-hanging fruit, and I'm not afraid to pick them when, I, when they're there. <laughs> they taste good. I'm, I'm like, both Volcom Riders making it out of that heat together. That's the way it looked on paper. That's the way it played out in the heat. Very commanding regular footer, very commanding goofy footer. I love it. You're giving each other pounds and teamwork, team, team, teamwork makes dream work. Heat six, Guillermo Sat and Nicholas Vargas, both out of Chile. Miles Lane Toner, who I believe is from La Jolla, California, and Makana Pang from right here, son of the legendary shaper, Dennis Pang. And young Makana has been showing that genes do play a factor. Showing that that kid is by far my favorite junior guard. We had him in the North Shore Junior Guard program. He was the smallest kid, but the fastest kid. He's still not that big, but I tell you, that kid's heart is the size of Holly Eva. The way he's been pulling in here at Pipeline, I can't say it enough. This is, this is guaranteed a barrel bar mitzvah. You're, you're a man already, my friend. That is absolute fire in your soul. Oh, barrel bar mitzvah. This guy, I, it just, you're a bottomless well of joy, and I am lucky to sit next to you, sir. If you uh, scroll young Makana Pang's Instagram, you'll see what Dave Wassel is talking about. He, he charges, and his approach feels, it feels grown. Very well beyond his years. Feels grown. I mean, sometimes you see the young kids his age, they'll put themselves in the position, but it, it looks tentative still. It doesn't look like that when you watch him surf pipeline. The kid is, I, I shouldn't even say, that man is fearless. And how about if you're uh, Guillermo sit, sat, excuse me, and uh, Nicholas Vargas, and you're, you're two Chileans, right? You've grown, grown, you know each other from home and grown up together, and you suddenly you're like looking at each other like, hey, we're out at Pipeline together at the Volcom Pipe Pro. But make no qualms about it. Both those guys, I'm sure, surf some of the waves around Arica. Oh, yeah. And there are some incredibly tempting yet dangerous waves there as well. M not quite the pipeline, but close enough. Which is why they're here. Exactly, 100%. I'm actually surprised that they didn't make the move over to North Africa. Might have been, uh, maybe it's about the same, right? No, it's definitely closer to go to North Africa from South America for sure. Maybe they were just Flat like, to Heathrow and jump like, over. We, we'd rather get barreled than do turns. We'd rather not wear a wetsuit. There we go. There we go. We'd rather not wear a wetsuit and get really barreled. And besides, Ramsey Buchheim has got that one <laughs> sewn up. I'm just throwing it out there. You just, you just, are you giving Ramsam the win? Oh man, team, unless Team Wild Boar over there, I know Jerome Sayun, he's probably gonna step it up himself. So there's some, there's some gnarly guys out there for sure. These 25 minute heats have just been flying by as uh, we are in heat six. And um, how about conditions today? We've seen we we, we we've seen uh, the wind sort of come and go, do the weird, weird swirl. And you're like, oh, is that it for the day? And then it comes back and settles. Right. That's a great point. We had the actual ribs that were coming in. I looked at Dave Riddle up in Riddle's corner. I said, you guys see that? Oh, I'm getting a little worried. And so I called up to Holly Eva, talked to Sam Fisher, the senior guard over there. He said, it's not that bad, Wassel. It's only about five to 10 miles an hour, which indicates that it could not reach us, that that's what happened. It spun back around. We just got a little fluff and then back to beautiful pumping pipeline. I'm Thank, fingers are crossed all four days, straight run, just like this. I mean, that, that would be magical. We'll take, I mean, look at those conditions, just oil. And there you see the Hawaiian flag giving you a little bit of perspective, just lightly dancing. Hey, Hawaii, Ao blowing in the breeze. And uh, speaking of Hawaiian. Yeah, Captain Aloha himself, Mikey 
Red, the pride of Kalapana. Welcome, sir. Let's go. What's up, boys? <laughs> All right, Dave. Yeah, yes, up, brother. Yeah. All right. This time to be in here with you guys. This time last year when you were in here with us, uh, you were more like in the Aloha ambassador uh, position because of your shoulder injury. Exactly. Yeah, I sat the year out last year, 2019. Yeah. Shoulder injury did me good. So to be participating in this right now, I'm shaking. It's freaking firing. Yeah. All that, right. That level of appreciation for the thing that you love. What 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 what's it been like to be back in the mix and and to have everything working? Yeah, to be back in the mix, to be working, it's a it's an indescribable feeling. I'm so stoked. Um, my support team, everybody around me has been really. Um, really helpful and supportive so my corner has been feeling good um the year 2019 was was real slow for me i was on the bleachers but um a lot of my friends did really good and and um they were ripping and caught a lot of good waves so to sit outside from a perspective uh, a different perspective on the bleachers is is um cool feeling too but to be in the saddle out there is nothing compares to it <laughs> okay so friends like shade and picaro exactly right yeah that's my a whole boy, shade of yeah, of course so straight boy, from your own boy, time. right our, our gang you right. know we Jonah support Morgan. each other yeah. jonah arjuna my brother dallas ikaika kalama Saul ortiz um the list goes on and on on and on miles padaka there's a big group of, uh, of us and uh, of course shane dorian and tori meister there's a lot of us so uh, to be amongst the, you know, the best of the best is uh, a dream come true. I've been really working hard and putting in everything I have to, to, you know, be a professional out here and on the North Shore. Okay, so tell me this: you're out there. There's only a couple guys out. It's firing pipeline. All your sponsors are here watching, including the world. How do you contain yourself to perform at such a high level? Well, um, is it like I that every single myself, day for you, or is it different? It's definitely it not like that every <laughs> single day. Like um, when the waves are ten, yeah. to, you know, ten feet out of pipeline, and the world's here, there's a whole bunch more pressure. But once we get in the water, it calms down. You really find the collection and um, just, you know, get back out there and surf. Just kind of, you know, like riding a bike with momentum, it becomes easier. So just try to get a couple waves on the under the belt. Ideally, you know, like a perfect score is what we're looking for, but at the same time, you got to get out there and work and pull the trigger on some, you know, other ways, potential scores that can pull you through the heat. You and Cristobal de Cole look like you, you, you were having like, like healthy, fun sparring partners out there feeding off of the energy. Tell us about uh, that wave, though, uh, the, the pipeline wave where you got clipped at the very end and, and, <laughs> and, and had to switch to Mike Stewart on the way out. Yep, yep. You got to be agile. You got to be ready for anything. Um, I was definitely questionable if I was going to come out. So I was like, hang on as tight as I can. And um, kind of towards the end, I started getting lipped out of it. So I could see the lip um, well, trying, to, take off. trying to lip my head and uh, take my head off. But uh, held on and then got kind of bucked off of my feet onto my boogie board stance and proned out of it. Had to claim it for the boys. Okay, the only reason that I brought up whether you look, you were stressed or having fun is as you exit this wave, the look on your face is absolutely <laughs> priceless. <laughs> right there, I can tell there's no stress no on stress. you at all, and it's just plain fun. You keep doing that, we're going to see you all the way through into the final day. Amazing performance. Well done. Thank you. Stoked that to be is, here with you guys. Thank you, Volcom. Thank you, WSL, the boys. Yeah. Aloha. Thank you. Pure, no pure worries. aloha. Easy. Mikey Red, thank you so much for coming through and sharing that energy. And uh, hopefully we'll see you back in here. Yeah, Dave. Yes, sir. Again. Right on. Right Thanks, on. boys. Aloha. Take care. Good job. That's such a great point. You know, they, there's, there's two choices coming out of a situation like that. And he went immediately into joy and wasn't like, ah! You know, like that, that, but the energy is a thing. I'm telling you, we're going to bottle that stuff. Joy. That's it. <laughs> Dave Wassel, Sal Masekela for Joy. Bottle it up and get some because this journey is short. Well, that, that just goes to show you that, you know, time in at Pipeline can actually start to reduce those fears, reduce those inhibitions. He's... He's done it before. He feels comfortable, uh, and you know. But at the same time, it's a, he said it's a little different, you know, because every day out here is a contest. When there's 70 guys vying for position at Pipeline, trust me, it's a contest mm. just to catch a wave. 
But now with your sponsors watching, he was able to tone it down, realize this is what I need to do, and he did it quite well. Guillermo Sat on a little double up here on the inside, finds the line, but uh, gets pinched and takes a trip down into the mangrove tree planting. Uh, when I, what I really loved about um, Mikey's description of, of his time out sitting on the sidelines which was really cool. I mean, he, he, he's, he's out, he's watching his friends that are still charging, and he said he took it as inspiration in, instead of like being bitter that he was injured. And that's, a, that's again, that's a choice. Great point, great point. He was sitting there watching all the adults eat. He's sitting at the kiddie table, waiting for his turn. And it took him almost, it was out of the water for almost a year, mm. an entire season here at Pipeline. And so that fire is burning bright in young Mr. Mikey Shaughnessy. And let's make no mistake, like, this is a cutthroat landscape. It's very, very tight and everyone is fighting to make a name. And a lot of times you can get relegated to like people only remembering the last thing that you did. And that can mess with your psyche when you're injured. And this is, this is the place where you go to work. You, my friend, are deep. That's good. That's good stuff. I'm serious. Not just because I'm a lifeguard, but that's good stuff. Deep as it gets. The thing is that everything I, I listen to, I always think back to Michael Ho, an interview with Michael Ho, my favorite pipe master of all time. And he said, your head is the most important thing in surfing, because if you're not careful, it's going to get you in trouble. Mm. And so having that correct mind space is crucial. Great point. It is everything. 12 minutes and 30 seconds to go. Young Makana Pang presently uh, sitting in first place. And look at our look at the heat totals um, with a with a 1.9 in the lead and it obviously it just takes one one wave to switch it up but when when you're in hey there's a little this is oh is that is that the burger right there that's it's keone tom doslin yeah and, and a couple kids from the big island but if you look right there that is michael ah Hull there's michael sharing Hull. his knowledge with everybody all the way down tj Schaub on the end there everybody listening in intently that guy knows this wave better than anybody in the world. And you know what? If you talk to him, I swear you'd think he's half those other guys' ages. Oh, yeah. When you see him just in general, he's as fired up as any Grom. Still to, riding Coco Ho's boards. Still riding Coco Ho's boards. Still, still pig-dogging backdoor at, at the Wave Ranch with the whole world watching and at, what, pushing 60? 60? Oh, yeah. Oh, right. He's ageless. Yeah, let's ageless. just go with ageless. He's ageless. Joy, it will render you ageless. Get some. <laughs> We're rich, by the way. <laughs> We're just, we just got so rich. <laughs> um, back to these low score situations. When you're trying to advance, and it seems like suddenly a little is a lot. Does it, how does that affect the mindset when, you, you, when you're looking for a score? I think it probably really affects it when it comes down to the last two minutes. Mm. But with 10 and a half, almost 11 minutes left, uh, not so much. Uh, these guys, that's the thing about pipeline. It is such a thin line bef between a 10 and a 1. It really is. And it all comes down to you in this heat. Now that it's four-man priority, you're not battling these guys for a wave. You're just battling with pipeline. Stay in your joy space. And be patient is the key. Ten minutes to go. We'll see how this thing shakes out. Meantime, uh, get yourself some joy. And we'll be back shortly here at the Volcom Pipe Pro.
This is a public service announcement from the Volcom Houses. Whether it's cans, glass, or plastic, recycling, it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the jewel of the seven miles of joy. That is the North Shore of Oahu, the mighty pipeline. We are live at the 2020 Volcom Pipe Pro. Eight minutes and 30 seconds to go here in heat six. Young Makana Pang still in the lead. And this heat is just low heat total central. Pipeline in the ebbs and flows. She's like, I don't care if you're in, in a heat. I'll show up when I want to, and you'll do with it what I tell you to. I'm just going to take five minutes. Just gonna, I'll be I, ready in five minutes. Can I, can I take a breather here? <laughs> and uh, nice little inside double up, looks like. Someone get an opportunity to go back door. And that was Miles Lane Toner. We talk again about position and not having time to make adjustments by the time you get to your feet and and possibly having just a little too big a board he almost poked on that one um, that was that was pretty tricky there uh, looked like Mr. Vargas uh, Mr. Vargas has actually been putting in a lot of time out here at pipeline I saw him on a, a rising swell he's also staying down at a team Inca's house mm. right down the other side of the lifeguard tower here and, and he's so, been putting in some time on that board and out here on this reef. So all Peruvians and, and the Chileans are Team Inca? Correct. Okay. Correct. I like it. I, I, I believe that uh, that kind of works that Ooh. way. Um, you know what? Uh, the guy who owns, what is it, Tubos. I think he bought a house down there. Okay. And he rents it to all the South Americans. That's awesome. So you'll see a bunch of Brazilians, a bunch of Chileans, a bunch of Peruvians all hanging out there. Kind of paying, pulling up under a, 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 a small cave. Sprinting back out there with 6.45 to go. Should I said people of the Andes? Is that better? <laughs> of the Andes region. Are you a, uh, what, what do you think about the kicking in the paddle out? Does it make you go faster? I, I do it. I don't know if it makes me go faster. I think it does. Mm. But I, you know what I do know? Looking side to side definitely slows you down. Yes. And that's at least a third of a stroke. So when you make a commitment to one of these waves, you make that commitment to go. And Head that's down, that. not side to side. All right, there you go. But you think, I, I, I know kicking helps you when you're paddling for a wave, but paddling back out. In the long run? Yeah. Uh, it probably helps get some of the jitters out. Just, I'll just tell you that. It makes my heart rate go up. Oh, yeah? <laughs> you need to talk to Freddie P about that. Oh, yeah. Well, Kahea Hart. Let's talk to Kahea Hart. He's actually still coaching right now. Freddie Pataccia, wherever you are, I want a hug. I know you're watching right now. I haven't seen you in a long time, buddy. Get down here. Come say hello. Come come sit in the chair and guest with us. Come say hi. Freddie P, the legend. He was doing a bunch of coaching. Uh, that's why I brought that up. Mm. And, and, and obviously so. The guys had a commanding performance all over the world. Talk about a tenacious competitor, someone who was fired up, someone who was not afraid to speak their mind and go out there and get after it. You had to worry about the entire heat, Freddie P. Speaking of having to worry about this guy in your heat, Makana Pang, getting a wide one. It's interesting, isn't it? I, people always ask me, why does Pipeline do this? You know, and sometimes it's a just a tide change and other times it's just the wind that was blowing on the surface mm. pointed this direction, took a break for a second, or pointed a different direction. So that's these lulls that come into play. I, I've gotten an, uh, an update from production on uh, Riley Morgan, who had that just elevator drop uh, over the falls and broke his board. He is being taken to the hospital uh, for x-rays. We don't know anything specifically. It is, it is our job to not speculate um, for a number of different reasons. First and foremost, his privacy and the family and bad information getting out there, et cetera. So we can let you know that he's, he is on his way to uh, the hospital for x-rays. And as we get updates uh, on Riley Morgan, we will give them to you. We, of course, wish him uh, the best. 
a speedy recovery. The, the fact that we did see him moving his arms, tremendous. Tremendous. Good job. The water Patrol right on it. It's awesome. Water Patrol, we, we see the manner in which they get in quickly. Uh, we, we finally have some waves coming in here, so I'll hold on that thought. But um, oh, look at how gorgeous is that. Shout out to our drone pilots. I mean, that's just it's great. It's beautiful. Funniest thing I ever heard. If you see the wave spit, that means it was makeable. So no matter where you position yourself, it's definitely makeable. That's the new train of thought. I love that. All right. So a missed opportunity there is what you're saying. Yes, and not missed by Makata Pan because he was actually too far in. He had gone for that little wave prior. Mm. Without priority, I think that's what he was thinking. Right. He was going to get that set, but all those guys, they didn't know where to sit. Look at Makata. He's hunting the boil. Smart man. Guillermo Sat uh, in red, who is on the outside looking in. He has priority here at this three minute mark. And we'll see if he's able to make smart usage of it as pipeline seems like it is coming back uh, to life who will be in the right position as Dave Wassel mentioned and it is red Guillermo saw pulling in a pipeline and getting spat out talk about taking advantage of the moment how stoked I'm giving that a golf clap that was very, very well done. That replay is going to be pretty. Needed a 1.37 around there. We got he got that, but take us through this one. Just perfectly takes off, ushered in to a standing room only. Goes to the buffet, takes a big old chunk of everything out there. Look at this guy, just <laughs> nonstop action. Oh, the, the water the drone footage is phenomenal. Oh, that was gorgeous. Perfectly, if you perfectly see, You perfectly. said if you see the wave spit, it was makeable. That, he, he actually did really well to take off really deep, too. It, it's great. Right there, no bottom turn, just straight into the barrel. The judges are going to eat that up. And, and he tagged it a couple times on the way out as well. Uh, you know, this is not a turn contest by any means, but definitely said, hey, you know what? I'm here. I'm here. I might as well go back for seconds. <laughs> I'm here in this buffet line that I was ushered into. Um, I might as well fill my plate. There you go. <laughs> well, look at that right on time has the priority and the Chilean says I will show you that I can put myself into position a 7.17 launches him into first place with under a minute to go it is he and Makana Pang priority now with the countryman Nicholas Vargas will he be able to do the same I'm actually a little nervous right now Mr. Vargas Looking for a 1.41 to advance. We, that was, that's a score. That's a score. And suddenly, Makana Pang, who's playing a home game in this heat with 15 seconds to go, is like, wait, what just happened? The game's not over yet. Where's my boy? Where's my man go? Uh. Miles Lane Towner with uh, priority says, sorry, sir, I'll take it from here. And Miles bef now before that score was looking for a 2.37. So we'll be on a little bit of a hold here to get the math right at the end. But you said it earlier. It counts in the final two minutes when you need a small score. You said that's when it would be affected. And we saw that case and point right there tell you these these Chilean guys they're, they're smart they played a smart heat right now you know and when it comes down to a competition the home court advantage could sometimes work against you because you're kind of looking for that exact wave that you know you get all the time at a place like this nice little nice little shampoo nice little cutback again uh, Nicholas Vargas only looking for a 1.41 
in that situation. You could argue that he may have gotten it. Ooh. Again, may have gotten it. A 1.27. Any place else in the world, sure. But not today at Pipeline. You and know what? I, I gave him a 1.7 for that mullet he's rocking. That was, you guys were talking about it going international. I think that's a moulet. Not quite the mullet, but Mr. Pang, I don't know if you know if he knows what just happened, but he I, dodged I... one. The young man child dodges one. Makana Pang was the early charger, unafraid uh, to lock into the safety of the bat barrel. But it was a Chilean festival. Mr. Sat with priority. Needing a small score, decided it was time to step up. And Guillermo Sat getting more than the score. And young Makana Pang breathing a sigh of relief as uh, Nicholas Vargas unable to get it done. So Sat and Pang moving forward here in this heat six, an exciting round two. And Pipeline, even though we were in a little bit of a lull situation, Chris Cote, uh, when it when Pipeline flares up, things get exciting quickly. Oh, you got to love a good Pipeline flare up. And I think we're going to see that right now. Round two, heat seven. Gabriel Villaran, Dr Dwight Pastrana, Sage Tuttero, and Ryder Guest. So some proven Pipeline surfers out there. And Gabriel Villaran. Ryder Guest showed us earlier this morning what he's capable of. Sage Tuttero, hard charging surfer from here in Hawaii. Dwight Pastrana from Puerto Rico. So 22.45 on the clock. A couple quick scores coming through. Ryder Guest will be in green. Joining us now in the booth, Matt Bemrose. <laughs> Chris. Hi, buddy. WSL breaks. That's right. You're living it. You're Good. living surf breaks right we from your it. eyes. Well, I'll tell you what, speaking of surf breaks, this is a wave that is not going to make it easy for any surfers, especially in these early rounds. These are a lot of competitors that might not have the history out here at Pipeline as, say, some of the guys you're going to see in third and fourth round. But in this heat, Gabriel Villaran, this is a proven Pipeline specialist. He is going to be a tough surfer to beat. But Dwight Pastrana, Sage Tuttero, and Ryder Guest, all kind of, uh, you know, those, those names that you could see going deep into this competition. They're that good. Well, definitely. We saw with that first hit, too, with Ryder Guest. Didn't he put on a show? He absolutely went hammering. I tell you what, Gabriel Villaran. I mean, I've been psyched to see this guy surf out here for a while. He, I mean, he got a bad injury out here a couple of years ago. But this guy definitely charges. And um, with these waves on offer right now, I tell you what, can you believe it? Day one, round one, we were blessed with these kind of conditions. Incredible. You saw Dwight Pastrana there on screen from Puerto Rico. Got a chance to talk to Dylan Graves about this young surfer. He says, real cool kid. One of the best up-and-comers coming out of Puerto Rico. He charges. He does huge airs. So that's the equation, right? You got to charge. You got to be able to do big airs if you want a career well, yeah. in professional surfing well, these days. Exactly. Exactly. And he nailed it. Well, if you can charge and do big airs, well, he's going to, um, he could win this event, right? That's right. That's, uh, what else do you need to do? It's, it's easy. Just go out there, <laughs> charge it, get barreled. And uh, if you can do that elusive combination that we love so much, big barrel to big, big air, air at Pipeline, yep. I mean, that is something special. Mentioned it earlier, Italo Ferreira did yep. it in the Pipe Masters. Yep. Seen Balaram Stack do it in free yep. surf sessions. Christian Fletcher used to yep. do it. Hopefully Sage Tuttero can do it. I, You know what? This is, uh, this is one of those names that you see it coming across the line and you're going, okay, this could be the kid that's going to make it all the way to the end. Well, he's got 20 minutes to try, so let's see it. Let's see if Dylan has hit the nail on the head there. And then uh, you're talking about surfer in red, Gabriel Villaran, in Ryder Guest. So this is a, a, a complete heat. You've got veterans, you've got rookies, we've got waves. And uh, one thing that I'm always excited about in these early rounds at the Vulcan Pipe Pro is new names we see coming up through the ranks. We've got some of the best pipeline rookies on the planet. Here's one of them, Makana Pang. Congratulations, making it through that last heat. Thank you. And this is a kid that I was surfing two foot 
uh, you know, Beach Park with a couple of months ago. He was doing giant errors. And I go, wow, that kid's good. And then I watched some of his videos. You're charging pipeline. You seem to have a quick trajectory into this lineup. Give me your history with this wave. So me and my group of friends, oh, we all grew up here, went to school across the street and everything. And this wave has always been a big draw for us, obviously. Coming after school, seeing it when it's doing it, seeing all the pros, really like bringing us in, intriguing us. And since we were like 12 years old, we would just go out there in groups, sit on the shoulder, try to get any wave we could basically on the sandbar. And as we got older and older and older, we just started slowly inching in deeper, 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 starting to get barrels. People started recognizing all of us and we're slowly making our way up the pecking order, trying to get our waves. So going to school across the road at Sunset Elementary, how hard was it to go to school? I mean, it was <laughs> on it a day like today. Yeah. Yep. Actually, sitting in the classroom, we'd hear the horns blowing all day long. you would hear the announcers, and we'd always just be like, oh, who's in this heat? What time is it? What yeah, time, what time is it? When can we go watch? The, when we can go watch? I don't know. No, yeah, it was pretty cool. Well, how old are you now, and what are your goals in this contest? I know this is a huge you know, playing field for you. You're mixing it up with some of the best of the best. You're making it through heats. What's the end goal here for Vulcan Pie Pro 2020? I want the win. I'm trying to put Perfect together. Answer. I'm trying to put together <laughs> some heats. I haven't really done it yet. Just got lucky. Some no make so far, but trying my best to try to find one. I've had some weird heats, but try to keep it going. Get some big scores. So, so how many days out are you looking at a forecast? And with seeing what we've got on offer today, was it three days out? You went, oh, it's, we're going to get it absolutely cool. Yeah, actually, that... like the past week, I just kind of knew it was going to be good the whole time. And then the last night, I was like looking at the buoys, like, oh, it's 10:14 west. It's looking good. It's going to be firing. And I really thought it was going to be like 10 foot second reefing all day long, but it didn't really hold as big as I thought it was going to be. But obviously, the conditions are beautiful, and we got some solid waves, and it's great. So, what's it. what's your what's your essential best part numbers like northwest when you want backdoor or do you just love west or what's what's your favorite i think a west northwest with around what i saw last night 10 10 6 14 seconds 10 feet 14 seconds that's kind of like the range where i'm like okay it's on for sure <laughs> it's student, gonna be good a student of the game i love it we just saw dwight prestrana get a good wave now i've been asking some of the rookies coming in here to just do us a favor take a look back at this wall what's it going to take to see Makana Pang up there with Florence, Moniz, O'Brien, Slater. How are you going to get up there, Makana? Sit deeper, ride the foam ball till it spits, and come out. Yes. I love this kid. <laughs> exactly. Kid, he's got a big future in the next <laughs> few days. Thank you so much, Makana Pang. Thank you. Congratulations, making it through yet another heat. Thank you. You know what I love about that? I love when you ask that direct question, what do you want to do in this? Like a couple people go, you know, I want to make a couple of I'm heats. I'm just happy to be out there. Yeah, you know what, going for the win, and obviously with an attitude like that. That's the, know, that's the right answer. It's the right answer. Wow. Know. I just, I kind of just became a huge Makana Pang fan yep. right there. Like this kid. Big future, and I like the confidence there. Uh, you know, there, there's these kind of age groups, right? You had the yep. John John crew, yep. you know, the Baron Mamiya crew, that's just kind of right there in the edge. Yeah. The Makana Pang crew coming up. All right, so. Speaking of rookies charging, here's one of them right here from Puerto Rico, Dwight Pastrana. Dwight, look at that one. That was nice and thick and deep, and he's putting his hand out. He didn't want to claim it too early because there was a second section on offer. I mean, and a little bonus section at the end. That's so. what we wanted. How fast was he going on that wave? I really like this. Look at this drop. You know, that was really steep. I mean, the judges all day long, they've been really I, I want to say harsh they've kind of kept it in that kind of low level and I mean a wave like this you'd be thinking it could go into the sixes or sevens but the judges you know a five three three it's been that way all day long and with this second little bonus section and also the nice little turn at the end you know he did a double double arm drag that's a rarity and a good little finish here so you know five three three a little harsh but I get it it's where they've been all day and the judges if anything they've been persistent yeah, so we're 15, 15 to go. Dwight Pastrana puts up a number of 533. And again, you know that the first look we got on that wave, he is going so fast. It, I mean, you have to use both arms yep. to stall when you're going that fast on a wave. 
Uh, if I'm, you know, Dwight Pastrana, all these surfers now have plenty of options when it comes to study, to research. Yep. If you're a goofy footer, 100%. you know, you're watching Derrico, you're watching the Hobgoods, you're watching, now you're watching Cole Rothman. So there's a library yep. to, to study from and to pull from. I saw some Hobgood in that approach from Pastrana right there. And if you're being compared to a Hobgood, you're doing something right. So we'll see what happens next with 14.27 to go. Pastrana in the lead, Villaron in second, Ryder Guest third, Sage Tuttero in fourth for now, but holding on to priority. So we'll see what happens next. You're watching the 2020 Vulcan Pie Pro. Stay tuned. I heard there's a party at the Vulcan house right now. Should we go check it out? Shoot, let's trash it. Whoa, 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 guys. No single-use plastics at the Vulcan houses. Whatever, Kaimana. I used to carry your groceries. What? And <laughs> get these guys, Smokey. Beat it. Hey, boy, you keep using plastic. It's going to get drastic. <laughs> Using plastic, it's gonna get drastic. <laughs> Twelve thirty-one to go. We are live from Pipeline on the North Shore of Oahu. This is the Vulcan Pipe Pro. Chris Cote here with Matt Bemrose. You're watching round two, heat seven. Dwight Pastrana on the strength of a five-three-three in the lead for now. Gabriel Villaran second. Ryder guess third. Fun fact for you, Bemmy. Sage Tuttero's dad, Jason was a, a guy I looked up to on my high school surf team. What? That's right. Why, what's so special? What happened? He rips. And I, we're, we're starting, you know, we, 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 this is an event especially Whoa. where you see, well, that one just totally took me out of my train of thought. You see a lot of, you know, sons of fathers that rip. Yep. We're starting to see that more and more. Sage Tuttero is one of those kids, his dad, absolute ripper. And what? if any other dads are out there watching, hit us up. <laughs> <laughs> Show us your clips. Let's see it. Well, that wave was insane. Uh, I really like this guy surfing right a guest. That was perfect. I, I mean, mean he's, you're talking about the Hopwoods before. Like, I mean, this kid, he looks really good out there. His first heat I was watching, I was like, wow, this kid's definitely got a lot of talent. He definitely knows how to ride a forehand barrel, that's for sure. Great Pipeline. style. Here's Pastrana again. And right there, you know, quick barrel, but all of these surfers, no doubt taking notes from previous heats, seeing that a five and a four will get you through a yeah. heat. You know, the, the, the scores have been yep. very sporadic. Yep. Highs and lows. I mean, we've seen heats yep. one with fives, yep. you know, total. So anything's possible. And I really like that, you know, you've got Ryder Gask and Dwight Pastrana both just getting on it quick. Yep. Still plenty of time, 10.45 to go. And uh, you know the word uh, foisted? You know what being foisted is? Somebody kind of gives you something. Give you they, some words? Yeah. yeah. Do you think there's a, a foisting happening out there between veterans and rookies? Are they being sold waves that aren't necessarily the good waves? Have you seen that through any heats today? I, I'll be honest with you. I've seen the guys that have been getting busy today are the ones that are getting through. That they're, are just in their own. They're in their own zone. They're not worried about that because... I mean, half the day, guys sitting in fourth priority, they'll be sitting in and under, and those little chip shots they're getting are the ones, like you said before, the threes and the fours that are obviously giving them the heat totals of the sixes that are going to get them through all day. And then you, then you got the veterans. Oh, well, like how that. is that thing? Then Come you, out. It's coming out. 
then you got the veterans um, like Wakita, who sat out there waiting for his big bomb that never came. Yeah. And he didn't get an opportunity to get a score. So. Well, that's I'm, what we saw happen with Jamie O'Brien as well. So it's it's one of those days, and like you said before, you know, you're getting through on heat totals of fours and fives. So that's why you're seeing a lot of guys getting through on those totals because they're coming in a little bit, getting those little chip shots and getting those scores, and they're staying busy and getting those scores. But, I mean, look at that. Right against Come again. Out. I tell you what, this kid is really good. He's really good. I mean, that right there is just as smooth as it gets. It was the perfect size wave, right in that medium range on the day. He, he, it was just, you know, it, it, I, I don't think it's going to be a 10, but it's going to be a solid score due to just the style, the smoothness. It's a different type of speed power flow. I mean, that is just that. perfectly yeah. done. And just bottom turning, stalling as it does it, coming out with the spit. The judge has got to like it. He's, it's definitely going to back up his 533. I'm feeling this has got to be better than his 533. Look I at that, I love bottom this. turning, stalling as he's bottom turning. Just trying to maximize him, himself behind that curtain there. Coming out with the spit. Did it all with a really good style as well. So, I mean, <laughs> I'd like to see the judges open up a little bit here. Well, have you seen, what's the trend here in terms of wave size? Have the biggest waves equaled the biggest scores? No. It's this, no. these kind of medium, these medium thick ones. ones, right? It's these medium ones that hit the reef that really open up and... Um, they kind of don't stretch enough where it, you can sometimes pitch. It stays open on the reef. Uh, there's, they have been the best scores all day long. So, I mean, it's definitely the boys that have been busy here who are out in front. We see Ryder Guest, you know, that's his fourth wave. We've got Dwight, he's taken on with his third wave. So before, you know, Sage sitting there without a wave, he's going to have to start getting busy. Yeah, at this point now it's... so. You tell me, I mean, you've been in enough heats, you've coached enough surfers to know, okay, at what time do you have to just rely on one wave? Four minutes, three minutes? I mean, here at Pipeline, you, you can see guys get two scores in three minutes. Right. Two waves. I mean, you take off, pull in, come out, you got a, you got a 10 second paddle out, right? You obviously gonna have to do that in fourth priority, but there's so many waves out there that go unridden that with with a good first score, and like we said before, heat totals are eight getting through, to back up, say, say a six, you know, you only need three to get through that heat, right? Solid math there. <laughs> I was sitting there going, okay, how am I to get this one right? <laughs> well, for uh, for Tutoro, for Stage Tutoro, right now with priority, this is where he's going to have to look back at every heat he's ever surfed and really make a wise decision here. Because, like you said, Bemi, if he drops in and gets himself a five, that paddle back out, it could be 30, 40 seconds. Yep. He could find himself. I mean, we've seen it. We've seen this contest won with that. Yep. John John Florence. That's right. With, what, two seconds left? I think you did the dreaded handshake too. Like you high, high five, five Jamie. Congratulations. Oh, wait, hold on one second. <laughs> hold that thought. You know, that, was, that was one of the most historic finishes ever. I loved it. That was amazing. And it was one of those ones that, it was a big West one that swung so wide. And Jamie wasn't watching him. And then John got to him, got his inside, got the score, got the 9-8. And um, the, the dreaded handshake you never want to do. Here we go on his backhand. Sage Tutterell, the no grab, layback. Right in the vortex, a quick ride. But again, you know, that could be in the two range. That two. The momentum swing. Two that to three. Two, two, not even, I mean, twos One, five, today, twos today, you're getting blown out of barrels. All right, well, I got excited. That's maybe a point five. <laughs> the, I do like to see on the backhand the no grab. Yeah. I mean, that has to be one of the most difficult things to do in all of surfing. You can get super deep in this way, but there was a lot of action happening. Late drop. Great drop. I thought he went the old school layback then that got out of there. There's the score of 0.6, so. All right, I got excited. <laughs> yeah, too. But still, I mean, for a 0.6, this is, that that's incredible surfing right there. It was. He, I would he, take he, that all day. Yeah, it was. But, I mean, here, the Pipe Masters, I mean, sorry, the Volcom Pipe Pro, <laughs> you know, guys are getting blown out of barrels for fours. So he didn't get barreled. He unfortunately missed it. He got out of the way. But a 0.6, you know, now he only needs a, what does he need now to get through? He needs a seven, so he could do it, like Still you said. Time. And we'll see uh, what happened there. So Pastrana's out the back in blue with priority. I haven't seen priority really become an issue in these heats yet. It's really just been about wave selection. And obviously Ryder Gast is winning the wave selection game. Another double arm drag straight into the pit. Quick but meaningful and impactful two ride for Ryder Gast. 
Okay. He's not he, going to be a 10. Probably going to be between a 4 and 5. Yeah, it's probably going to be a 3, you know, from what's happening. But he's just having total fun there. I loved it when he got to the bottom of that wave and he just stood tall. What you think? Beautiful drop, you know. Could have been a little bit deeper. Just here he stands tall and just, just likes the view. Interesting the angles that you see, right? Yeah. I, mean, I love the drop. Over the that blow. looked so easy. That was weightless. That was stomach up in your throat yeah. type of surfing. That's it. You can tell he's got a lot of confidence. And I'm feeling that confidence came from that first heat today. He got a couple of good scores there, and he's just coming to a second heat. You know, he's felt the conditions. He's been out there before. Now he's coming in this heat with a lot of Yeah, the, the barrel he got in his early heat. Another late drop kind of over the backwash for Pastrana. So real, that was just kind of a big shoulder. Yeah, it looked like he didn't really get that inside rail uh, penetrated. We wanted to knife that one, but he had to go around the barrel. And looked like he was a little bit disappointed, but you know he's sitting in, sitting in second, and the guys in third and fourth need five fives and a seven. So on a day like today, a five five is actually a really good score. So somehow Pastrana gets back out there into a meat grinder. Will he come oh. out? His board came out. See, that was in. Okay, he took off before. Pulled off, got that. That's within 20 seconds. Oh, yeah, I was going to say 15, 20 seconds. Exactly. So you're saying before, like, three minutes. So Sage Tutoro, he could, he could, he he could turn do this it. around really quickly. Still possible. He's a 7-4-3. Yeah, that would be a big, wild tube ride. There's three minutes, 20 seconds to go. And he's already climbed up to the second spot on priority. Look at that angle. Oh, how beautiful. The drone flies here are unbelievable. They're almost getting right in the barrel with them. Yes. It's fun to see some young goofy footers battling it out, you know, because they have a very similar approach. Now it's going to be about the waves that they that they select. I mean, let's just play devil's advocate on that last wave for Ryder Yes. What could he have done differently to maximize scoring potential of that wave? Well, I mean, he, f he fell on the end, right? His board got blown out. I mean, to really maximize in, his in, score. In green. Oh, green's yeah. wave. Okay, blue. I think. Could well, he have stalled more? I mean, well, I think I mean, it would have been about positioning. He could have been deeper. That's the only way he could have maximized his score. He could have been deeper, but I mean, he's already sitting out in front. He's, he's served a really smart heat. He's been busy. He's been on the best waves of the day. I mean, the the guy is um, he's one to watch this, this event for sure. Yeah, I was going to say, there's always that, you know, handful of names, two or three names from the early rounds yeah. that you start to kind of pinpoint as, okay, this is a name that is going to go deep in this contest. I'm, it, it's still early, but I'm saying Ryder Guest is on that list of rookies, of undergrounders yeah. that are going to be making a quick rise. Especially coming from the early rounds. I mean, I think only one's done it. He's been Josh Meniz, right? Came from the early round, surfed all the way through to get the win. I believe so. I, uh, Mackay McNamara got third place in 2017 from the first round, I believe. First or second round. Yeah. So, you know, every year there's a there's a Cinderella story. Yeah. There's at least one surfer in every final. Cam Richards was a name yeah. that you're going, you know, when you see him on the draw, yeah, we all know how good Cam surfs. We all know he's a ripper. Yeah. Did you know how good he was at Pipeline well, until the Vulcan Pipe Pro? Well, I did not know that. That was, I was baffled after watching that. And then and I mean, he's unbelievable yeah. out here. Unbelievable. And, I mean, now I've seen right a guest. I'm baffled at how good he surfs this place. Yeah, these, uh, that's that's why you cannot miss a heat, especially in these early rounds. When the waves are like this, I mean, you want to be uh, five years from now going, oh, yeah, I remember Ryder Guest. I called him as the guy <laughs> five years ago, and now he's a pipe master. Yep. Gabriel Villaran hasn't really been busy this heat. You know, he's sitting there with priority. He needs a 5-2-7. There's 56 seconds on the clock. I mean, you can't count this guy out. It's just, it's, uh, it's, it's strange to me. I haven't seen him catch a lot of waves. It feels like it's been consistent enough out there for everyone. Look, look at Ryder Guest. One, two, three. He's got six waves. I would venture Dwight. to say that Gabriel... Five waves. Gabriel Villaran is a, a backdoor and off-the-wall madman, a specialist. Uh, sometimes if you go out there with, you know, stubbornness yeah. and you want that right... Yeah. you got the blinkers on and, you know, it yeah. doesn't happen, but... Look here, like I said before, the guys that have been busy are the guys getting through. Yeah, Ryder Guest, as it stands now, with 17 seconds, hanging on the lead with Dwight Pastrana in second, Villaron third, Sage Tutoro, highly ranked pro junior, Grom Search winner, NSSA national champion. He's already got tons of accolades. You know, a youngster, he will learn 
from this heat. So uh, that's the good news for uh, Sage and Gabriel. You know, Gabriel's a vet. He's learned his lessons <laughs> out here already. But, you know, for Sage, again, it's going to be exciting to see what he does after this. Yeah. Uh, but for Ryder Guest, he could potentially be, you know, be our Cinderella story of the year. You're going to have to wait and see. I really like what I saw from Ryder and Dwight. I mean, goofy footers with a lot of poise, style, yeah. both using the double arm drag. Yeah. So expect big things from those two surfers as we move through round two, seven in the books. Here's a recap looking back. It was basically back-to-back -back goofy footers. Back-to-back -back goofy footers, and you were right. Dylan Graves did say, had a lot to say about this guy, and he came through with the goods. Absolutely shined, and getting double barrels, finishing off with big turns. Um, you know, we yet to see the big air like, like we spoke about, but um, it was just, and this guy, just on another level. Yeah, that was fun to watch. It's it's really enjoyable when you can just tell that a surfer is having the dream run. Yeah. Even though it's only 25, you know, it's 25 minutes of their lives. It's got to be 25 of the best minutes yeah. of their lives for young kids like this to be surfing perfect pipeline. Yeah. I mean, the best um, money ever spent, right? Put your entry in for this one because he absolutely scored out there and came away with the win. So here are your official results. Ryder Guest gets the win. Dwight, Dwight Pastrana in second. We lose Gabriel Villaron. And we lose our charging rookie in Sage Tuttero. We'll see more of both of those surfers later on in the QS season. But for now, we're going to concentrate on round two, heat eight. Coming up next, Luis Perloro, Logan Betamol, Mason Ho, and Ayala Stewart. Some household names, some new names, some serious local threats. Oh, yeah. This is going to be a great heat. Matt Bemrose here with Chris Cote to talk you through it. Let's just throw it out there. Who's going to win this heat, Bemmy? I mean, everyone's looking at, at Mason Ho. I mean, what hasn't he done out here? He, he Talk about knowing the wave, growing up with, you know, Uncle Mike's probably reading bedtime stories as a little baby about this wave. So he's known it, I mean, like the back of his hand. Everything to be done out here, he's done. So I'd have to say uh, Mason is a, is a, is a hot favorite. Yeah, I'm with you there. That was the easy answer. Logan Betamal and Ella Stewart, two names that are, are, are real threats. You know, if they can put a heat together, as you see, uh, this is Luis. Surfer, a uh, young goofy footer out of Portugal. Ayala and Logan, kind of in that similar spot. Yeah. They're local threats. They're always, you know, they're always here at the Vulcan Pipe Pro doing well. We've seen Logan Betamal do well at Sunset, yeah. Aiva. So the, we start with 25 minutes on the clock. Two surfers will advance through into the next round. And if you watch that last heat and you're paddling out for this heat, you're thinking, oh yeah, I'm about to get barreled. <laughs> You know, and I wonder the Portuguese surfer there. He got he, he got a wave pretty much straight on the on the hooter, and I bet he's out there thinking he's going to get busy. He he's seen there's a lot of waves, there's a lot of opportunities. Don't get held hostage by your by your priority. Oh, he just gets yes. blown out of that one. Logan Betamol. This kid is underrated. I've watched him in the past couple of years. The Vans Triple Crown of Surfing here at the Volcan yep. Pipe Pro, and he's one of those names that. You know, kind of hovers around in relative obscurity in terms of the broad QS year. But any time we come to the North Shore, Logan Betamal's name always pops up. And you go, oh, yeah, this kid is amazing. Yeah. And it just takes an event like this to really put you on the map. I mean, this is really well done. I mean, has there been that many backdoor waves written today? A handful. Um, he did that really well. He, Like you said before, you don't have the blinkers on. Her. But he was out there looking for that kind of wave. And that's a really good start to this heat. And, you know, the judges see that, and they've been watching perfect left after perfect left, beautiful beautiful blue walls like that. <laughs> Not that that ever gets old, but when you see a foamy, grindy right like that, definitely gets your attention. That was Ayala Stewart. You know, Ayala is just that kind of classic, tall, goofy footer that when you put him on a wave at Pipeline, you, you just get that vision. It goes all the way back to the 70s. And right. it, it's one of those real f just fluid movements. Fun surfer to watch out here. Just nothing out of place, like you said before, standing tall. I've seen these guys standing tall, tall in barrels for 
feels like the better part of the last 10 years. Every time I look up, staying at the Volcom House across there when it's firing, I always see him on bombs. So this is going to be a really good heat to watch. Well, late drop there for Ella. How much weight do the judges put on the actual drop? Well, it's part of the criteria, commitment. Commitment oh. commitment and degree of difficulty. I mean, the commitment to the wave. I mean, that was so committed, that just that drop. So I still feel they've got to put a lot of weight in that. Quick one on his backhand, Mason Ho. Yep. With the little straight chop hop. The most entertaining surfer on the planet. He is, I mean, and he's probably the guy that rides the most amount of boards. Like you see him on edits riding like four O's, five O's, like seven O's, 10 O's. Like he, he rides everything and rips on everything. It's it's quite amazing to see. Yeah, he, if, if you're looking for, you know, what board should I ride today? Well, don't watch Mason Ho because he's going to ride something completely opposite of what everyone else is riding. Uh, and he's probably going to surf over rocks. So don't follow Mason Ho's lead. Uh, you know, he is a, he's supernatural in his abilities and what he does, he just goes against the grain. He uh, loves rocks, doesn't he? He's always serving on rocks. I wonder mean, what Mayhem's thinking about Biola. that. <laughs> Biolas is just going, all right, well, we're gonna have to shape Mason eight more boards, surfing on rocks again. But this board right here, love the look of it. Probably the longest board we've seen of the entire draw, yeah. but he makes it look so good. This looks so good. Watch how tight and tucked up he gets here. He gets so high in the wave face because he wants to get all that speed coming out of that. I mean, when you ride such a long board, it's hard to really change the direction of the board. The board does all the work for you. But Mason, he can move that thing around like it's a 6-0. It's probably looking like from here, it looks like a 6'8", maybe yeah. even 6'10". And most guys today riding at mo at max 6'6", 6 6'4". 6 but I mean, look at that thing. Yeah, you can see how much length he has under his chest right there. And I'm not sure, but does he have a mustache? <laughs> We're gonna have to get a close up. See if we can get that drone right up there. Zo <laughs> zoom in on that thing. We got 18 minutes to go here. Scores just coming through there. Yeah, I think there's a mo. I can see it. Oh yeah. Well, Mason Mo. Why not? With the intimidation mustache right there. Here we go in red. This is your surfer from Portugal, Luis? Up and into it. If he come through this section, oh, he was coming. Eat. Yeah, there's so many waves down in Portugal that just are littered with reef breaks like this. I mean, have you ever been to Aracera? There's nooks and crannies all over the place that waves like this. So any Portuguese surf you see in the draw, you know they know how to ride barrels. And it's it's a it's a place where where I mean, you can feel comfortable saying, go to Portugal on a surf trip because there's so many waves and there's a lot of waves that 90% of the world wouldn't be able to surf. Mason, wow. oh, thank you, Mason. That was sick. I mean, that is that is just surfing that no one else does. That's what he is. Amping right there. Watch his rail change here. I mean, just the presence of time to be able to sit there and do that. That was that was amazing. Just the amount of style he has in it. I know style isn't part of the criteria, but it should be. How he rides this is just phenomenal. I mean, you can put flow Check this out. in there. Look at this front hand. Then he changes hands and mixes it back. Four different grabs yeah, in one barrel. Yeah, it was. And then he comes out, what I love, how psyched he is. Watch him just paddle, just trying to get that priority. I mean, Mason Ho. We knew this was going to happen, right? I think he saw Luis Perloro in his peripheral vision. You see him right here, and then he sees him in red. He goes, oh, what? Gets out. That's a priority play. So not only is he an incredible surfer, but, you know, a smart competitor. I'm surprised he hasn't made more finals out here at Pipeline. It's so am I. With surfing like that, all Mason needs, I'll be honest with you, is consistency. That's the only thing he's probably going to lose by if he's not getting the wave or getting enough waves because you give him opportunity with surfing like that, I mean, he's going to be really hard to beat. You know, I think for him a lot of times, and I'm not speaking for him, but he's a showman. And a yeah. lot of times he almost surfs out of the heat because he wants to put on a show yeah. for the fans, yeah. the, the tens of thousands, the hundreds of thousands of Mason Ho fans out there. And trust me, we appreciate it. The Mason Ho show is always awesome. But I want to see the Mason Ho show all the way to the final day. 
Here we go, Ayala Stewart, nice and deep. Oh. Right in the pit. There we go. Uh, it's, I mean, it's <laughs> perfect. I mean, it's, it's perfect. It's perfect. It is absolutely perfect. And I will tell you what, that was just a job well done. Here we go, Mason again. <laughs> Gets that front arm grab. Pull that up. The showman. Like you said before, the showman. I mean, that was just pure showman. Just then. Slob, that was slob grab barrel. I mean, that's a lay forward like his dad used to do. Yeah. I mean, that's the so 80s cool. called. It wants its grab back, <laughs> but you can't have it because Mason Ho has it in 2020. I mean, how cool is that? Just the, the amount of style he had on that wave. Like, he probably knew taking off that wave, it wasn't going to be one of his two scorers. But he took off, like you said, the showman with the inside just went, ah, stuff priority. I'm going to go this one. <laughs> 14 20 to go. And if Mason Ho is in the lineup, everybody's watching. This guy's been watching from the jump. We're talking about Dave Riddle. Riddle's corner. He's up there. He's got the best seat in the house. Yep, I'm with you guys. <laughs> Dave Riddle. Yes. Riddle's Corner. The Mason Ho Show is live in front of our eyes. And I know you've been watching Mason since he was, what, four years old, surfing over at Val's Reef. Uh, tell us what we're witnessing right now. Is this the year? Is 2020 Mason Ho's year at the Vulcan Pipe Pro? Well, you know, you guys have talked about guys sitting there with priority, waiting for a good one. You guys have talked to, we all have talked about guys getting busy and, and building scores. And then we got Mason Ho, and Mason Ho is the guy that's having fun, and he's really doing a great job of doing it. You know he's from the dynasty. It's in his blood. He's surfed this place since he was a kid. He could ride a six-footer, a six-four, a six-three, an eight-zero, whatever, because he's just got that beautiful style and that knowledge of this spot where he can get behind it, and with the board he's dri driving through these barrels with today, it's a little longer, and he's using that to his advantage, and it's a really remarkable thing to witness. So, Reid, you know, like you're touching on that point in regards to Mason Ho's surfboard, is is that a strategy thing or on a day like today, I know you've, like Kote said before, you've seen him surf this way probably 10,000 times. On a day like today, would that be his normal board that he'd ride? You can see him riding a 5.0 out there on days like today. Yeah, it, you know, it, you just don't know with him. I think he just looks at his quiver and goes, this one's going to be the fun one. I'm going to do it. You know, I've been hanging out with him when he just laid him down and picked one up and goes, oh, yeah, this looks like fun. And he's out there and he just manages it. You know, he's got such control and he's so gifted that, like I said, he can ride a board of any length and uh, make it work. He's confident. We talked about that. He's confident in his choices and he makes them work. Well, his last high scoring wave was that 717 came from multiple grab variations all <laughs> in one barrel. Riddle, tell us about this wave. I mean, this could have been in 1982. It could be in 2019. It could be in 2054. Incredible no, variation. I, I'd be lying if I didn't see, say I see a little bit of Michael in there, maybe a lot, you know, because Michael was one of the first guys to kind of really get down the backside long distance barrel riding at pipe. He was phenomenal at it. It's like I said, it's I don't want to be repetitive, but it's in his blood. And then he gets in there and he just takes it to another level. On this floater, I thought he was going to do that walk to the nose thing and land it. But, you know, he didn't quite pull that. But, you know, he, I think we, we're, in, we're in store for one of those before this event's over. So, Reed, as we've seen the heats go further on through the day and the rounds get, are we going to see, start seeing heat totals like this one start to go up into that 12 range? We are. We spoke about it earlier today. It needed a little more water because we were hitting that tide going low. And now we got it filling in a little bit, and I think it's taken away a little bit of the bump, and it's getting better. And I bet by the end of the day, we're going to see some man scores, some big ones. It's, it's, it. look, it's getting better and better. Thank you, Dave Riddle from up there in Riddle's Corner. We're going to be popping up to that corner throughout this entire event. Uh, lucky for us, we're not even going to let Dave leave. He's got to sleep up in his corner. He's got to be there for us 24-7. He sleeps with headphones on. Yeah. He, he, I mean, he loves it. I mean, Dave Riddle, I tell you what, having him in your corner, which the Volcom team is so lucky to have, 
just all that wealth of knowledge. I mean, coming to Hawaii and having Dave Rood on, if you're lucky enough, you might get invited up to his house for a dinner. It is possibly the best dinner you could ever have in your life with his lovely wife Katsuko but, t- but Dave Riddle I mean he's, he's just a wealth of knowledge if you sit, get to sit with him and he starts talking about the old school days and I mean he's got he said he's going to write a book one day and I cannot wait to read that hopefully it's next week because I want to read it now 9.58 to go as Dave was talking we saw a quick look at Michael Ho who's watching his son Mason Ho and uh you know, uh, always a fun element of th- this generation is just to, you know, the, the family affair that surfing, professional surfing has become. And there's no signs of slowing there. You know, through social media and all that, we're starting to now see third generation. I mean, how good are Mason Ho's grandkids going to surf, or Michael Ho's grandkids going to surf? I mean, it's scary. We have a, we could have a triple generation out here it's, someday soon. It's scary with Coco and Mason. And, I mean, look at this. We're just watching. We're speaking about him. We're watching him get blown out. We're watching the master <laughs> at work here. Oh, uh, and you got, the pull-out is my favorite. The carve-out. And you got Derek as your uncle and Michael as your dad and Coco as your sister. I mean, can you surf bad? Is it, is it possible? It's not allowed to be grounded. <laughs> 8.58. And uh, we mentioned earlier, any other dads out there watching, cheering, Ripper fathers? Well, we got a couple. Pete Mel's watching. What? He's psyched. We got John Mel coming up here pretty soon. It'd be interesting. I mean, one of these days, Bemi. We've yeah. got to have father son, uh, mother son, mother daughter, father daughter event. That would be fun. Maybe not a pipe. Though. Mason, here we go. Over the big boil there. See how high he gets? He gets so high in those things. Just to know he get all that speed to bust out of those barrels. And I mean, when he's jumping up and down on those waves at the end, you know he's having fun. And I just love the look of this board under his feet. You see 80% of the rail in the water. Beautiful, smooth bottom turn. And then tons of turbulence in the barrel. You know, right there comes out after the spit. And this is one of my favorite things right here. Quick little hop, rail tap, and then this. I mean, that's that's, that's a different kind of claim right there. That was sick. He doesn't he, want you to know that's a claim, but it's a claim that's a non-claim. The best kind of claim. The best one. The best one. And I mean, I tell you what, just watching Mason's heats, it's just... It's just pure fun, right? Like you said before, you always want Mason to get through and you want him to win because if he wins, you get to talk to him in the, even in the booth. Everybody wins. <laughs> wow, look at this thing. Blotto, where is he? Just a little too deep. But you know if you're going up against Mason, oh, you've got to put it yeah. all on the edge. I think, we, you know, we should call the contest director, Marty Thomas, and get another 10 minutes out of this heat. Do you think anybody would complain? I need Mason, you can... I mean, he said a quote once. He goes, I never lose my heats. I just run out of time. I love it. Well, we got six minutes, 55 seconds to go. The Mason Ho Show is on here at the Vulcan 5 Pro. Take a quick commercial break, but we'll be right back with more action. Can Mason Ho hang on for the win? Stay tuned to find out. You're watching the Vulcan Pie Pro.
This is a public service announcement from the Volcom Houses. Hey, your mom don't live here. Do your dishes or get stitches. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the North Shore of Oahu. Chris Cote here with Matt Bemrose. You're watching the Vulcan Pipe Pro here from the most famous wave on the planet, the Bonsai Pipeline. And it's the famous, most famous wave in the world for a reason. I mean, look at these waves we've had on offer all day long. And it's also <laughs> the most. It's also the most dangerous. It is. Thing. It's the most dangerous, and like a, it's the most dangerous for a reason. At the end of every one of these waves, or just here where that boil is. It's, it's about three or four feet of water. Look at that thing just driving through that thing. Hey, Alice. He's coming out. Okay. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, that is worth the price of admission. Ayala Stewart, from that angle. He wasn't coming out from that I angle. I was coming up with something else to talk about halfway through that barrel, and he appears out of the depths. That was incredible. Okay, this is where the judges have been holding back. So this... It, um, for Are me, from that away, angle, Eddie it's, got, it's, it's got to be it's got to be in the excellent range. It has to be in the excellent range. If you can shock the judges, if you can at, freak at least them the nine, out. It's got to be, huh? If you can freak the judges out, you can shock them. A big number is going to come through, and there you have it, an eight nine three. Let's watch it again. Okay. Don't huff and puff just yet. What happened here? Beautiful drop. He's driving through that thing. He's deep. He's well behind the foam ball. He was gone. I mean, for me, that's at least the nine. But you know what? The judges have been tight all day long. And the 893, it was beautiful surfing. I mean, look at that, Chris. Steep, deep. He's going to be pumping into this wave. One, two, and he's there. He's behind that section. This is where I was going to start talking about. I mean, where know, is he? Agricultural, farming, and other stuff. And then all of a sudden, poof. I mean, we're talking well after the spit. And again, that's one of those waves that the, the judges are watching every second of yeah. every heat. But a wave like that, that's why that's, that's the highest single wave yeah. score of the day. You know, this angle was out of control. He's so deep there. That's why he even came out. He was baffled, like, wow, that thing was crazy. It's, um, People you know what? That all I, day. I'll give it to the judges. I think they've done a real good job today. They've kept it really low. And, you know, if they did go high through the day, if they were throwing eights down, that, I mean, that would have to be up to the nine nines, even a ten. But he they've kept it low. If I was, that's a nine. If I, I mean, if I'm a judge, they're all tens. Yeah. That's the problem. <laughs> like a lot of fans out there watching, myself included, Get very excited. Yeah. My knee jerk reaction is 10, 10. <laughs> Give him a Yeti cooler. That was a 10. To Ayala's credit and to the credit of the judges, we know that Ayala can do better. We know that the waves are going to be that good throughout the afternoon. We know that the rest of the period is going to be that good. They've got to leave some room. Okay. I like it. Leave some room I'm with for you. dessert, Bemi. I'm with you. Don't spoil your I, dessert with your dinner. You know, I'm with you. I'm with you. You know, two minutes on the clock, and you look at the caliber of guys in this, you look at the waves on offer, you know, and that, that being a 9 or an 8.93, it's really good judging. I'll tell them you said that. Minute 45 to go, round two, heat eight. Ayala Stewart now jumps into the lead with one of the highest heat totals of the day. Don't forget about that 717, another beautiful wave at pipe. And now the question, you go all the way back to the beginning of the heat, Logan Batamal with that six. That was a mind-blowing wave, kind of a, a mid-backdoor kind of wave. Yep. Definitely, arguably the one of the hardest waves to ride of this heat. Wasn't the biggest, wasn't the longest tube, but it was a masterful tube ride from Logan Betamol. Now he's looking for a 767. Come backdoor again. There he is. Now, if he can come out of this one, don't blink. Well, if he did come out of that one, talking eights and nines, but that's neither here nor there, is it? Do you think in his heat, he was looking at those backdoor ones, his first wave was a score, it was the 6-0, and that one then, I mean, he did have priority, I believe. I think, he loves, back, I think he loves backdoor. I mean, there, there's a lot of surfers out here that just love to go right yep. out here. Um, and I know Logan Betamal is really good on his backhand at pipe, yep. but when you, when you have that addiction 
to going right out here. Yeah. It, it's got to be hard. I wouldn't know. You're, you're not. You're not talking to a guy that has a backdoor addiction. I mean, that is for the most skilled oh. of the most skilled. <laughs> Well, there, it wouldn't be the Mason Ho show without some theatrics yep. and fun. And I would have liked to see maybe an El Rolo there. Hey, Ella Stewart. I mean, this is a, a surfer's surfer. I mean, this is guy is undergrounder. I believe he's, he works at North Shore Surf Shop. I know he hangs with the McNamara's. And he's been doing it out here at Pipeline since he was a young teenager. I'm excited for A. Ella Stewart. Yeah, that was a job well done and an and excellent heat surfed with the biggest heat total of the day. I mean, coming up against Mason Ho, he knew he had to get a big score to beat him, and he did it. So big ups to him. Round two, heat eight in the books. It was the Mason Ho show all the way to the end. Some incredible backside surfing, multiple grab variations, chop hops. Some fun stuff from Mason Ho. Thank you to Matt Bamrose. Yeah, the wave of the day so far, Ayala Stewart. One of the longest tubes ridden. Thick. Mason Ho again. So something for everybody. Regular footers are psyched. Mason Ho fans are ecstatic. And fans of underground North Shore standouts like Ayala Stewart have to be stoked at what they've just seen. The Mason Ho Show will continue with a second place finish. And the legends are out. And this was the uh, the wave of the day so far for Ayala Stewart. An 8-9-3. Written off midway through that barrel. And then surprise, surprise, comes out a warranted. Hands up to the judges. Give me that big score. And he got it. Highest single wave score of the day. I want to welcome the guy who loves to see underground North Shore Chargers get their due. Kaipo Guerrero, what do you think of Ayala Stewart? Uh, I think Ayala Dalla earned some bank just now. He had a couple of deposits at Pipeline, and that young man put on great performance along with Mason Ho. What a great heat. And we got another one on the uh, round number two, heat number nine, out in the water, Daniel Glenn. Jacome Correa, Kala Willard, and Gavin Hogan. Two surfers representing Hawaii, one from the east coast of the US, and Jacome Correa from that islands, Portuguese territory of the Azores. I'm Kai Pugero, along with Vaughn Blakey to talk you through this action here, and it is a beautiful afternoon, Vaughn. Oh man, dead glassy conditions, huge heaving, scary, terrifying, <laughs> angry pipeline right now. I mean, it looks perfect. Uh, when a guy like Yala is flying through just cylinder after cylinder, chamber after chamber, but make no mistake, mate, he is packing a monstrous punch out there this afternoon. Uh, you know how you know when you're walking along or your feet are on the concrete at the pipe house, you can actually feel it rumbling on your foot. I, I thought that was a, a tall story when I was a kid. I thought, right? The Surely seismic activity you cannot that the feel provides. the wave when it hits first reef clean and it's a big, thick one. You can feel it rumbling. Oh, it's yeah. under your feet, mate. Oh, fun. It's hectic. It's, it, like, fish get concussions out here <laughs> on a daily basis. Like, we see little maninis and stuff. They're little striped fish. They get, like, straight knocked out. You see them floating after a big set. <laughs> Just concussed. That's how powerful the bonsai pipeline is. But, like you said, it is beautifully dangerous. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can sometimes be in such awe of the beauty of this place that you almost forget a little bit how dangerous this wave is. Shallow, powerful, waves coming unimpeded uh, with storms generated out in the northern Pacific, up in the Aleutian Islands. First thing they hit is the reef here at Pipeline after traveling thousands of miles, gaining momentum sometimes, especially with these long period swells. It is a, um, it's a show. It's it's a trip out too because it's just so peaky at like either side of it. It's just uh, sort of flat, but you're right in the middle is just these giant A-frames. It's, it's just focused. Natural wonder. Jacome Correa from the Azores, uh, Portuguese territory. The Azores, quite a few waves out there too and some powerful waves. It's part of um, the Portuguese movement over here and we saw Jacome Correa 
uh, compete earlier at Sunset. White from the Valley Isle of Maui. This is Kalal Willard, 21 years old. Kind of like when we talk about underground, rippers, Kalal Willard would be in that category. Yeah, it's such a good platform, this comp, isn't it? It really does showcase all these new talents coming through. Guys who have put in the time out here, they finally get the line to themselves. I don't know much about Kalar, mate. I'm really uh, curious to see how he goes in this heat. He'll never get a better opportunity to uh, show us what he's made of. It's pumping out there. It's heavy. And I know that, you know, Hawaiians in particular, Kaipo, I mean, we all grow up in this place. You know, wherever we come from, Pipeline is the big daddy for all of us. Right. It's all we care about when we're growing up. And, you know, it's going to be interesting. I want to see what Kalar can do out here, because I think for the Hawaiians in particular, it's even more important. It's even more spiritual. This is true. We just saw a quick ride from Kalar Willard. And we'll be waiting for that first score for White. As the clock ticks down, we start with 25 minutes on the clock. We're down to 19 minutes and 40 seconds. And no big scores yet on the board. First wave for Kalal Willard in the white jersey at 1.37. We also have a youngster out, out there in the way of Gavin Hogan. Gavin Hogan is out there in the green jersey. Just 17 years old, part of our Pro Junior Series here in the Hawaii Tahiti Nui region. And he's taking the next step in the QS 5000 right here. Big future, I predict, for this young man, Gavin Hogan, and just an example of the deep, deep talent pool that we have throughout the islands. Speaking about talent pool, floating right on the top of the talent pool right now is Mason Ho. <laughs> Great job out there, Mason. Thank you for joining us. Thanks. In the that was really cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was so much fun. It's always nice surfing with um, my good friends and then even new kids coming up or uh -huh. anyone, <laughs> really. I, I like the little um, mute grab. Kind of, I mean, I've been seeing you do this for years, but you got the little like front hand mute grab on the backhand barrel. Yeah, I just love doing that. Sometimes when the, usually when I get one normal nice one, I usually try to get a nice cross grab one, and then maybe try a no grab or try. Let's it. let's check it out. You can talk us through this. What what exactly you're thinking? Is this it? Okay, right yeah. here. I'm thinking K okay, normal traditional. Dad told me to hold. Oh, right there. Dad would be mad. <laughs> Boom! I went back to Dad's one. Um, yeah, I barely, I got in there, and then boom, oh, that felt nice, and then yeah, yeah, that was. I saw you mucking around with those grabs a lot in Indonesia last year, mate. Uh, lots of tube time over there, obviously. You can really fool around with your different grabs and stuff. Yeah. What, what's the benefit of doing that? Is it Does it actually work on a different level to just a standard grab? It works if, um, works if you just want to feel something different, you know, like, I grew up my whole life trying to hit right here. Boom, that was a beautiful, oh my God, that was so beautiful. Can I come out? No. Okay, that was Jer Jerome? I guess. Daniel Glenn. Daniel Glenn, yeah, yeah that all was the way sick. From, from that pumping wave capital of New Smyrna. Oh, man. Yeah. No wonder why he had the good form. Everyone comes out of New Smyrna, they got good form. <laughs> I kind of like that, though. Yeah, yeah guys, yeah, are from New Smyrna, yeah. right? Oh, they're textbook form. I like that. Both of them. All of them, even the dad, everyone, like. It's pretty gnarly. But yeah, um, no, so what were the cross grab thing? Yeah. I just like to, I grew up just doing the normal pig dog or like just grab rail. That was my favorite. I used to watch my dad and my Uncle Derek and Uncle Barry, my Mia, a couple my uncles do it. And I just thought it was so fun how they drag their whole body. And I always dreamed of doing that. And then you kind of grow up doing it all. I mean, if you live here, you grow up doing it your whole life. And for the last few years, I was just like, I got to change it up. This is getting, I'm looking like everyone else or everyone's like catching on to my, our little thing. Mm -hmm. So trying to cross it up now and see any victims who tries it i, or, I mean i've seen archie it's, and ward to be honest archie yeah. and ward and a couple guys used to do it and archie and ward are like oh those are surf like andy looked up to archie and andy's partners ward you know so if you're pleasing andy or anyone in that class i, I just like uh, luke egan used to do that a fair bit too he's he almost, he was almost full front back yeah his was maybe his even the lay, gnarliest he, he, well he would lay back you were yeah. laying forward front grab he would do yeah. the lay back kind of pretzel Dude, thing. he'd even do ones where he was perfectly centered yeah. on it and just like be just holding it there just to hold it or mm -hmm. something he, he looked like he could just let go or play <laughs> like yeah no he was another one who and that was my favorite my I had a friend, Brian Williams, and Luke Egan was his favorite. And for all of us kids, we all wanted to do what Brian Williams was doing mm. at the time. So I was like, okay, Luke Egan, Luke Egan sprays. Luke but you know what? Thank you, Mason, because you know what you're bringing? Variety, entertainment, and we can count on that every time. And you know what? Surfing's supposed to be fun. 
and you show us that it's fun, even though it's super dangerous out there today. That's what I wanted to ask you, actually. Like, what's it like out there, man? Because from the beach, it looks really heavy. It looks like a real proper first reef day. There's some big, thick ones. Um, there hasn't been, like, a lot of guys getting scores in, in heats. There's been sort of one guy getting one wave and getting yeah, through on that. Your heat was a little different. Uh, guys three guys ready. getting waves. Yeah, yeah. Hey, all, that's right. Or all hey, that was mental. I was... Mm. I was kind of stoked, thinking I was going to dodge the interview. I kind of talk a little too much and this and that. So I was like, oh, yeah, y'all, I'll go flare up for us. And I got caught. Like, what, what's, yeah, it's good how, to how are you writing it? How are you writing it, mate, oh, out there? Good job. Give us a rundown of just sort of like what sort of pipe day it is. Well, well, I just woke up this morning. I mean, for the most part, if, it, if I had no schedule, maybe just a surf trip coming up or something or free, no contest coming out, I, I would just paddle out and surf it. It's a beautiful day out at Pipe. Um, we all live for this. Um, but then... I don't know if there was a contest coming up. Like the last few days, pipe has been really good, and I just don't surf out there before the comps because, for me, this is such a special like place, you know. And and I usually do some really dumb things out there that will get me hurt. And right. I've seen everyone do it and get hurt, so I, I like to. I kind of just don't really go as much as as I could, or sh even maybe even should, or whatever. But I, I usually go have fun and run around and surf some other try find some zones and we've been something. enjoying some of the, yeah. the little clips that you've been showing us and yeah, stuff like kind of off the beaten spot. path spots yeah yeah a couple kind little cool. just fun cool whatever little junk ones but yeah <laughs> i mean whatever but there's people like or even nathan florence i want to like give him some dude that guy's like out there every time it breaks you know or for this last year and i was just i'm like dude that is cool because i swear he has a heat coming up. i'm almost like does he even have a heat or does he care or anything you know so nate what up right? or like you're the man, but um, I don't know. Yeah, no. So like, I'm not kind of the op not the opposite, but I, I like to kind of stay safe and still surf a lot and stay active and like like I surfed all day yesterday, but it was kind of right behind my house, a couple little nooks and double ups, right. and I was trying to practice my style, my form, hold my rail, da -da -da, all the stuff. So, oh, but did I even answer your question? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Look, I think you did. What what I want to know from you, Mace, is pipeline and you, man, for a few years, like. You know, every free surf when it matters, huge, you know, third reef wash throughs all yeah. the way through to the first reef stand ups on the bigger boards. Everything you're doing out there, I mean, you're one of the guys that everyone like associates with being a standout when it's cranking. Thanks. My question is this like, oh, small. you've had a, a few near results here in comps over the years. How important is it for you to get a result in this comp? Is it something that like oh, means something to you in terms of like, I mean, you know, your relationship with pipe, taking it to another level? Yeah, like, I've kind of taught myself just it don't matter anymore. Or, like, I, it really does. To be honest, I grew up every single moment of my life, minute, even the path I go to Ted's or whatever, was just like, come on, pipe pro or pipe masters or something. You know, mm -hmm. like, I want to win or I want to make at least 10 heats or something, you know. So, but as I grew up, I kind of just grew up like that. And it was so gnarly. I don't know if it was too much or I don't know what it was and it never worked, you know. Mm -hmm. or, or I always did pretty good. But so now it's like, I don't really care too much, but I know deep down it's like the dream of all dreams, like that little helmet or that helmet. <laughs> it's like, man, that just means so much. Or, or like, you know what I mean? It actually yeah, means probably my life, you know, deep, or the honest answer. But I've already taught myself, I've numbed my dumb myself up, like, nah, don't. Just go surf, and even that heat, I just feel like I've won something. You know what, look at me. But your new, your approach to surfing, you made a path for yourself with your edits, with all the stuff that you've been dropping, riding these new waves, certainly new lines you're drawing on waves what's next what what else you got working on for us well i mean i just want to go on the search right now with mick or like that's to be honest my the last few years that's all i've like really wanted to do and i think him too i think all of us but but it's just like we're just trying to find the zones and map it out and it seemed like it took like a year or two and we kind of got this big master plan now and then he even took like a or he got mick got hurt so we even got to like hone it in now we got even more of a plan or like whatever so it's like oh my gosh right when you're ready miracle like and i've been kind of taking it easy too a little bit like let me just so what's what's it like is, is there a strike mission you get like 48 hours notice you see a swell coming you hop pretty on a plane yeah i mean pretty much that's the for the most part we're doing that but like we got a nice plan now we're just gonna see what happens i think we're going to vaughn boy right here <laughs> we're gonna um you guys vaughn and, and mason have some secrets and they're going to keep it secret right here. But we're going to yeah. see it sometime. If the weather cooperates, the swell cooperates, yeah. the world works with us, yeah. we're going to see some of these secrets, so it's right? Just, yeah. For, yeah. So for me, it's just the search. And a couple little – I want to do, like, a little more contests this year. That Last year, I didn't do any really. And then I didn't get into any contests later when it mattered. So now I just got a couple picked out. 
do a couple, see how it works, and then just hug on the mixed leg, go everywhere he goes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one, one thing I wanted to ask you just before we go, Mace, is um, uh, this event this year, particularly with uh, the other 5,000 happening in Morocco, it's really split open the field and allowed a lot of young wine talent to come through, and we get yeah. to see what they're made of out here in this in this comp. Who do you think we should be keeping an eye out of, of all these uh, young teenagers who are coming through the draw? Well, I mean, I always say, like, Baron, but now he's, like, gnarly, you know, or he, he's always <laughs> been gnarly, that's what I was saying, but I don't even have to say watch Baron this time, you know, you, I'm watching for Baron, <laughs> mm. but, um, I mean, there's there's other kids, like, crazy, there's hard to even call him a kid, but Macon, there's McConaughey, Macon Macon yeah. you know, he's always cool and gnarly to watch, there's Sheldon Paishan, I'm, I'm, like, nervous to see if he'll actually... <laughs> and I, I know he'll I've seen him pack a couple but I want to see him under the clock like get a couple down you know because mm. I know he wants to so Sheldon that's like my main little surf spar partner too I like to love to just we beat, or <laughs> beat yeah. up on each other like verbally and surfing I love it's it. like oh it's on but um so yeah I'd like to I think Sheldon's gonna do he actually did really good out here last year but yeah. but these are some uh, waves. thank you Mason always a pleasure catching up with you and you know what I hope so nephew Win one more heat so we can have more time here in the booth talking to Mason Ho. So on to round number Hope three. I get second forever. I don't yeah, want to come back well, in here. Just come back now. in here. We want as much Ma Mason Ho as we can it. get. They would check into what's going on. Actually, Sorry, not a everybody. ton's been going on in the water because we're at nine minutes, 10 seconds counting down. Daniel Glenn out in the lead with 2.6. And uh, that's it. Kalaw Willard, 1.37 for second place. So still anybody's game in this heat. As far as, you know, breakthrough, a three-point rise take you to the lead right now. I Bob. thought we were seeing a, a little shift in energy after Mason's heat. I thought that, uh, you know, we, we saw multiple guys get six-point rides, which is a, a pretty good score today. Judges have been holding right back. They don't just want to throw out those excellent scores, probably knowing what's coming. The forecast is looking awesome. Draw is stacked as we move through the rounds. Okay. Um, so, like... The crazy thing is, though, I thought we'd be walking in Kipes and Will and I would just be chewing our faces off going, this is unbelievable, but it's actually been... <laughs> it's taking a, a breather little, yeah, right now. But that's what Pipe does, too. It's so bizarre, man. How are you supposed to have your strategy with this wave? Because it will just... I think I heard Wassel talking about it before. It does what it wants. You might paddle out going, OK, that was a slow heat. I'm going to try and get three off the bat, and nothing breaks. Yeah. It's just... Well, that last heat... Ella Stewart, an 8.93. Honestly, I was wishing that the judges would have been a little bit more generous today because we have a ton of Yeti coolers to give away for a perfect 10-point ride. It kind of like I got a whiff of a 10 on that wave, and it wouldn't have hurt anyone. Give him a 10-point, and he <laughs> walks away with a, with a Tundra 110 cooler from Yeti. Come on, let's do it. So almost there, but, you know, that was last heat. This is this heat, and Pipeline's taking a breather. You'd be like the Oprah Winfrey of 10 pointers. Uh, like, uh, you get a you 10. You get it, yeah. You get a 10. I'm super generous that way. Yeah, Especially I'm a bit when, like that. And I, I know we got a room full of Yeti coolers. So I want to give them all away to our competitors throughout these next three days. Kota and I were talking about maybe sharing a, an ice bath with Sal in one of the Yeti coolers. Yeah, he does that CrossFit kind of stuff, and they those guys do the ice baths. and. And, and that's kind of cool. Like, have you done an ice bath? I yet? haven't tried it, man. And to be honest, it scares me. You know, <laughs> you know what kind of bath I like, Vaughn? Is the bubble bath, OK? Because <laughs> that is like relaxation. You yeah, got man. bubbles. It's cool. You know, this ice bath thing, I'm sure there's something to it. But it just looks painful to me. Yeah, I'm, I'm I got right enough pain in my you. life. I'm, yeah. I'm right with you. I'm just, I haven't got the circulation for a, a, <laughs> an ice bath at the moment. But uh, if I was going to have one, I'd have one in a Yeti cooler because it'd be ice cold. Oh, yeah. For days. So we saw Daniel Glenn take a look at that wave, but illustrating how dangerous it is. He took a look down the mine shaft there, and he said, you know what? Some backwash coming at me. This thing is going oververt. I'm not going to sacrifice myself. I want to win the heat, but you want some self-preservation as They're well. They're the hectic ones too, aren't they? Those ones that oh, yeah. miss it out the back, stand up hard on the first reef. They're often the ones when you're watching free surfing that you're kind of in the Volcom house just going, no, 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 don't go because it's... They're the ones that the, you know, the alpha pack don't touch. So Daniel did find one and made some yardage through that. He's going to add to his 2.6. So back out of that other one, back door. Let's take a look here. Gavin Hogan. 
Second section for Hogan. Spit, and he gets caught up no, in there. Oh, he done so well. I thought he was going to come flying out of that with speed to burn. Gab must have just lost it on a little foam bounce or a, a rib in the face. I mean, that's sometimes something you can't see when you've got that angle at backdoor. It really breathes, and the bottom will just fall out of it. Uh, just 17 years old, he's got years ahead of him to work on this backdoor riding, but did some good progress, Vaughn. Yeah, like this, up and under, plenty of speed. That bit there where it spat, I got a feeling he just lost the traction. And um, as you said, a really good line into this one, Kaipo. I just thought that's as good as you get. I'm going to agree with you, Vaughn. I think what happened here is that he got some air under his fins. He got some of this white water foam through the face, disengaged, lost all of his projection through there, and then the barrel ran away without Did you him. see, oh, as we come back to live action here, nice little cover up. It, it, like, I totally agree, by the way, cover up <laughs> is just not an adequate description, even for the smallest <laughs> barrel at Pipeline. It feels like such a, like you're just baking whoever you're talking about. Well, we got guys battling right now. Gavin Hogan, last score for Hogan, a 1.8 for that travel time at back door. A 2.9 for last of Jacob Correa. He goes into second place. That was Kalal Willard getting caught behind the white water there. So we have had a, a change in the standings and Jacob Correa going to second and advancing position here with four minutes and 10 seconds counting down. But still anyone's heat and beautiful waves on the wave on. What an afternoon. Look at it. It's a postcard out there. Full blown surf mag, double page spreads when you're a grommet. You know what a magazine is, right, Kaipo? It's this thing made out of paper that you I used, used to, to love. From I, and you know what? I'm going, I'm going to go on record right now. I don't want print to die. I love print. And every, you know, I still like reading books, you know? I tr treated the magazines. I'm surprised you can turn the pages with those little uh, T-Rex arms, mate. Yeah. <laughs> the books? Yeah, well, you know, uh, only dinosaurs read books now. Oh, we, that was a prehistoric reference. Oh, deadly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I like magazines. I like books. I mean, I know there are not a lot of them around, but I grew up in the magazine era, and, and the editors were just as much of, a, of gods as, as some of the surfers with some of the writings that they were doing because it, it stood there. It wasn't... Um, it didn't feel as much of as... Like, right now, I think a lot of media and a lot of writing, I would call paper cups they're disposable it happens so quickly you know that's oh, so true as we see a uh, ride right here but all four of these guys struggling to make sense of this lineup right now Kaipo and after uh, watching Mason and the guys in the last heat they would have paddled out with you know a fair bit of adrenaline I'd say they would have seen the options the conditions are uh, don't really get much better it's still huge out there <laughs> So here's another story I'm going to dig into. I'm looking at Kalal Willard at, at paddling back out. And I have a sneaking suspicion that, you know, they, they have a peer group that Kalal Willard and Ty Ty Kirby were actually sharing the same board. Because I swear I saw Ty Ty Kirby on that board earlier today. And some of that trading of equipment has gone, was going on over at Sunset at our last event over there. So that's, uh, that's talk about interesting. E talk about old school, talking about keeping things real. Hey, bro, you don't got a board? Grab mine. That is super cool. I really like that, because I mean, some people are so precious about their boards. Yeah. Can't go near them. You even like look at them the wrong way and uh, they might get a bit stuck. Well, you off. know, you, you work with, with the hose and stuff, and you know Mike treats his boards like it's pristine. Oh, He's actually, perfect. He gets a little snack on, on the rail, and my code, like, he gets upset. Oh, man. Meanwhile, we have Mason over here. Just had him in the booth. Like, he'll run that board straight into a rock. <laughs> but he still cares, mate. He, I actually I, asked him, what's the one thing that, you know, do you ever get upset? Does anything ever upset your live action? Here we go. Jacob Correa. Just a quick one from up above. Nice DJ. view there from our DJI drone. But uh, Mason said uh, one of the few things him. that gets under his skin is people touching his boards. Ah. He doesn't like it. So he'll run them into rocks, but he won't but don't touch them. Yeah. Yeah, I worked, at, I worked years as a kid at a surf shop. I hate when people squeeze the rails on stock boards. Oh, man. That was my pet peeve. And I actually had to kick out some hey, kids every once in a while for going down there. You know what Oki straps are, right? 
Do you ever, ever have hockey straps? They're like this stretchy thing with two sort of hooks on the end. They took out millions of eyes in Australia through the 70s and 80s. And what, what do you use them for? Well, you, to tie your boards on the roof. Oh, okay, gotcha. Um, my old man used to pull those so hard oh, he, down that... He put a dent in oh, your our rail. rails were just completely annihilated. How beautiful is that? Not Dad, deep. You're crushing my rail. Not too hectic, but oh, more live action here. And we're just going to enjoy the colors from above because I don't think Daniel Glenn's going to come out of that barrel, but charging nonetheless. Last score for blue, Shacomb Correll, 1.53. Shacomb goes to first as we're down to just 15 seconds. And Daniel Glenn, Shacomb Correll moving on into round number three. Greedy performance, grindy performance. Got the job done, though. Surfer from New Smyrna and the surfer from the Azores moving on here at the Vulcan Pipe Pro. Just crystal castles. Beautiful rides there for Jacome. Nothing too critical, nothing too deep. Scores reflect that. Jeez, he had some nice moments, didn't he? Yeah, he sure did. And like we said, we're looking at this round. This, this is the round of 128. We got a lot more to go. But a chance for these surfers to surf multiple times as we take a look at our heat recap. Daniel Glenn charging. A oh, huge pit right off the start. And that was what we were expecting. Plenty of that. But the heat was slow. This was the wave. It could have made all the difference, but just got bobbled and couldn't make it out. And unfortunately, uh, Gav there just not getting the score he needed. And then things went really slow, Kaipo. And Look how beautiful it is out there, but frustrating as well. Inconsistent and hard to find deep barrels. I love the positioning there. And the challenge met for the young Portuguese surfer. He's gonna move on into round number three. What do you say? Muito bom! Very good. Yeah, Frederico uh, back on the CT as well. Uh, big win in Haliever last year. Portugal, they're always there, mate. They're always there. Someone is always flying the flag for the Portuguese on tour. Well, I got new heat in the water. Heat number 10, round number two, just got underway. Two Japanese surfers and two surfers representing Hawaii. Takuto Ota in the red jersey. Shana Pakawa from the big island of Hawaii in the blue jersey. In the white jersey, Taichi Wakita, second generation pipeline surfer. And in the green jersey, North Shore born and bred and one of the top performers out of pipeline. Any given day, Koa Rothman. That's a good heat. That's an epic heat. Let's hope we see uh, the ocean come to life in this one. Sometimes they have a little breather. Up one does it. Well, last heat was the breather, so let's see if we can turn on the sparks for this heat. Takuo Ota, out of Japan, part of that Japanese typhoon we were talking about. We've seen a lot in this new generation of Japanese surfers. Rightfully so. So the land of the rising sun represented in this heat, not one time, but two times. Mm. Also, Shaden Pacaro here in the blue jersey. Shaden Pacaro from the big island of Hawaii, the Kalapana Coast. Pacaro, a great surfer, one, another one of our kind of local underground rippers. Yeah, I was in Taiwan late last year for the WSL World Junior Titles. And one thing that struck me, Kaipo, was that the Japanese camaraderie and the spirit that they had as a group was really familiar. It, it felt a lot like the Brazilian storm from maybe, you know, five, ten years, the last five, ten years, that that feeling that something was happening, like there was a role going on. And they took that role, they took that energy, they got their first ever WSL World Junior Champ. Yeah. Uh, a girl who is on tour, or a young lady, I should say. Amaru Suzuki. That's right. But, um, you know, there was, there was crew, there was all the team there was just on a heater, and they did some epic surfing i think the uh the typhoon is real i think so too we have shin murakami right now it's early in the season but he's the japanese surfer on the top of the the qs rankings long season to go but just the talent to take out the first big qs of the year shin murakami who's actually good friends with taichi wakita who's in this heat in the white jersey taichi wakita uh son of takuyuki wakita legendary pipe surfer and a great performer in his own right and that's also worth 
mentioning is that like across the board in all conditions the japanese typhoon is there um i think the the kaito wave from a few couple of years ago that was like one of the best we've seen here we go Picaro find some nice shade hawaiian style kicks it on out and that's gonna be a nice start for shaden Picaro. see if we have more waves on the way here 20 minutes and 50 seconds counting down on the volcom clock flying above with our dgi dji i in the sky and it's going to be cole rothman on a nice one hollow section comes oh. through no problem cavern cole rothman that was beautiful from above. That was pretty arty, but I can't wait to see the straight on beach angle on that. That's similar to what the judges are going to be see, seeing to uh, get that score. That was just so beautifully done, wasn't it? Here's uh, the angle from the beach in late. Critical high speed straight out and over the back to get back in position. Great way to start this heat. There's one guy who does not have any fear out here respect plenty respect for this wave respect for himself but no fear he's just i mean i love cole rothman surfing a pipeline he has just beautiful technique shaden Porcaro on the replay this was a 4.5 opener for shaden Porcaro. so 4.5 take another look at this one in slow-mo oh, it's just as beautiful as it gets the full lego out here right now let our glass off just Oh, pretty as a picture, spat out of the barrel. So we know this is a 4.5. We're waiting for the last score for Cole Rothman and his number. And we're looking at Takuo Ota going back door. And Ota gets caught up there. But speaking of numbers, I want to welcome to the booth a guy that got an 8.93. I thought it should have been a Yeti cooler and a 10. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Ayala Stewart. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Oh, always good, man. What, give, us, uh, give us your breakdown right now of what's going on out there at Pipeline. You found the gem. Yeah, it, that was such a fun heat with Mason Ho and a few of my other friends, Logan. But yeah, it just was firing for this afternoon. When, I, when we were waiting in the channel, I'm like, Mason, like, oh, it's Emerald City out here, just like so pristine, everything. So we always tell each other, have fun. And yeah, we're like good friends, so it was fun. Is it, is it easier or harder to surf against your friends in the heat? It's kind of both, but Mason's such like everyone's favorite surfer, so it's so fun surfing with him. And just, he always gives me so much inspiration whenever I surf with him, so. Yeah, Mason's like, he was sending it, so I was like, oh, I got to charge like Mace, for sure. What's it take, though, to, you know, you're a dedicated pipeline surfer. I, I, I watched you move out here from town, move move with the McNamara's at a, at a very young age and apply yourself to this wave. It seems like it's been a, you know, a lifetime building for you at Pipeline. For sure, you always got to make a special relationship with Pipeline, because that's when she'll, once you, like, start to know her, then she'll, she'll give you waves and everything just kind of all the knowledge and all like it's a intimate feeling i was watching like oh jerry lopez pipeline stuff uh, a few nights ago and yeah they're just always like yeah it's like a girlfriend relationship but you got that casual style so you got a little bit of lopez ish mm -hmm. you, you know in you but do you you, you you mean you talk about the relationship do you think there's actually a spiritual relationship to this wave 100 oh, percent. everything's all spiritual energy energy frequencies so yeah that's it I shows like that. yeah shows and every I, i've seen it whatever I've you're passionate about it for sure. I've it's seen the guys up. that love Pipeline, Pipeline mm -hmm. love them back. I like, and, I, and I've been watching this wave for decades, right? And I've literally seen guys with relationships with this wave and committed to this wave. All the blue Pipeline will give them a gem. Yeah. No, in a pack sure. of 100. Mm -hmm. I think the story of the day has been that there's a lot of guys surfing this wave for the first time with only a few guys out. And that relationship is just beginning. Um, the guys who have a little bit more of a connection with it have been getting really good scores. It looks as pretty as a picture out there, mate. It looks perfect, but it's actually pretty tricky. Most of the heats have only had one good scoring wave. Yeah, exactly. Like my first heat, I was just kind of getting pounded. Like I didn't get a good waves, but I still made the heat. And then, I don't know, you just got to pay your dues, and then eventually everything will work out. You got to work hard for pipeline and, yeah, put in the work. What's it like being a surfer on the North Shore, a family man? You, you have a family. You, I think you had your daughter... A year ago? Yeah. How old is she now? She's two and a half. Two now. and a half. Two years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what's splitting time between being a family man 
and being a committed surfer at Pipeline. How does that work? Just, it kind of makes you more hungrier. You, you get like little opportunities to go out and it just makes life uh, meaningful. You know what you're doing it for. I love it. Next gen. I love it. I lo hey, look at love your energy. Keep it up, Ayala Stewart. Thank you for joining us in the booth. Thanks. Thanks, We're going to see more of Ayala Stewart because he's on to round guys. number three. Are we going to just chuck a Yeti or we can't? We have, it's got to be 10. I'm going to. It could be 10 gets a Yeti, 110, <laughs> but <laughs> I on. might have to sneak one out the back door for Ayala because he got a 10 in my book. Okay, so I'm going to go with that. The guys upstairs, they're actually the experts, but. I like what I see sometimes. And I like seeing Cor Rothman with a 7.73 for that long barrel for Rothman. Uh, we talked about what yeah. a great pipeline surfer he is, and he proved it in the numbers. Tai Chi, Wakita. And now that was a, that was a weird deal right there to me. And, and when we see that again, looks like he was pumping down the line well in the barrel, and then something kind of got caught up there. Sometimes when you're pumping and your back foot comes off or your front foot sort of lifts, it just puts the board in a, a, the wrong spot under your feet. And you can always tell when someone goes over the falls that something's happened that they weren't expecting. Yeah. It's not necessarily that you've put yourself in a bad position. It's that something's happened while you were surfing that you couldn't readjust. Well, here's one more look, Vaughn. So this is a beautiful angle here from the camera crew. Super tight. Look at the what? color of the water. You See, just a little forward, a rib up the face. And watch this, I think he goes over on the second go around too, so. Sometimes you just can't really prepare for those one little fractions of a section or readjust for it. Carl Rothman, take a look at that one. Doesn't like what he sees, decides not to go. How cruisy was Carl's wave too? I mean, a 7.73, <laughs> but it just never looked like he wasn't gonna come straight through that thing. Yeah, he wasn't worried at all. Let's see, we'll see if Carl Rothman can maintain his lead in this heat, we'll be back after a quick break for the conclusion, round two, heat number 10, here at the Volcom Pipe Pro. definition of pipeline is the barrel. What are the factors that lead up to great pipeline? First of all, swell direction. Second, local winds. And three, the dynamics of how the beach is actually shaped. You look at the North Shore, it's kind of, it's shaped kind of like a catcher's mitt. Um, and it's just facing directly into all that energy that the North Pacific is generating. Prevailing wind is offshore meaning that it's clean the majority of the time. Uh, and then it's got the underwater topography that focuses those swells in such a way that you get just hollow barreling waves and perfect waves when everything lines up. The wave is so powerful and so fast and so fierce, and it's breaking over such a shallow reef, you know, anything can happen. This place claims lives. It is a giant barrel that breaks over basically dry reef. If you fall, things are gonna go wrong really fast. So it's that thin line of never overcoming mother nature, but becoming one with it. And that's what brings everybody back. It's forever changing. There's forever new people coming in. There's new swells. There's always that uncertainty, you know, that keeps you hungry. It's like no other barrel that you can get.
That look at the Bonsai Pipeline was brought to you by DJI, the maker of the Osmo Action and the Mavic 2 Pro incredible 4K action camera and drone that captured all of those great shots. We're back here. Round two, heat number 10 at the Volcom Pipe Pro. Beautiful conditions, beautiful back door wave, rail grab there for our heat leader, Koa Rothman, as we return from break. And Koa is going to add to his heat total so far, likely ditching that 2.3 that he has as his score line and pull further away from Shaden Pakao, Takua Ota, and Taichi Wakita in this matchup. I'm Kai Pagura with Vaughn Blakey talking you through this action this he afternoon. It's been beautiful here. Oh, man, how good was that clip? It's amazing. I was like, <laughs> I was getting anxiety, though, when they started talking about the reef and the yeah. power and all that. It was, it's just such a heavy wave. I mean, every single thing that you've ever heard about it, when you're here and you're looking at it, it just, it just is so mind-boggling, mate. Look at this wave. Perfect. Wow. Beautiful is that wave for Shaden Picaro. 4.5, he already has in his score line. And we'll be waiting for our judge's decision on that number for Shaden Picaro. Well, you heard Mason saying, uh, you know, nothing would keep him out of this water if it was a free surfing day. It is just perfect afternoon at pipe. There's just barely any wind. It's not even breathing out there. Yeah, we've got light and variable winds, maybe a light trade win. And I think our wind forecast is is, is fairly, fairly good for oh, the next good. few days. You know, the one thing that we have to worry about is kind of land heating, maybe some convective heating and, and those onshore winds, but not the case today. Rothman just caught up there. And last score for Shaden Picard on the blue jersey at 2.8. So Shaden maintains his second place position and which is an advancing position in these four-man heats. And Cole Rothman continues to lead in this matchup with nine minutes counting down. That's classic, mate. Here's a, a little replay. And uh, Shado just, it's just the most translucent blue, isn't it? It's unbelievable, the color of the water right now. But man, it must stoke you out because, you know, Cole Rothman, uh, the Florences, that entire generation of pipe groms really has come through and taken over in the, in the last few years, uh, specifically in free surf sessions when it really matters. Yeah. Uh, that must stoke you out, you know, having watched them all grow up from these tiny little... It's the, it, you know what, it's something that... Whippets. And it doesn't end. And so there's, we talked about Baron Mamiya, Makana Pang, you know, the, the, the next kind of level coming through. And, um, and then even below that, there's the 12-year-olds who are so crazy right now. Like, I, I, in my mind, I think about like someone like Mike High Burdine or like some of these kids, like, they're young and they're already really familiar. And you can tell the kids that if you see them over and over again here, they're the one committed to putting in the work, you know? And that means putting up with the crowds. That means dealing with the danger. Um, yeah, growing up here, I, I'm going to tell you the truth. Like, I didn't really have that many pipeline sessions, maybe in New Jersey and stuff, maybe a couple of free sessions, but you got to want it out here because it's more, it's the wave, it's the crowd, it's everything around there, and you got to put in your time. For There's sure. Taichi Wakita, he's put in his time. Looking at the back door. Yeah, if I was a grommet and I was like at home watching this right now, knowing that 14 year old kids were surfing it on days like this, I would be reeking if I had a dream to be a pro surfer. <laughs> well, it's the proving grounds. Volcom has brought it, and we know that it's the proving grounds. And the story is the same, whether it's 1972, 95, 2007, or here in 2020, it's still the, it's still the proving grounds. It's always number one. Remember uh, Joel Parkinson saying that when he was a little grommet and he was training to be a pro surfer, Rabbit actually said to him, you know, there's there's a group of kids on every corner at every beach, just like you guys, trying to make it, wanting to make it. And he said that was like one of the lines that really stuck in his brain that drove him to be better every time he went surfing. And these days, it's absolutely bang on. Every beach in every corner of the world has the potential to bring through champions. Yeah, and information moves so fast these days, Vaughn, that we see from sometimes remote corners of the world, clips getting dropped by surfers that we don't know their names yet. And then we're like, whoa, that guy's got world-class talent. 
Where is it? They just pop out of nowhere. And then there's people that you see coming up that the industry may, may embrace them from a very young age, like a Jack Robinson. And uh, you already know he's he's on his way up. Or like a John John Florence. We already saw John John coming. You know, we saw we saw Kelly coming. You know, I don't think we saw Italo Ferrero no, coming. No, I was, to tell gonna, the truth. I was actually going to bring that up. Uh, we saw Gabe coming from a long way off, but Italo when he qualified, I don't even think I'd seen a single clip or a photo of him. And next thing, you know, his his pr progress from just qualification to world champion has been so fast. Yeah, hundred percent. Takuo Ota on him. Brutal close out right there. See the board tombstone and him swimming to the surface. It's not a deep wave. You can push off of the bottom, but at the same time, you can bounce off of the bottom as well and take another wave on the head like Takula is going to right now. Meanwhile, sliding in and out, fighting for that second place position. That was last of Taichi Wakita looking for 5.97 to move into second. But we got a lot of math to do because judges all scores for Shaden, for uh, Takuo, as well as Tai Chi. Well, what I'm enjoying is that guys are busy. They're hunting it out. We've yeah. seen heats today where a crew have sat out there just not really hunting the tube. They're just waiting for either a big set or a perfect wave. And it's just not going to work for you when it's uh, when it hasn't really made up its mind about what it wants to do. It's not cranking. This morning it was pulsing out of its face, Kai. So, I mean, it was just line after line after line. Yeah, speaking of enjoying the view, let's check in with up in the corner of the Volcom house. It's Rid's corner. What's going on up there? Rid, it's bots. You see anything out there? Anything on the way? Let me know. Oh, my God. Oh, that's an insane one. Oh, cause he's going right. What? Check the right. Oh, he's in. He's in. He's in. Oh, he's out. That was really sick. That was incredible. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's the view from Riddle's Corner at the Volcom House. Okay, keep it on, keep it on. How's it going? How's it going, Bemi? Riddler, what are you guys doing? It's going well. Yeah. You know, the waves cleaned up, a little more water on it with the tide coming in. We were really blessed because the winds looked like they were coming and not great. And then it just cleaned up, and now we're witnessing Koa just rip the bag out of the place. Bemi, what do you think about Koa's performance so far? I mean, uh, Vaughn, I said it before, Koa has been so busy this heat, and he's just stayed busy, and he's dropping bombs. And, I mean, look at these waves right now, what we're witnessing. Up in Riddle's corner, seeing absolute bombs just detonate on the reef. It's absolutely smoking, boys. Yeah. How's the surf changed from your guys' perspective? Uh, this morning was just macking, bombing, yep. consistent. What's, what's been the challenge for these guys at Sava? I think uh, this morning it was really thick. It was like it was it was a lot more seconds in it. It was really hard to get into, and I, f I, th I feel as the day progressed, um, it's become a little bit easier. Uh, and also the guys have been able to watch it for the last six hours. And this yeah. morning they might have had too small a board. It it has become way more manageable, and the winds, like I said, helped a lot. And uh, you know to watch Koa pick it apart like this is really really great because you know he's a pipe specialist and in two hours he'll get their best ride of the day but for him to put that in a 25 minute span and get it done like this it's pretty exciting because he could go a long way in this event he's got this place wired but the conditions did kind of clean up for us and we're stoked about that this morning was pretty nasty because we had a tide dropping to the low as you guys know how gnarly and and shallow that gets and and the rip it had on it was crazy and now we're seeing it uh, be way more manageable and the rides are getting better and better and it's it's a fun day to be here. Coach Rid Riddle, you know, we talk about Cole Roth and his natural talent, but now he has to apply it into a jersey in a 25 minute heat. What kind of advice do you give to someone who already has that talent, but has to compartmentalize it, put it in this short time frame? You got to remind them that there's only 25 minutes. You don't want them to get held hostage by priority thinking I'm going to sit there, I'm going to get a nine. They, we talked about it. there's getting busy heats and there's just sit there and wait no matter what. But as it's proved today, the guys that are riding more waves are getting out of heats. And, uh, you know, you want to start with a bang, but, you know, you got to let certain guys know that you've only got 25 minutes to do it. you got to make something happen. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Bemi. Riddles Corner, we love that. We keep on checking with them. Top floor over there at the Volcom House. Mm. Always some insight, great view. And between those two, a lot of surf knowledge. Oh, big time. Uh, Bemi's 
well known as one of the great strategists on the world tour on the QS, especially the QS because he was a grinder himself for, I don't know, 25, 30 years without actually making it. <laughs> <laughs> but he is uh, He's a, a great surfing show, mind, yeah. mate. I'm telling you, he he has uh, you know done a lot of amazing things for a lot of great surfers. He's, he's basically built them from being really talented into masterful competitors. That's what you need from your surf coach. And he's got a great stable right now as we look at the championship tour with Yago Dora and Jack Robinson all from the Volcom crew. Going to be on that championship tour starting March 26 over there on the Gold Coast, Snapper. So yeah, can't believe well, we're well done, Danny. Into the new year, it's it's that always stokes me out that we're here at Pipe to kick off the year. It's I the love, best way to start I, the I year, right? I just love bookending the start of the year and the end of the year with with Pipeline. It's the, it's the way to go. This is like, I mean, there are a few events before this one, but this really is the start gun in terms of, you know, having big points on offer. Who's going to make a move on the QS? Who's looking good? You get your first look at some of the CT guys. It you know, says a lot. I can tell you're a writer, Vaughn, because that's a really eloquent point that you made. Ending the year at Pipeline and then starting the next year again at Pipeline. And rightfully so. The proving grounds always has been, always will be. And Carl Rothman proved himself in this heat because he's moving on into round three along with Shaden Pacaro. Brilliant display from two Hawaiian goofy footers. Dominant action. We're going to say goodbye to our Japanese surfers in the heat, Taichi Wakita and Takuto Ota. But you know what? Kora's going to get a little extra serving right there. That one was for the love. I think that was after the horn for Kora Rothman. So that's just going to be for the love. As we take a look at our heat recap, it started off with Shane Pacaro that's finding right. a bubble. Yeah, Dave Riddle, he put it beautifully, didn't he? He said, boys, you've got 25 minutes. Don't just sit out there. And the two pipe specialists really brought a bit of comp game to this heat. Uh, they stayed busy. You can see Koa here looking at backdoor. A wave he might have left, let go if he wasn't after points. And uh, he really did build a beautiful heat. Koa Rothman dominating in this one, finding beautiful Crystal Castle Chambers. Look at that translucent blue. My goodness. Love the style. Love the tube mastery of Koa Rothman as he wake, makes his way up the beach. He's going to sleep well tonight, prepare himself, because when we get into day two of competition at the Volca Pipe Pro, we're going to see Cole Rothman again, along with Shaden Picaro. The results on the bottom of your screen for Heat 10, round number two at the Pipe Pro. We got another heat in the water, though. Heat number 11 is just starting up, and I'm going to pass the baton to Sal Masakela to talk you through all the action of the final heat of the day. Thank you, Kaipo. Man, that was a great heat. So nice to see what happens when the experts, the masters, show what the experience can do for you in the relationship at the Mighty Pipeline. Heat 11, our final heat of the day here in round two. Sal Masakela joined by the one and only Dave Wassel. As conditions, uh, Wassel seem to be just getting more and more magical. We're uh, talk back, talk back. Can we use the word buttery? Is uh, that possible? Buttery is uh, buttery is great. Yeah, the, the the conditions definitely for a second, for a hot minute, when mm. the island heated up, it got a little sketchy. The wind started to pull out of the southwest, which is basically almost straight on shore here. Mm. And all of a sudden, it said, you know what? You guys are giving back to the community. You guys do a good thing here in the islands. We're going to give you a little reprieve. And she just groomed herself up. I just need five minutes. Yeah. I'll be right down. <laughs> and Pipeline, the most beautiful woman in the world, is showing her beautiful self. Yeah, and her teeth. Still flexing and making sure, hey, respect all day. Anthony Walsh, um, originally from Australia, flies the flag hard now for Hawaii. Yeah, because he's trying to get into the Pipe Masters. <laughs> no, you know what? Okay, Anthony actually married a local girl. Right. They have a little baby. Uh, probably got to be like six or seven by now. But uh, I think he lives in, not Wahiwa, but Mililani now. How's that one? 
Yeah. Small, small little bus ride over from Australia. He's keeping it all the way real. Uh, Anthony Walsh, if you don't follow him on Instagram, you should. Um, you want to understand perspective of what riding in the barrel and experience, uh, what that experience looks and feels like. You see that GoPro on the front of his board. Um, he's found every position that you could possibly give perspective-wise with a GoPro. One of the real original leaders in that perspective as we take a look at his first wave. Anthony Walsh is no stranger to waves that 99% of the public don't want anything to do with mm. here at Pipeline. You're right about his GoPro clips. They're absolutely phenomenal. But that guy, he really throws it on the line. Not scared at all. Yeah, the work that he does to get uh, those type of waves. Legendary travels all around the world to try and find the weirdest, deepest, longest slabs and pits possible. Also in this heat with him, uh, Kalani Rivero, who you see there in green. Kalani Rivero is a local kid, grew up with, look at him checking for time. You don't got a watch, kid? Come on, <laughs> you got a watch. Uh, you know, he's the son of uh, some Peruvian parents, actually. Mm. Yeah, we could go Team Inca almost. There we go. But he grew up here on the North Shore, hanging out with guys like Baron Mamiya. Uh, he's not afraid. He will go. He's actually got a pretty solid air game. I don't know if that'll come into play today, but uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, not afraid to go back door. Would love to see him on a big pipe bomb. All right. In white, uh, Chris Foster. Chris Foster from the island of Kauai. A, a young man with an amazing talent. I would say that his style very closely resembles McFanning. Oh. It, and that's not a bad thing to have. Throwing out the lightning. All right, we'll take it. Meanwhile, kicking in, Anthony Walsh. Making it look cute. Anthony Walsh is, is just way too comfortable at Pipeline. Uh, he, earlier towards the uh, New Year's when we had three giant swells back to back, three days of just giant Pipeline. On one single day, I remember him breaking four boards in one session getting literally blown to the beach, just coming in where everybody else would go running home with their tail between their legs, grabbing another board, going back out. At the end of the day, he was on a board that was 10 years old. He said, I, I can't break another new board. Wow. That's real. Just just, just straight up groundhog digging in the same session. Well, that last session, uh, that last heat, heat 10, was uh, incredible. As we see pulling into a cl close out there in red was Harley Ross. We're giving you a one-two combo. First post 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 heat one-two combo one and two. Shady P, Shady Picaro, sir, welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Alan. No worries. Thanks for having us here. Super and, stoked. And Cole Rothman. <laughs> Thank you for having me. No worries. How 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 was you guys' little party out there? It looked like you were in a little a one-two combo. I was really really excited to get out there all day after watching everyone get barreled i was like on the beach freaking out like could barely like get catch my breath and i was doing nothing okay did you come down here early and look at it or did you just stay away because i didn't see shade until later in the afternoon almost before his heat what did you do Cole? So i thought i timed it well i thought i'm like i'm, I'm gonna come down a few heats before my heat watch it for a little bit and then go out but i came down like six heats before I just sat in the Quicksilver house, just skitzing out. Like, please, <laughs> let me get out there already. Sick. And Shado? Yeah, that was, um, today I woke up and I was like, I could just feel that the waves are sick. And I, I knew I was, I was gonna surf later in the day or maybe like even tomorrow. So I took it easy. And then I came down and the first heat that I watched this morning, it was actually Cole's round one heat. And I was watching it and I was like, whoa, that's Cole Rothman. Like, and he's like, getting some of the gnarliest two-point rides and like I seen him get this super like nuts free the airdrop. airdrop wave and I was just like oh okay it's it's, it's real. real today like this is the best at pipeline surfing the best pipeline and I was like I gotta go I like went home and I was like I can't watch it anymore like and then I was watching the contest at home and just kind of cruising and and then like it was 
like two heats before and my girlfriend was like you better hurry up and get down there and I was like oh yeah what am I doing and I get down here and I seen that the waves kind of came together more from this morning mm -hmm. and I didn't know who was in my heat and then they called Cole and I was like oh what like what's the coincidence is like <laughs> yeah. I, I was so stoked to share that heat with you and I know, that, uh, was that was an honor that was yeah. really fun well the, the waves look like they really took a, another form in you guys heat what was it like energy wise out there it was just sick. When I paddled out, it, when we paddled out, it was the most glassy, dead winds I've ever seen. And it, it doesn't usually get like this, especially this late in the day here. This is like unheard of conditions, and it's absolutely perfect. Okay, curious. Did you yes. ride the same board that you rode in your first round heat? Yes, what I did. What size? 6'6". Six, 6'6", six. Six, six. that's what yeah. I thought. Did you feel that board was too big, it's just too small, just enough? So earlier it felt really good. Mm -hmm. And then before this heat, I was like, oh, it's a little smaller and more manageable. I almost grabbed a 6.3, but I was like, no, nah, I'm just gonna take the 6.6 in case bombs come. But it did feel a little big for the waves I was on. Could that have been the fins, not the board? Uh, no, I okay, don't think so. Good, good. I'm trying to get in your head. I'm just yeah. curious. I'm trying to learn from you guys, <laughs> no. man. I'm serious. Cause you guys. Are right, walk out of here, just like reconfigure his whole situation. Like, why did he do this to my brain? No, no, no I'm learning from him. This I love my setups, all of them. Exactly. I know exactly what to use all the time. Okay, Shade and Picaro, what were you riding? I was riding a Arakawa, obviously. Arakawa, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, just a little bigger than Cole's board, and I only had a 6.4 and a 6.6, six, six, and the 6.4 is kind of thick, and I could have rode it. But I see like Mason like scratching it through these through these waves, and I know he's riding a bigger board. And I'm like, whoa, he's like paddling super hard, and the waves are like ledging. So I just like, I might as well just ride my six eight because I've a couple years before I like rode a too small of a board, and then a set came and like the heaviest wave, and like I couldn't make it. So I was like, I better not shoot myself in the foot this time. So I was like six eight, and it felt good. Um, just got a couple of smaller waves, but got the job done and um, can't complain. Eric makes such amazing surfboards. Nice. Well, we like the energy, boys, and I hope that we get to see you guys again. What, what mindset-wise, when you look at this forecast, which looks pretty dreamy, what are, what are your expectations? What kind of mind flow do you go in now moving forward? I mean, it's just do what we do. It's going to be perfect waves for like three more days, so. I think they might be able to get the contest done before that north swell comes in. Maybe, unless they want to wait for that second swell. It's going to be perfect pipe and backdoor. I'm yeah. knocking on my head. That's yeah. the only thing wood around here. <laughs> yeah, yeah so, let's hope so. So exciting. I just, I just want to surf, and I'm so stoked because it's really crowded out there on any other day. Yeah. And um, yeah, to surf with the best surfers here at Pipeline, the best wave in the world. And, and with perfect waves coming, let's just keep surfing and hopefully we can advance and surf more. <laughs> <laughs> love, love that energy. Congratulations uh, to both you guys and, and enjoy the rest of the day. Power back up and uh, see you tomorrow. Let's get it. Thanks, Thank boys. You. No worries. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Appreciate it. Hydrate, Aloha. brothers. Hydrate. Aloha. Good to see you guys. Right on, you guys. Great performance. Keep it up. I'm on the vlog. We're on the vlog. Yeah. We're on the this vlog. This is living. I mean, no, <laughs> we're, on. Get, we're, we're, we're on Koa's vlog. That's a big deal. That's gonna. We're all gonna get at least a few thousand. We're gonna get a few thousand more followers just because Koa's vlog is being filmed right now. It's a very popular vlog. And uh, that Shade OP energy, much like uh, like Big Red, Michael O'Shaughnessy. Michael that's, O'Shaughnessy. That's, that's call upon a kids. You, man. Under, you understand why they're friends. I mean that just that level of re, like relentless. I call it relentless appreciation. There is no selective aloha in those two people's vocabulary. It is just 24-7. And what a great way. I love that. Wow. Oh, we just planted a sea tree right there. Kalani Rivera. I'm pretty sure that was Kalani. <laughs> yeah, Kalani Rivera being like, you know what? I love surfing pipe, um, but I, I, I want to help with my carbon footprint. So let me just get safely uh, worked. That was not part of his air game. Yeah, when I say Sea uh, Trees, by the way, go to seatrees.org, and what's happening is for every substantial wipeout that takes place during uh, the event, uh, we are planting a mangrove sea tree uh, to help offset the carbon footprint. What happened here? 
He did everything right. It looks like he just drifted a little too low. Like he took just a little bit too much time going down the face. Uh, the swell has a lot of west in it, mm. so it's actually running off the screen and, and almost back out to sea where he just slid a little bit too far down the face. And took that lip to the face as a result. Yeah, definitely wore that one like a cheap suit. Kalani Rivero is, he, he's a dynamic little individual, I'll tell you that. Very young, very young, and still has room to improve. Harley Ross grabbing rail and throwing himself over the ledge on that one as that wave runs off. Somehow, 11, only 11 minutes and 26 seconds to go. During the interview portion there, Anthony Walsh got clipped at the end of a really nice pipeline wave. And Harley Ross might be riding two boards, not one. Are you, are you calling out potential stick of the busted? Yeah, there it is. Busted stick! And looks like a little perfect ride in by none other than Abe Lerner. Slender. Abe Lerner is part jet ski. That guy, <laughs> no, I'm serious. That guy is as good on a jet ski as anybody in the world. You want to take notes at Pipeline, you look at Jamie O'Brien, Kelly Slater, you want to see anybody. What did he do? He jumped off there. Look how quick he just picks guys up. He he does that from here to Payahi and back. No problem. The guy is a machine. Look at that. Look at that. Perfect Wham. whip. Look, kid. Boom. You don't jump off till I tell you to jump off. He just whips him <laughs> off the beach. <laughs> he probably said just that. Okay, my question to you. Harley Ross, definitely getting in the conversation here. But technically, the only guy flying an Australian flag in this heat is he looking over at young Mr. Anthony Walsh and going, what's up, man? <laughs> Did you just give up on the lucky country? I'm curious. He's saying, come on, mate. Am I here by myself? That's too funny. What a day. I, I can't believe that this is the final heat because in some ways it feels like we've been here for two days. The waves have been so good. And also, like, we just started. And it, it, it wasn't just 8 a.m. a second ago when we ran our first heat in round one. I don't want it to stop. No. Well, as you heard Koa said, like, it's funny. We had Marty Thomas, our contest director, in here this morning just all giddy, right? Because, like, man, look at the waves, etc. But now I wonder on the back end of this, when you have such great swell ahead, this is where that tough part of the job is. Do you just go for it all on the front end? Or oh, yes. Yeah? Oh, yes. Yeah. You, people forget the bad times way too quickly, OK? So Amnesia. It, it's very strange. People are like chiming in on social media going, it's been going off for months. Yeah, right. Right after that New Year's swell. Oh, hold on. That's the one. Oh, oh OK, Walsh. Bonus. Right after that New Year's swell that we were talking about, where Anthony Walsh was getting those crazy waves and beatings to the beach, breaking four different boards. This it's was like his 483. Nice ride. Nice ride. And going to be a banger of a GoPro clip for sure. But there was two weeks of nonstop north winds as strong as they can get. Same thing leading all the entire month of March, of, excuse me, of November. And didn't you guys have crazy rains to go with? There you go. That, that, that was a whole month period and then another two week period. I yeah. mean, the Pipe Masters, they almost didn't run. They literally went to the very last day. Right. Do you guys forget about this stuff? I well, don't. I sit in that box over there and I see it all day long. But it's easy because when it is dreamy here, when it literally makes you feel like, oh, it's, it's like this all the time when you, you get lulled in, especially into consecutive days of these kind of conditions. Way, way too much postcard memories for sure. That's why there is no other stretch in the world like these seven miles of the North Shore. I mean, we, we said it at the top of the heat. You, you said butter. I mean, it's like butter, honey ghee. It, it, it is pristine conditions out there. It's very rare that you get these conditions all day long. Cole Rothman actually yeah. brought it up. You know, by the afternoon, it's usually either straight on shore or super windy up the face where it's just completely blind drops. I don't think there's anything more horrifying than that wind in your face at Pipeline. The wind is challenging enough as it is on its own. Which is worse, the wind up the face or 
early morning Death Star? Death Star Sunshine. Oh, throw them both together. Oh. Why don't we just go there? <laughs> Why don't we just oh, go combo, there? combo platter. Yeah, those are days I look for other places to surf. Mm. Just under seven minutes to go, Anthony Walsh would like nothing more than to make the advance, keep stacking clips, maybe get himself a helmet. I'm excited for some of these future rounds. You forget that, like, once we get into that round of, like, 64, it's just nothing but, like, heavy hitters. Like, the, the top end of the, of the QS draw, some championship tour guys. Like, that's what makes this event so fun. 144, to, you know, to start. And then, you know, some of these people who have, like, dream runs to get up and face, like, the Wiggly Dantas is of the world. The, the Soli Bailey, who's won this before. John John Florence, Noah Dean, all to come up in, in, in these days ahead. That, that's Tori Meister. I mean, this. Moniz brothers. Yeah. Let's start it up for the Jamie O'Brien actually went down. Can you believe that? That's crazy. That's crazy that somebody from the very first round is going to make it. They always do, right. all the way into the final day and into the finals. But then there's these total shockers as well, where on paper you're going, Oh, Jamie O'Brien? Yeah. yeah. Well, he should just be in the final. He's won it yeah. how many times? That, again, does, doesn't make any sense an, Any sense at all. How's this parking ride? Kalani Rivero. For Kalani Rivero. I love that commitment. He's looking really polished. Um, you know, he's, he's a young guy. He does spend a lot of time here. But at the same time, he hangs out a lot. If, if Pipe's really big, I think he'll go with... Um, a couple of his friends to go down to Haleva. They're like, ooh, air wind, especially when that southwest wind kicks up. Right. I'm like, really? You guys, <laughs> really? The, the, last month, a 12-foot shark showed up to Haleva and literally showed up and was swimming back and forth in the shoreline chasing turtles. And we cleared the water, and these guys showed up and like, was it really big shark? I'm like, it's straight on shore Haleva. I know, but the air wind. Right, 12-foot uh, shark, but, but air wind. Air wind. I said, I said, do me a favor, give it an hour. Okay, just if we see it again, let's not go out. You can you can make up your mind for yourself, but give it a little bit of time. He and Noah Beshin waited an hour. We're out there. And the air camp session was on fire. And obviously still got all their limbs, but woohoo. No other place like it. Um, can we talk about how cool your your custom Vulcan Pipe Pro FlexFit hat is that I did not see in my bag? I know some guys, okay? All I right. know some people. I'll have them talk to your people. Okay, I'll get you one. Please. Hey, you know what? Flex, uh, these guys have actually been sponsoring the event for a while, and, yeah. and it's it's nice to have them around. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to keep these lights off my head. It's, it's hot it's out here. Nice. Well, when you, have a shade. A, when you have a shiny dome like mine, it's like, why wasn't that in my bag? All right, FlexFit. Um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully I'll get one. But we're stoked to have them as a sponsor and stoked to see Anthony Walsh is pretty much looking like he's having a free surf. I, I wanted to hear a flex fit <laughs> comment right there. That was just too perfect. Oh! So Anthony Walsh fit himself perfectly into the barrel, and that young man in white, Chris Foster, just got flexed. And how about the fact that you had a, you had a, enough time while he was under the water to say basically a long sentence? I'll shorten it up, sorry. <laughs> No, I mean, it just puts it in perspective, <laughs> like, even, like, no, not scary. The, those are scary moments. Those are, those are, that, yes. I mean, it, it, that's a real beating he was taking while you were talking. There, there's one thing about pipeline is it's extremely shallow, which allows the wave to do that. That was so sick. Woo. But at the same time, it's so shallow that when you get pitched and you're underwater, one, it's dangerous that it's shallow because you can hit the bottom, but two, at least you know where up is and speaking of up stock in Kalani Rivero is on the rise. We were having a, a deep conversation about the various styles of backhand to backhand tube riding and that's that's the kind that you just can't help but like admire because you're like wow that's just cool and comfortable and it's when you're really good at it it's almost like a, a like a like a manual like a stick shift. You like just downshifting? Like downshifting, like shifting gears. The, the people who really make it look good, like they're doing it in real time, making those adjustments um, to be able to stall, to speed up, etc. That's it. 
I was watching heats earlier, and uh, Jack Robinson was in here, and he obviously didn't want to give away too many trade secrets. Oh, he was sitting right next. <laughs> but, but it was just amazing to see. That he's been watching it for years. He's been a study of good surfing here at Pipeline. I mean, the, the guy definitely had it in him from an early age that we saw this coming. Mm. And and it's it's nice to have him on the team. I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> You're making everybody look good. What's really cool with uh, with Jack here is we're in two minutes to go. Anthony Walsh in a pretty nice position. Chris Foster and Harley Ross, who's got priority, only needs a 274 to advance. But one of my favorite things about you know even walking around the North Shore um, with with Jack Robinson is the level of respect that he's garnered from like deep within the community. Yes, he's a very quiet, cool cat. And you know what? You got to throw it out to Big Daddy Trevor. Good job raising that kid. And it's probably because of where he comes from also in Western Australia. Very much like the North Shore. It's very country. Mm. You can't up out, you know, walk your steps. Don't flap your jaws because you might just get put in your place way too fast. Yeah. It's going to be exciting to watch his title defense as we move forward. He's, he was just losing it all day today for sure. We obviously heard Koa and, and Chato talking about how hard it was, even knowing they were surfing the day to not be in the water and have to stay away. Uh, but Jack was just like, this is hard to watch. How funny was that story where he said, oh, I was riding on the airplane and I couldn't get any water. And you guys are literally <laughs> laughing and just chugging out of your Yetis. I'm like, oh, my gosh. I ran to my truck, reached in, grabbed one brand new and I ran it that. over here. And just there you go, Jack. You definitely need a new Yeti. And I see uh, some whales spouting out the back here. I mean, it's you, you wonder how people forget how it <laughs> Things can change when it's perfectly buttery in the middle of the afternoon, and whales are like, "Hey, what's up? We're we're partying too." As that is a wrap on Heat 11, Anthony Walsh and Kalani Rivero pretty much walking away in these dream conditions. And here's Harley Ross on a little backdoor after the horn gets clipped and that is going to be a wrap. Right from the jump, it was uh, Anthony Walsh just toying out there alongside Kalani Rivero. You know what I noticed? I noticed that both of Anthony Walsh and Kalani Rivero caught very similar waves. That, every single wave that Anthony caught looked the same. Every single wave that Kalani Rivero caught were the same kind of waves, and they performed the same on them. Kalani with that drag. Chris Foster just not finding the exit. Uh, one of my favorite surfers from the island of Kauai. Really fast, lightning fast, but like you said, it was these guys that just commanded the heat, perfectly placing oh. themselves in the pit. Dream weaving for Anthony Walsh, who uh, has had some er rather early exits in the last couple of Vulcan Pipe Bros, so definitely going to be feeling that momentum. As you see officially, Walsh and Rivero moving on to the next round. And some nice prizes at the door for Mr. Foster and Harley Ross. And somehow or another, that is a wrap on day one. But we are not done. We have some tasty after bits for you as we will have our first 2020 Volcom Pipe Pro post show. Get into uh, the highlights of the day, do some prognosticating about what we can see moving forward. Stay with us for our day one post show coming up shortly, just a bit, here at the Vulcan Pipe Pro.
Hey, Sal Masekela here. Everybody's talking about the surfers looking for an edge out at Pipeline. But at the end of the day, it's all about the commentators and their edge. What's mine? Well, I'm commentating the entire Vulcan Pipe Pro from inside of this ice bath. Optimal commentary performance. You're welcome. It's the Volcom <laughs> Pipe Pro post show, and what a rolling for the post show. Sal Masakela getting Drew tunes and just chilling out as my man always does. I'm joined by Sal Masakela. Thank you. Dave Wassel. What a great day, guys. Dave, your thoughts on the day? I can't believe I got to sit here and witness greatness once again at the 2020 Volcom Pipe Pro. The waves are pumping all day. Sal, your excitement level today through the roof and for good reason. We've had an epic first day here at the 2020 Vulcan Pipe Pro. I mean, when you think back to the first three days of last year, where we were at the point where like, will there be enough window to run the event? And then Pipeline being like, you know what, you guys suffered last year, this year, game time. And like, like Wassel said, I mean, there, even when the wind went off just a little bit, it was for like literally two minutes and straight butter and performances um, yeah, this is this is why I can't believe I get to do this job. This it, days it, like today. Hey, look at we love this work. We love this job, and we love a quick start. Mm. Day number one of the waiting period. We have all the way till February 10th. But guess what? We got already through day number one. We got three more run days to go. But let's go for some takeaways from day number one. First of all, Sal, your pick for the moment or the performer that you saw today. Uh, for me, it was Nate Florence, who is. You know, you see, you see the, the level of work he's been putting in. And first heat of the day, with the sun in his eyes, he said, I'm going to go ham. Just backdoor festival. He came through uh, in, afterwards for this post heat. He said, I, you, you, I just found myself in this rhythm where I almost had to calm myself down. I was in such a zone. But look at, look at what putting in the time has done for him out here. Just, he was flexing. It, it was just fun, fun to watch. Yeah, it, you know what? That was a heat where it was all Nate Florence, all the time. He was dominant in the in the warm up sesh, even before yeah. the horn sounded. He came in, grabbed his jersey, went back out there, didn't skip a beat. A surfer that's super familiar with pipeline, and it shows. We're going to see more of Nate Florence as he continues on in the Vulcan Pipe Pro. Someone who knows pipeline really well, Dave Wassel. I want to hear your pick before today's moment. My pick today, Ayala Stewart, mm. coming from Honolulu, Hawaii, from town, moving out to the North Shore under the tutelage of the McNamaras. That guy put on some insane rides. Look at that. Wait, wait a second. That's that's a Sammy Gray right there. That oh, kid's from Kauai. That's another standout. That was the first super legit backdoor wave. But Ayala Stewart was uh, was my personal pick. Uh, they, they asked me too early in the day, and I actually said Sammy Gray. So we're going to give us all for Got to give it up. Got to give it up for that kid. But Ayala Stewart, I'm going to say young Hawaiian, great performance, best heat score of the day, getting also the top nine, an 8.93, which by your standards, you watched it. You wanted to give him a Yeti cooler for I a wanted perfect to give him 10. the Tundra Come 110. Come on. Everybody who gets a perfect 10 here, the Vulcan Pipe Pro takes home. A Yeti cooler. I was shocked. And I'm still going to sneak away a Yeti cooler <laughs> for, for Ayala Stewart. I'm telling the whole world right now, so I guess it's not that <laughs> sneaky. Guys, no, I'm going to go amazing. with my pick for today. My yeah. moment? Yeah. The Mason Ho Show. Oh. You got to love the little cousin over there, and he just makes it happen at Pipeline. Unique lines, unique performance, and just bringing fun to surfing that only Mason Ho can. Take a look at him in a jersey. Love to see him in a jersey. I wish we could see him more in the jersey, but he knew how to put together some numbers today. A 7.17. Threading through a barrel there. And then, I love the variety. Goes mute grab for a hot second. Comes back out, toying. With the dangerously beautiful pipeline, Mason Ho. Pops likes it too. I just love, um how the, 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 the people who perform best out here control, like the ability to engage in control. Like some people are just out there catching waves and rolling dice and hope, but that's just, that's a whole nother level. I love it. Mason Ho 
took out the longest board of the day and had more fun than anybody. Kids, think about that one. All right, well, you know what, Dave? We caught up uh, with Alice Stewart. We're going to take a look at that wave right now. And we want you at home to take another look at this wave. Should this have been a Yeti cooler? That's, that's, that's a good one. That's, but that's not the one. It's not the one. Well, I'm telling you, though. We got the one coming up. That's the 717. We got the 893 coming up in this Which was sick. review. Can I just say thanks this to one. Eric Sturman for look flying this, the Dave. drone? Come on. This is it. Pumping Get, over the hump. Give him a cooler. Ayala Stewart. Virtual 10. Yeah. Just, just, you know what? If there's one thing wrong, he looked too at ease. Yeah. He How made it look that? easy, huh? That is just amazing surfing. That also, the, the way the claim landed was just like to come out and just be like, uh. Yeah. That was easy. Yeah. Liam, I got more for you. Liam McNamara, who basically has taken over tutoring him, refers to Alice Stewart as his favorite son. Oh. <laughs> no <That's> offense, <laughs> Mackay Landon, but I've actually heard him say that out of his lips. Oh, it's man. too good. Because he listens. He listens. He listens. And he, and he did really well. And, and to your point, uh, Eric Sturman flying that DJI drone mm. brought us beautiful visions. We've been doing great stuff here at the Vulcan Pie Pro. We're a certified deep blue event. We're sustainable, you know, and we care about our environment. This year, we want to wipe out our carbon footprint. Mm. So for every wipeout, sea trees plants a tree. And we saw some wipeouts today, guys. I, a whole forest was planted today <laughs> of mangroves. Nice little patch of mangroves, uh, courtesy of our good friends over at, at Sustainable Surf and Sea Trees. Let's check out some of the wipeouts. We've seen our fair share of wipeouts over the decade at the Volcom Pipe Pro. This year, Volcom and Sustainable Surf are planting a sea tree for every wipeout we see this year. This will help wipe out our carbon footprint from the event. Let's check out the wipeouts from today and see how many trees are going to get planted. And we'll save the planet. Let's go. Let's count the trees, guys. Wipeout number one. That's a tree. Ooh. That's a tree. Here we go. Here's another tree. That's two. <laughs> we got more trees to plant. How about this tree? That's three. That's Bruce Beach's kid. That's Bruce Beach. That's Max Beach Max, right there. Wow. Max Beach planted a few trees today. <laughs> Check out this one. Oh. That's four. Yeah, that's a tree. And, and while we're laughing, like. That's serious. It's serious, but I mean, just. And that's Cristobal de Cole, who actually had a phenomenal heat, but still taking gas. Had to pay some taxes. This How about one, that tree? Six. Oh, this one gosh. was out of control. And that was one you said, hey, safety inside the barrel. Classic example. Ouch. Ouch. I, I love the fact that trees are being planted. I love that they're going to reduce the carbon footprint by putting more oxygen yeah. in, the, in the ozone. But also, they're also they're sea trees, right? They're half in the ocean. Yeah. Definitely going to help with erosion. Help with erosion. Those are ground cover, of course. You know, locally, we have, uh, we're replanting nalpaca over here, yes, hollow trees, milo trees. Those are all um, native. Native, native plants that live well on the shoreline and in, in salt air. But more importantly, they're anchors and they keep our beaches intact. So anywhere on the coast of Hawaii, if you see that nalpaca, please don't cut it. Leave it alone because it's going to save the beach in front of your house. Smart, smart, smart. Yeah, and that's looking towards the future. I don't see any carbon footprints today. But I want to pull out the crystal ball now, guys. Let's look towards the future. Mm. What is coming up? We've got three more days of competition here at the Volcom Pipe Pro. We ask our friends at Surfline to let us know what's on their models. Let's take a look at the Surfline forecast. You can talk us through this, Dave. Well, the, f the fact is there's no shortage of swell. Everything purple is pointed directly at Hawaii, and that means welcome to Thunderdome. <laughs> Pipeline is just going to be almost too big on some of these swells. It almost got too big today. The only issue is the local winds. Yeah. So that swell on Friday, I'm going to cross my fingers that it doesn't show up with a front and a little bit of north wind. Without that north wind, we'll be able to finish this in four days. Ooh. So, ooh, don't, ooh. isn't that nice? It's titillating. <laughs> I, and I love that. I love that. But it's always the local weather that persists. So you got to be careful, right? Just because they're swell doesn't mean the waves are going to be good. Dave, thank you so much. 
Clark on Tavaro, he told me, guess what, Dave? You never surf the swell, you surf the conditions. Mm. Smartest man on the planet. Yeah, I love it. So it looks good. We got a lot of swell. If, even if the winds don't cooperate for Friday, further in the models, we have another big swell coming through. No shortage of energy in the ocean, like you like you said. It was a great day, number one. If you're just catching up with us, or if you're catching up with us at the end of the day and you've missed any of the action, remember you can go over to Red Bull TV and relive all of all of the action here. Day number one at the Volcom Pipe Pro. You can find all of that on Red Bull TV. There's the heat analyzer, and just go check it out. And while you're Th there, also make sure you can take your Red Bull mobile. Ah. Download the Red Bull TV app. It's free, and you won't miss any of all of the Water Channel action on your smartphone. No matter what your device is, you can download it. And there's some great content, film, shows, live events. Red Bull TV app. My show, the Red Bull Signature Series. And the Signature Series. Had to get the shameless plug in there. <laughs> um, yeah, for sure. When I take a lunch break, I watch it in my car. Really? I, I can crank up the aircon. You oh, kidding me? Nice, yeah, nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can surf every single day. As long day. as you're not sweating while you're watching it, that's yeah. all I ask. Well, yeah, I can't be in an ice bath with you. <laughs> That'd be awkward. All right. <laughs> Final thoughts, Sal. Um, I'm looking forward to the heavy hitters. I'm looking forward to when we get into that round of 64. Now, I, I didn't realize this before, but every time that John John Florence has made the final at the Vulcan Pipe Pro, he's won this event. What about you, Dave? Your takeaway day number one. That's a big, safe limb to be out on. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Uh, my takeaway is how many of the guys in the red jerseys went down? How mm. many of our top seeds? It just goes to show, doesn't matter where you're from, Pipeline is always in charge. Well, thank you, Dave. Thank you, Sal. We're going to check in tomorrow. We can get going. We're going to let you know 7.30 Hawaii time for a possible 8 o'clock start for day number two at the Vulcan Pie Pro. We'll leave you with today's highlights. Aloha. Welcome to the jewel of the North Shore for the 2020 Volcom Pipe Pro. We are straight into it right now. Pipeline is pumping. Dropping in, perfect pipeline. Threading the needle, double barrel section, coming out. Oh, wow, that was done extremely well. Critical. Cool. That was a one legger. Here goes White now at back door. Already has a pipe barrel and chalk up a back door tube for Kyle Tester. Cristobal then Cole going for the two for one. Gets clipped on that second section. Go red Cristobal to Cole. Oh, beautiful pipe way front side. He's coming out. Big drop in the barrel. Traveling, still going. Sammy Gray coming out.